And welcome back inside the broadcast booth here in Madrid. Ali Najad joined by Randy Nanonoko Lou and Randy. It is that time. We are playing short deck once more. It's the main event from here inside Casino Gran Villa. Let us turn our attention for a moment, however, to Tom Duan, who just took down the Pot Limit Omaha 25K. I was cruising the Twitter streets, Randy, mm -hmm. and I found a tweet from Colin Mikulski. He's been a, a guy that's been watching a lot of our broadcasts, and he mentioned that that wasn't just the first ever Triton win for Tom, who picked up his first Triton title and, and now has over 2.6 million, uh, I believe, in career Triton earnings, seven caches. But it was his first ever tournament win. That was a stat that I had a tough time believing. But if we look back, can you remember a tournament that Tom Dwan won? He cut his teeth in the cash game streets. Did you get bluffed? Did we I don't get, know. Who, who's bluffing who right it now? Feel, it feels that, like it doesn't seem right. It doesn't seem right, right? Yeah. But I buy it. I buy. I didn't vet it. I'm putting it out there. I trust my man. But I, can you think of a tournament that you remember Tom Dwan winning? I can rem remember him getting second, trying to win a bracelet. Yeah, yeah. you're right. He got very close many times. I feel like we could have pulled the entire room out there in, in, here in Casino Gran Villa, and not one person would have said to themselves, Tom has never won a tournament. But realistically speaking, he captured hearts and minds during his time online. Obviously, he just invented the overbet, it felt like. was just <laughs> savaging, beasting people for so long. Had the privilege of interviewing him earlier. Just, uh, just great to see him you know, picking up a title first time here in Madrid. Uh, and, of course, Paul Pua picking up his first title, among others. Very memorable moments here. And we are closing in on the end of this Madrid festival. But, of course, the matter at hand right now is the upcoming short deck main event. 100,000 euro buy-in. Get a look here before we start things off at the structure of the tournament and the names i guess that we're going to watch randy would include the likes of elton sang rui Cao. this is really where the asian contingent comes out to party yeah we're definitely going to see those guys on um, they're going to be in for they could be in for multiple bullets if they happen to run a little bad uh but you're going to see a lot of new faces in my opinion uh from the asian contingent i'm um, also there's some european guys i out there, I don't know if they showed up here, but that only play short deck. This is a game that is really fun, especially if you're more of an amateur recreational player. The edge is a lot smaller than in Nolan Hold'em, so it's an attractive game. It's fun. You see a lot of flops. You see a lot of all-ins. When you get it in, you're not too far behind. You really just got to try it yourself sometime. And for those who may not be as familiar with the rules of short deck, I know it feels like we've played enough of it through the Triton series at this point in time. Of course, the deuces... Through the fives removed, the aces can play on the bottom end as a straight and flushes beat full houses. So tough. The, the ace as a five is the one that always escapes me, and I'm not the only one. I know that there are players out there who have thought that they've been showered, getting up from the table, and then all of a sudden they're advised, uh, sir, you have a straight. Sit back down. You're going to double here. So uh, needless to say, you got to keep your wits about you out there in the short deck streets. Um, Randy... I don't know. The short deck, when it first came on the scene, mm -hmm. taking nothing away from the game, is obviously it's been entrenched uh, on the eastern side for, for some time. We were kind of sold this bill of goods like this is going to be the next big thing. Has it managed to take root and has it managed to take off at sort of the clip that you anticipated it would? Or do you feel like maybe the enthusiasm has plateaued a little bit? I think the game is still evolving. I think that people have not figured out the optimal strategy for it, too. Um, and, of course, on the Asian side of the world, it's really popular. Like I told you, there are guys who only play this. They'll come out here. They won't touch a single No Limit event, right? Um, and, you know, all these No Limit guys that are tournament players and cash game players, like, they kind of want to follow where the money's at. They need to learn this game. They learn to appreciate it. Maybe at first when you watch it, you're like, oh, this is just too different from No Limit, Hold and Pillow. It's really a great game. I don't think it's caught on that much in North America. But in, in the European sector, I know there are pros that just exclusively play short deck because that's where the money's at. It's an exciting game as well. Um, it's just going to get bigger. You know, in the beginning, only a couple people were willing to try out short deck as no limit pros. But now you see more and more coming in. Eventually, it's going to be everyone because this is a main event. 
Okay, it's not like, oh, it's a different game. We're just going to do like a 25K buy-in as the biggest buy-in. This is 100K. People are going to be in for multiple bullets. Right. We've been doing this regularly. It's just an awesome tournament. On the topic of bullets, uh, short deck, when one buys in, you get multiple stacks, sort of lammers that you can mm -hmm. redeem. Walk me through that process. So we're going to pay $100,000 to play this tournament. We're going to get three euros. stacks. Euros. <laughs> 100,000 euros. Three stacks of 100,000 chips each. You can claim them all at any time. Eventually, you'll have to turn them all in probably when registration closes. Uh, but this reduces the variance, allows you to kind of get in more because it kind of sucks to just get 300 antis in with like ace, king versus queens and just have to put another 100k pop in. I think it drives the action more. Um, it's a structure that wasn't there probably in the very beginning, but... Like Triton does, let's just uh, update the game. And in the cash games, my understanding is in short deck, you can actually go south with chips. So once you go over a certain threshold in order to make the game a little bit more dynamic instead of people sitting so deep that they're terrified with that really close equity situation, you kind of shave your chips down. And here is a look at the counts at our feature table, which features a couple of Americans in Phil Ivey and Tom Dwan. The Belarusian Nikita Badziakuski, who already has himself a title here in Madrid, alongside the Canadian Daniel Devoris. 500 is the ante. The double ante is on the button, so it's effectively like the entire field is posting a small blind and then a big blind on the button. Badziakuski will start that button with a couple of sixes after Devoris limped in. It's kind of funny. We talk about the Asian contingent. We got like an all-American cast here, right? Right. All Canadian. I think Divorce is Canadian, yes. Predominantly North American <laughs> cast. Fair. But I guess Phil Ivey and Tom Dwan, you know, they're kind of the Asian contingent and adopted. Yeah, they've spent some time overseas in Macau, cutting teeth in those nosebleed high-stakes cash games, one of which was running just last night upstairs on the sixth floor yeah. here at the Chirculo Gran Via. Dewan and Ivy have been playing this game from the beginning. You know, someone like Divorce came in like during Montenegro years later. Um, but Divorce is one of those guys who transitioned from No Limit into Short Deck really quickly because he was like, I got to get in this game. Everyone's playing it. And these are the guys who I find them the truest professionals, right? They're willing to step out of their comfort zone. Yes, it's a big buy in, but, you know, they're like, they know their skill level. They know they're going to get better. And I, I believe the Voris has maybe even got a short deck title. I might be wrong about that. Patsy Akuski has made the straight as we have our first opportunity to overlook the role of the ace in short deck as of five, playing on the bottom end for a wraparound. That's had the gutter to start. And it came. Yeah, usually players are not expected to have a six because it's just an awful card in this game. But he's a dealer button. He can rep it. He does have it. He has a to do. I don't know, people were playing really fucking tight. So, first pot will go to Makita Badziakuski. We do still have a 150,000 euro short deck event on the back end of our main, as well as the 30K short deck, which is a turbo. 45 minute levels here. Ivy with King 8 suited, limping. And you will see in particular in the ring games when it isn't quite as short, players limping and then the snowball effect as you're more and more incentivized in terms of pot odds to try to limp and take a flop and then every now and again someone will get heroic in late position look to thin the field and that's in part why it is that you'll see real strong hands up front mm -hmm. seek to limp as we take the seven seven six flop here yeah Boris. everyone puts ante in so there's a lot more pot odds with the pair let's see on but kuski checks divorce has got the best hand. Strangely, one of the best flops you can get with queen six. Yeah. Just got to put anything out there. He's going to check it behind. Hmm. He improved. Queens and do. sevens now. 
for Devoris. He continues to hold the best hand. Let's see if Devoris wants to keep checking or protect his hand against Overcots. Devoris with almost five million in career Triton earnings, 12 caches, finished fourth in the 75K long deck, eight max, and then sixth in the 30K seven max event already. Does he have a title? Madrid does not have a title, however. Okay, so he got deep before then. Looks like he's going to take this pot down. But Ali, I've got to show you something. Talk to me. You got to see this. I'm ready for it. Is this the candy shop? No, it's not. You were. Now, if those of you who have no idea what <laughs> Randy is talking about right now, yesterday I excused myself from the booth after having a hankering for sweets and having stumbled upon just right outside the corner. Today. Around the corner. Uh, night. I was uh, playing cash until like 4.30 in the morning. Casino. Mm -hmm. So. Hobby windmill? Nope. Nope. A sweet shop. Uh, yeah, candy I, shop. I wanted to play this morning, but just and needed to sleep. Randy, you have photographed no a shop that looks very similar to Captain Johnny's. However, There's as you can see, the facade says yeah. Sweet Pirate. I need the bullet. Yeah. Now, I happen to know what shop you are at. It appears Captain Johnny has expanded well, his enterprise we, we had, like, to both sides of the street. Bounty, so. Ah. so he wants to make We're sure like, that well, he's got maximum coverage in this highly touristic like area the biggest of Grand Via. Like it ended up being like 26K Times Square. So, so to speak, like in Madrid. And we see Michael Soiza has joined the we feature we were going table. Soiza playing under the Malaysian three. flag. Eight caches, one title, over four million in career earnings for him. As Badzia Kuski, who took down the 50k euros, seven max no limit event for 1.34 million euros already. Earlier this week, yeah, Michael parlay. Soiza is also one of those guys who was exclusively a Nolan the Hold'em player. Now playing a short deck 100k. And in the conversations that I've both overheard Soiza having, as well as those that I have kind of been involved in, a tremendously composed character who really puts a lot of time and energy and effort into the game, studying it, and uh, certainly a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, I've uh, played a lot with Soiza before he started playing Triton series uh, in Asia mm -hmm. and was an amazing player then. He won every single No Limit tournament I ever entered. I couldn't, <laughs> when, I, when I entered, like, I couldn't get first. I had to get like second, third, or fourth, something like that. Right. He's so good. Um, he's very humble, but also very aggressive, and he will study. And, you know, like, he's one of the best players from Malaysia, hands down. Oh. Can we get a waitress here, please? Bad Yakuski already departing. Yeah, I believe because we don't have that many entries yet, they're going to just keep balancing tables. Sure. They're going to see people hop around. But that's okay. This number, while it's 17 now, it's going to be exponentially higher. Some people uh, are just like, oh, I just don't want to show up for level one. Sure. Yeah, everybody. Sort of sprinkling in. There are those who kind of favor the max late reg mm -hmm. situation, even though clearly you're not going to be quite as deep. In short deck, not as much of an issue, I would imagine, because the short stacks actually wield a lot of power. Yes, that's um, exactly right. The short deck, um, the short stacks, you know, since they have such high equity when they jam, they can jam their like 30, 40 antis and pick up all those antis, right? And if they get called like at worst, you're like 40%. That's why you see this also the structure of three bullets how it drives a bit more action and like you said earlier in the cash games you're allowed to go south is well. because the short south? stacks yeah. kind of no. have an advantage because of this mathematical he, he was situation just like railing jason for a bit ivy king high yeah, somehow still good on this ace queen no, nine ten board texture no, no limit Dawn has picked up 501k with two a way draw team. To uh, a straight, a small blind but bounty. not nice. interested in a small pot. How does a small blind bounty work? So it, it's progressive. Every pot, the whoever is the small blind puts in 1k. 
and only the small blind can win that. So if like the small blind doesn't win 12, 12 hands in a row, then there, there's going to be like 12k in the middle. So mm -hmm. at a certain point, like you, you could have like situations where like there's like 20 blinds in the middle that only the small blind can win. And this is at the side, I guess. Is that yeah, it's just at the side. So if like, the small blind wins the hand, they win the bounty. Yeah, they win the bounty. Fucking hell. And it's huh. progressive. Hmm. And now yeah, you, is, you just uh, keep it at the side or like... The same explanation the I got over lunch from boss, Paul Pua, who was playing in this big No Limit Cash game. I believe it was 1K, 2K, 4K, and then that progressive small blind ante, awesome. which can only be won by the small blind, creating some... Real interesting spots as three players take the queen 10 8 board where Duan has flopped the gut shot straight flush draw. Livey with a pair of 10s. I'm just wondering how they create these ideas. My gosh, that one is creative. Yeah. Like the seven deuce game, we know about that. Show one card, we know about that. But the <laughs> progressive. Like progressive, right? It's somebody who was playing in the in the casino in the pit for sure that came up with that idea, don't you think? They were like, man, the small blind doesn't play enough hands. He's too tight. How do we loose him up? It had to be a pie gal player. You know, they <laughs> got that little digital readout that just always is going up from everybody who's posting up for the, the bonus, the progressive jackpot. Somebody was like, how do we get that in poker? All righty. So let's see. Ivy, best hand. Terrible board. Yeah, yeah. Tens in the gut shot Broadway draw. Dwan with a pair of sevens on the end. Disappointing outcome. And look at Ivy. Blasting. Still firing with just the pair of tens, asking questions. Yeah, Ivy's been r really aggressive in these small levels. It's cool to see how people try and chip up, right? Like, if you just watch the final table, you know, things are very different. It's nice to learn how to get to the final table. Well, we're quite a ways away from that final table. Yes. Here I'm guessing you, you couldn't play, like, the big ten. Very early you going. Play the big 10K, right? Of event 12. The no. 100K short deck main. Oh, a little sound effect from Ivy with that <laughs> muck there. <laughs> the dealer, like, looked down. I got to tell you, as, as serious and menacing and intimidating as he can be at a table, I can't remember seeing him as relaxed. In a, in a poker atmosphere as he's been here in Triton. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that goes for a lot of the players. When you hear about them talking post-hand about what you had and what I had and would you have played it this way, it's just such a free flow of information. And obviously, you know, those that are edge-seeking would not uh, engage in that sort of stuff, but everybody's just kind of chill, having a good time, right? Even in 100K. 100%, yeah. I I've noticed that, too, about Ivy. Like, he's, just, he's got some jokes in there. Sure. Just laughing. Yeah. Love to see it. Yeah. Meanwhile, King Nine Six gives Devoris oh, top two pair. Uh -uh. So is a folded. Not sure which card. I think it flashed. was a nine. Was it the nine? Yeah, yeah. that's definitely going to be interesting. As Daniel would have loved to see Michael Peel there. Devoris, thirty-three years of age, hometown is Toronto. Currently lives there. Says he's basically married to his gal Sharon. Went to the University of Toronto, where he picked up a degree in to start, math not bad. and psychology. Oh, man, a and that's a potent tandem in terms of so field of study. Of First played back in uh, high school. 22, like who you think will play? Yeah, most likely. Uh, I think you put the wrong chip out, Phil. Oh, thanks. Devoris' most memorable Triton series was back in 2019 in uh, I mean, Montenegro, he says. Gonna play. I'm not here yet, Beautiful so. venue, actually. Had the opportunity with a couple of the gals who were here, having worked the Montenegro event, Maya and Tiana, helping the VIPs out. They showed me pictures mm -hmm. of the property, and it was simply stunning. Very much looking forward to a return to there. And you as you look, love it, trust as me. As you look at Montenegro, I bet Devoris mm -hmm. is looking forward to a return there. He had five caches, two second places, two fourths, a seventh. Yeah, I believe it. So See, that's why I thought he won, incredible. because he kept getting second place. Any good stock tips? Me? This would be a nice one to be first. <laughs> <laughs> I saw something else. Stock tips, eh? Randy, you know I love the stocks. Actually, recently I hate the stocks. <laughs> I'm not alone. A lot of people do. 
watching money get incinerated. Trust me, these guys are playing small. Once you get your beak involved in the this stock market, like, huh? it can really? shrink the poker pretty quickly. Yeah, I never show up for it all. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You never play from the beginning? Not really. Ace, I mean, like Jack, one, yeah. seven. Well, why not? Isn't this fun? Feels like no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're playing really small. If you think about 100k buy-in, we're playing like 150 dollar ante. Hmm. True, I guess to some extent. Yeah. I mean, it does double pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, it, is, it goes pretty quick. Leave it to Dwan to you consider can the 100k all in next, small. Next level, 30 minutes, 100 ante. <laughs> still go on. Yeah, that's true. You, yeah. you still can. Nothing stopping you. Yeah, a bunch of the crew's not here, right? Like, I yeah, don't see Paul, I don't see Paul, Winfred. Uh, yeah. I even play football as well. Yeah. Danny, Danny will play, Webster will play. Yeah, I heard that uh, some of the boys were a arranging left, huh? a game of uh, yeah, by football, soccer. Oh, all right. For prior to play today, including the likes of Tim Adams and Ivan Liao. Jeff likes to play. I think he was talking about some soccer. Maybe he was in that game. Maybe that's where he's at, yeah. Mm -hmm. he's a heck of a soccer player, Jeff Gross. Ace 9-8. Bottom pair for divorce. Sprinkles a dime out there. And look at Dwan peeling with king-queen. Now the ace pairs. Thirty-five. That's three thousand five hundred. Thirty-five hundred as Duan leads into Devoris and steals the pot. So here in the early going, there's a bit of fight on Durr. It's always cool mm -hmm. watching Tom play because he always has like his own lines that no one does, and well, that's you know, weird. it's yeah. very refreshing. The tables as well. Maybe you need a certain amount of events. Oh, they probably just have a contract for like the no limit stuff only. Perhaps, yeah. No idea. Shouldn't you know? <laughs> I thought really. it was full stop. There was the title sponsor? I don't even know what that means. <laughs> you would think it would be. King 8 suited for Ivy. Limping up front. Jack six. I wonder if Henrik's gonna wait. Basically, watch the seven deuce. Short deck. You want to watch for the tournament? Mm, the main event. The Jacob and Co. Watch with the Triton logo as well. How much is it worth? Twenty-two k euro. Okay. Yeah. It looks looks alright. Two tens and a jack, putting Soize in front of the boys. On the it's button with the best of it. Forest with the gutty. Speaking of that watch, you get another one if you win this one. That's right. If Henrik plays, he can have one on each wrist. 1,500. At the same time. <laughs> 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 That'd be pretty strong, wouldn't it? All right, so as so as it goes for a little button bet. Inside straight draw for Dvoris. Is he going to peel? Looks like he is. See if he can hit a queen or king. A oh, queen. presto, the queen rolling right off. And those gut shots are quite a bit easier in short deck to make than they are in their long deck counterpart. So as I have improved in terms of quality of hand, has certainly some concerns about the board texture. Goals sounded like 2,500. Yeah. Yeah. A bit of a value check back the river if you get cold kind of situation. Divorce now. Keep it small.
eight on the river. Doesn't complicate matters for Devoris after flatting. Second nut straight, but a paired board. Not going to give Soiza too much ace-king here on the button. After the limpers, he would have probably juiced it up. So the only real concern is whether or not he's up against a boat, which he knows he isn't after Soiza checks back. Exactly. Not really one of those spots where we're going to ask, where's the rest of that pot? We get it. So last night was the player party, Randy. Did you have a chance to attend? Yeah, Ch chatted with some people. Yeah, um, any good stories? No good stories. I mean, why not? I'm not asking for an expose. <laughs> expose. Uh, but uh, they they had a bunch of drinks, obviously, everywhere. Everyone's having fun, live music. Uh, they were cutting yeah. some pig up for the Canada? the ham. Not, not like live. Right Cutting some pig up <laughs> makes it sound like we had a ritualistic <laughs> sacrifice for good luck prior to the main. No, they had some Iberico jamón. Yeah, Whoa, that sounds classy, <laughs> the way you did it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, I promise you there was... Everybody, please don't go notifying PETA. We are not slaughtering animals. Yeah, there was some past hors d'oeuvres, mm -hmm. cocktails, open bar. DJ. Some dancing. Saw yeah, some, saw some I was out there cutting a rug a little bit. Yeah. Seven, nine, ten with a couple of clubs. Ivy blocking the gutter that Soiza has flopped here with his overpair. Yeah, this is a game where usually your outs is in the other guy's hands. Let's see what happens. Ivy going to try to control the pot. A lot of times, people do just check fold the 10-9-7 if they raise pre-flop. But Soyuz has got just enough to continue. Problem is, the clean out he's looking for is in Ivy's hand. And there's a straight for Ivy. Gutter. Slides right in there. Oh, it's because of the law. That's why it's not on that thing. It's because of Spanish law. I needed that one. <laughs> Better than that, huh? I needed, I needed your card. On here, Spanish law. Are you king queen? But they were before, the weren't they? King clubs. I, I don't know. Or maybe they were, but they're on stream, but not the... Hmm. What's well, better than an ivy laws. smile, Randy? Sure. Not a lot. I no. Maybe... Yeah. Tom Dwan smile? That'd be nice. Yeah, he's a tough customer at times, but I feel like you see a lot more of the, the, the Dwan smile the at the table. Uh, hmm? I didn't call the that. I just put it on my interview. Yeah. yeah, like the gambling laws, the whole like tax laws. Five. Five I oh, ho, ho. Upstairs, says Ivy with 10-9 off suit as Soiza hasn't in bad shape with Jack-10 suited. But yeah. will he want to invest another 15K? It is such a powerful hand in short deck. Tons of range. Not too much interference with the ace-queens, ace-kings, and big pairs of the world. And look at this oh. flop for Soiza. Gut shot royal flush draw. We'll see whether or not Ivy is going to get busy representing. This is supposed to hit Ivy when you're three bet. Sure. I like the small bet. If you had Ace King, you would bet this way too. For Soiza, I think, look, just put it in, run it, Hold and it. if you bust, you got those bullet chips. And sure enough, he jams Ivy with the quick fold. And Soiza, northbound. Chip leader overall in the early going here. Ike Haxton, normally we wouldn't even bring it up <laughs> if it weren't for the fact that he's sitting with 325,000. If you're following along on the <laughs> Triton Poker Plus app, you can see how many bullets players have redeemed. Oops, 
That's a pretty cool feature. I didn't know they had that. Yeah. It might be a new advent. Eight, nine, jack. All hearts. Nobody with a flush draw. Ivy. With a pair of nines. Currently the leader. Soiza open ended. Gutter for Dvoris. Yeah, hard to bet on the three heart board. Four yeah. hearts now. Round of checks. Now aces and nines. Is anyone going to stab? Ivy's the man to do it. So I was wondering why Ivy's betting a four flush. Lays it down. Ivy's been active. Sure has. Currently, he is the short stack. Well, maybe before that pot. Yeah, you can't be short because you got the bullets, you know. You can't yeah, call, yeah, can't that's call a good short point. Stack yet. Maybe we should rechristen it the power stack <laughs> in your short deck. But I think during the re-entry period and. You know, specifically when people have not been forced to redeem all of their barrels, which once the re-entry period ends, you are. Mm -hmm. um, there really can never be a short stack in the <laughs> traditional sense of the word. Yeah, just are you almost out of stacks? Two aces, two hearts, and a jack here. Not in the zip code for either player. You can see how the veterans are maneuvering these early levels. Limp parade in front of Ivy's button. He checks it. A couple of 10 sevens, a queen eight, and a king nine. Duan has middle pair and the bad end of the gut shot. He checks. Yeah, actually, everyone's got a pretty weak hand. Soizo is actually the most interesting despite being unpaired. Let's see what happens. Round to knuckles. Now the seven creating bottom two for the 10 sevens, but giving Soizo the jack high straight. But Dwan's one reaching for chips. Trying to just clear out the field. So is it with the straight? Debating raising and calling. It's gonna be hard for Dwan to make a boat. Ivy just laid down the same hand. And an ace on the end does not improve dirt. I got a... What, one second. So Soiza... Action is on Soiza. See if the value bet's coming. King Queen got there. True. So I think that's what he's thinking about. Like, can I get called by worse? Quick bet and fold. Got a trivia question for you. I'm ready. How many R's is in Durr's screen name? Oh, man. It has been so long. I have a confession. I have not played a single hand of online poker in terms of a cash game on, like, a, a major site since Black Friday. Now, during the pandemic, there were some local club private type things. We took our live game. We went online. It didn't last very long because I realized how much the social aspect of the game mattered to me. But the last time I laid eyes on Duan's screen name was like over 10 years ago. 
But you still gotta guess. And you gotta do it quickly because look at this. Oh yeah, he's king and two kings. Let's go with five R's. I don't know the answer. I've gotta look it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing trivia where you don't have you don't have the payoff? Come on. 5K to go from Ivy in the cutoff after Dvoris limped the ace six suited and now Duan just calls Randy. Yeah. Surprised? I am surprised. I mean, I mean, Duan's it's got a different style game, so like I said, it's kind of refreshing to see how he approaches this. Two nines and a ten with a couple of spades. Dvoris totally disconnected. Checks it. Ivy, not in love, but the ace of spades does work. Those backdoor flushes, so hard to come by. Duan with the overpair. Mulling. Takes it down. I'm still looking. Need more time. It's like those news articles can't decide whether it's four or five or six. You, you're seeing different numbers of R's <laughs> yeah, in the news articles? No, no, I'm trying to find like a hand history now. for Ivy, shoots it. Four. Four R's. Four R's. Well, I would have said five, too, actually. That four was my other guess if I, if I wasn't going five, and then I was like, no. Meanwhile, ace, ace, ten here. As Devoris flops the best hand up against the gut shot and, of course, some credibility out of Ivy. Not too hard to make trip aces. In short deck. So it's got the middle pair. Lays it down. You see, you'll see this a lot, actually. Like people don't really defend the middle pair, bottom pair, especially on a paired board that's like that, where oh, maybe I hit another ten, but I still can't win if he's got an ace. Mm -hmm. Your hand's very vulnerable, even against king queen. You're not like that far ahead because it's a short deck. It's easy for him to hit a jack queen king, so that's why you kind of see here. this fold a lot more. Oh yeah. Slides in with the jack nine. Devoris has him in rough shape with queen jack suited. Check. Check. Eight six on the button for Soiza. Nothing to be proud of. King queen nine on the board. And Ivy has bottom pair and the same gutty that Devoris holds with middle pair. Phil probes for 2K. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of stabs and probes. This price is just good enough to see what develops on the turn. And that development comes in the form of an ace. Coincidentally, Soiza would have had top pair here. Never a caller with ace six, of course. I like that Ivy's reaching for chips here. It seems scary. But the thing is, Dvoris will probably raise like ace king pre, ace queen, would raise jack town and flop a decent amount of time. So the ace is actually a pretty scary card. And that second barrel gets the job done for Phil. Ah, nice. Thank you. Want the salad, please? <laughs> 
I thought he was saying nice thank you about winning the pot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, Phil, it's a pretty small pot to be that excited. Is this me or Phil? This is an Uber Eats town, by the way, or all it? sorts of food delivery apps. I mean, you look on the street, every other bike is a dude with a like refrigerator <laughs> backpack on and some sort of cold or hot meal, biking around. Aces. Three limps in front of Phil. On the dealer button, the most suspicious position in sure. the game. And he's like casually grabbing his food, like, oh yeah, try to make it look like I'm just messing around. We'll see. Looks, looks pretty good, right? Yeah. Not enough, though. Oh, I think I got another noodle. Mm. Oh, Ace no. Jack eight. Top set for Ivy as Devoris was the only customer and has himself in a bit of a pickle. Solid hand. You gotta remember, Divorce just saw Ivy like three bed and fold on the ace king board, so he's probably thinking Ivy's just kind of going for it a little bit more. What's that turn? Pairs the board, puts a spade out there. Divorce, after check calling, does not pick up the flush draw. So Ivy's got a full house. The thing is. Say another spade rolls off, he's going to lose the pot. So technically speaking, there is value in kind of protecting your hand. Yeah. Ace is full, not nutted in this spot. Mm-hmm. King on the river. Uncomplicated card. Devoris no longer playing the queen kicker, however. Ivy keeps an eye on him. Yeah, this is awkward. He's got a. He's trying to eat, but he's got like this big <laughs> hand in front of him. It's like, hmm. I wonder what Devoris is making of Ivy's kind of split attention here. If he's going to read it as disinterest, he does decide to check. Ivy bets 18,000. I, I think it's pretty hard to call here of Ace Queen. It's uh, it's a pretty scary board. I guess he's wondering why Ivy checked the turn. Does he think Ivy would bet an Ace himself? Chop it up. Calls. Nice value. Yeah. Good sizing there from Ivy. It's those noodles. <laughs> <laughs> and a little milking off of Devoris's stack there. Who had aces? Huh? Who had aces? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> worth pausing the meal for? Huh? Worth pausing your meal to race, I guess. some oil on my hands, one sec. Just a limp. Mm, are we missing 500? Yeah, his, his auntie's missing. Where's? I mean, just, yeah, just take 500 out of this stack. <laughs> this one. This one next time. Okay, thank you. They got Ivy on autopilot. <laughs> Twan shoots it up and takes it. 
This is the time to take advantage of Ivy. Then he comes back. There's never a time <laughs> to take advantage of Phil Ivy, Randy. Stop. You try and then you just lose more. Yeah. He's one of those guys that can really lull you into thinking maybe he's not razor sharp in his attention to every detail wait, wait, wait. I in any given moment yet. in a poker <laughs> hand. Putting the empty out. Yeah. But as we've just borne witness to time and again, he sees it all. Buddy. Change, huh? Though famously, in the World Series of Poker, once upon a time, he folded the best hand. Oh, I you remember, remember that? And that was really deep in the tournament. That was a yeah. crucial pot. Very much so. But you show me someone who has played poker as long as he has, at the levels that he has, who hasn't at least had one or two hiccups. His just happened to be on camera. Yeah, that was, uh, he needed the noodles then. Yeah, you don't want to get that blood. That's <laughs> why he's eating the noodles right now. You don't want to let the blood sugar get low when you're out here playing under case. Meanwhile, Ace-9-6, two players with gut shot straight draws, have checked to Daniel Devoris, who has the same gut shot but the benefit of a pair. And position, sprinkling 2,500 out there. Looks like Soyce is even thinking about raising. Maybe making a play. It does. Looks strong. I mean, the issues for Dvoris include the fact that once the seven rolls off, it's not as though your hand is necessarily disguised when you put a raise or a big bet in. Correct, okay. yeah. It's like hard to get value if you happen to make that straight. And you don't Good necessarily want to hit an eight here. I'm sure given Soiza has raised it up, you kind of remove seven X from some of his range, especially because he was under the gun. King would be perceived as a scary card for Devor, so Soiza might try to represent like an ace king. It is reasonable to check raise it. Yeah, I like this bet. Divorce on a dealer bunny cap, so many random hands. Solid play. Soiza showing he's not afraid to get after a pot. Yeah, told you Excellent. he was good. Well, it's that under the gun position when you limp and then you put the aggression in there on the ace high board. You get some respect. It's good too. It's really good. Yeah, later off I'll get it. You, did you uh, get someone to get it for you or can you Uber Eats it here? If somebody's here with me. Okay. For me, yeah. You can Uber Eats as well. I can send somebody. Um, yeah, uh, Adamo orders Uber Eats. Ivy's limp. I don't even Leaned on by Vontaze Jack. Wow. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I call. What do you have total? 100? Just under 100. <sighs> Ivy. Calls the extra 3,500 here. He's had a lot of king eight in the early going, and he's got the best of it on this flop. Two spades, two nines, and a cowboy. He checks it over to Duan, who's got the ace of spades working for him. Pretty dry board. Just going to stab. Hoping Ivy doesn't have that king. Jack of hearts and Ivy has picked up the flush draw while Duan hits the jack. Yeah, so now that he's picked up the jack, it's good enough to try and check down. He would beat the gut shots that hit a pair as well. Jack 10, queen jack. Enough showdown value. Six is very dry here on the river. 
question becomes whether Ivy wants to potentially value bet, try to represent in this flush draw, or just check because his kicker is very weak. Depends well, on it, it's a jack kicker. Yeah, it just depends on what he thinks Duan would do with a better king kicker, like a king queen, and ace king would he check. It's good. Oh, yeah, 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 I can't. King, king, king. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you haven't already, head over to m88.com. Why? Not just because they're the official sponsor of Triton Madrid and La Liga, but more so because they provide the most competitive sports book selection around, the largest collection of casino games, and the most immersive live dealer experience. Join the M88 Mansion Party today. Now, I actually joined the party last night. Mm -hmm. Not just the one that we were hosting for the players here. Like in Ban? Like in but Alberta somewhere? Yeah. Just the somewhere one that like we created in one of the 1-3 oh. Euro No Limit games oh. downstairs. Got my feet wet. Good friend for a long time, Jose Andres, one of the most famous chefs in the world. Tremendous humanitarian. Nominee for the Nobel Peace Prize, doing a lot of work in Ukraine. Happens to be Operation. filming with National Geographic and Discovery Channel here in Madrid. Wow. Hung out a couple times. We used to play poker back when I lived in Los Angeles. He had an award-winning restaurant there by the name of Bazaar, a block from my house. We'd shut it down. We'd play cards. Hadn't seen him in years. Mm -hmm. okay. And, of course, once we saw each other, the itch was there. He said, listen, no, store let me know. We can get a game going. I thought for sure. That a lot of the guys around here, many of whom are foodies, I was introducing them to, would be excited at the opportunity to just play some super small stakes, have a few beers, throw some money around, private game. None of them wanted to play. They were like, what stakes? Last was like, no. They're like, I'm playing 100K tomorrow, man. Leave me alone. So it was just he and I. We went downstairs, played in one of the public games. Needless to say, everybody in the game was super excited to meet him and take pictures and, yeah. and have a good time. And uh, he took a wicked beat the end of the night to get felted so the night did not end on a great note he got two jacks all in against a local kid who put in a five bet with uh or he put in the four bet got jammed on kid had ace five <laughs> the solver he I'm did like, a solver what on is Jose? going on and he had two jacks and it came nine three three seven on the turn and then binky and ace on the river kid showered jose and off we went meanwhile two jacks a nine and an eight on this board where bottom two has been counterfeited for Duan. I would have loved that game. Damn it. Okay. I should have told you. Yeah. Didn't see you. I feel like I've seen his rest of his name around in Vegas. Is that possible? Absolutely. Yeah, restaurant. Several restaurants r yeah. in the uh, Cosmopolitan, Haleo, China Poblano, Bazaar Meat at the Sahara. Yeah. As the newcomer to our feature table, Rui Cao, such a prolific and aggressive short deck player. Is out here asking questions. Bad end of the gut shot. Jackson nines. So Dewan's got three pairs. Makes a call. He's creative, so I'm curious to see how he maneuvers this river card. <laughs> Look at this river. It's the 10. It gives Rui Cow the best <laughs> hand with the straight. Devoris had the best of it with the two kings. No longer the case. Yeah. And Rui <laughs> checking. I can't see Daniel necessarily doing anything no. other than checking back here. But how did Rui win? It's it's not near impossible. Jeez. Uh, ah. Can you imagine showing this down and winning? Oh, this is going to this is going to leave a little acid reflux on the boys. <laughs> Look at proudly flipping over the 7 and saying straight. <laughs> Divorce is disgusted. Yeah. He's like, what? 9-7 always wins. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Frenchman loves him some short deck. 8.4 million in Triton right. earnings, nine caches, and two titles, one of which came earlier in the 25K short deck right here in Madrid, where Rui won 497,000 euros. Only has 61 annies at present, but he still has a bullet remaining. Everybody else with two left of their original three, one used for the first buy-in, of course, Ivy. The big stack, Devoris. Now, the proverbial short stack with 43K. As the antis slip forward to 1K, those counts brought to you by Polymarket.
Yeah, I want to say that Rui Cal is ready for some vengeance, right? He was massive chip leader in the one that Webster eventually went run, won, and kind of went crazy, lost it all. I think I heard him in the hallway was kind of like, oh man, I see him punted it, you know, like, which just went too crazy. Yeah, he's ready to rock some people up today. He's also one of those guys that isn't afraid to IC him punt sometimes. <laughs> like, he just, he's got that, buddy, I d don't put the cuffs on me with this ICM nonsense. I want to do Rui things. Mm hmm. But yeah, he loves short deck. I want to say he's the most aggressive short deck player that I know of. Sad to see him without the bandana today. We had rechristened him Rui Cowboy <laughs> when he was rocking it. But now we cannot do that. By the way, you can't spell ruin someone's day without Rui. Just so you know. And he's ruined plenty of days when he's out in the mm -hmm. short deck streets. Five-way affair here. Family pot. Two queens and a six. Two hearts. Devoris with the flush draw. Checks it. Not a single queen in anyone's hand. No one even has a pair here. Look at this. Yeah, Duan. Repping. Using position. You actually will see a lot of someone usually stabbing really small on these paired boards. It's just so unlikely they've got it and they fold that other card anyways. King. Hmm. Nine on the turn and Juan now has the best hand. Improbably. But once Dvoris calls this board texture, really the flush draw tends to be the only thing given his participation in the pot from his position that would make sense that the 10-9 mm -hmm. uh, would be beating on the turn. So we do see Duan check back, and we do see Dvoris get there. So difficult to make a flush in short deck with just nine of each suit available to draw upon. So Dvoris trying to decide, does Duan have a queen? Of course, he may be bluffing. He's going to just bet out himself, hope for some kind of crying call, but might be a little ambitious to call 10-9 here. They don't really beat anything unless it's a pure float. Maybe Duan's debating trying to rip the flush himself. Nah. Respectful fold there. 10-9, not exactly nutted. Far from it. Divorce will be disappointed not to get paid off, but chips coming your way, always a good thing, whether it's short deck or long deck. Daniel with 43 antis. I like the short deck, long deck lingo. Yeah, long deck. It's a little slippery. Uh, Dvoris actually up to 54 innings now after that pot. You know, don't want to mispronounce anything there. <laughs> It'd be a very different description. 8-9 suited. As Dvoris limps in. Soiza following suit. And dominated by Ivy. Wants to thin the herd here. Hey, congrats on the first tournament. <laughs> oh, the PLO Tony. Yeah. Nice, congrats. 8K. So is oh, you won the PLO yesterday? Do you want some love? How many okay. did they get? 290,000 euros. Yeah. Like, how many entrants? I don't know. Not many, yes. Not, not many? Maybe 25? It's like, a, I think under a mil price. So, must be at yeah, like 35. Oh, or 40 maybe. 35. 850 or 900 or something price pool. The Juan says 290,000 first is small. Yeah, he's like, not much. Yeah. How many entries? I don't know. There's no <laughs> more no one in the holding <laughs> corners left? I think that's it. That's it, it's over. 
It, it just is in the 150, right? Or is there, like, there is a turbo as well, 30k short deck. Like it after the 150? Oh. Hmm? I'm assuming after the 150? Yeah, the last event is a 30k yeah, turbo. Okay. That makes sense. I love, I love that short deck in and of itself somehow so. was deemed inadequately high variance. And so they were like, you know what? We should add a turbo element. <laughs> It's the 150. Oh, the yeah. 150s are all at once. That's like yes, 400 empties. Th for those who bet sports, so you've run game? bad Something like this all Sunday, Sunday on the game slate. And, and then you're like, no, but I'm going to chase it with the, the Sunday empties, night game. And then that doesn't sure work out. And you're like, Monday night football. There's always Monday night football. Let me bet that. You going to pay? I not thought sure. I might have overheard Soiza saying in the 150k sure. you I'm might have sure. to put your whole stack in right away. I don't know. There were some discussions. I think it's a bit fluid, but as of right now, that is technically it's correct. All lammers it's must be redeemed <laughs> immediately. So we're going to see kind of deep stack enough. short deck play, which we've yet to really have an opportunity to see. Certainly before getting down to maybe like a final a table. Max late or match. 60 NT, maybe. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Before registration closes. If I'm not mistaken, 50 or 60 MP. Wow. Isn't it a freeze out? Like, you can only fire one. Oh, is it? I don't I think it so. was. I, think I, I, don't, I, I don't think it's a freeze out. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, so that, that can get expensive. Yeah. Trip 8's here for Brewery Cow. Trying to rep. How do I beat? Oh, were we Cal thinking about folding? Ten Jack got there, courtesy of the Queen. So His kicker with the eight does play. Sure yeah, the kicker is actually pretty important here. Side mm -hmm. call. Yeah, kind of rolled his eyes. Wasn't proud of it whatsoever. Ivy. Turning the sevens into a bluff. I mean, if you can get eights to think about folding there, then that sevens bet seems much better. But I can't believe they're making a hundred and fifty thousand dollar buy-in, like a euro buy-in. It we're just going bigger, you know. <laughs> Don't act surprised. It's been on the schedule the whole time, <laughs> Randy. This isn't some off-the-cuff decision. True. These are the same people that brought us the one million pound buy-in. Relax. Oh, so it's, as Dwan probably would say, that's a small game. Yeah. I'll play it then. Thank you. Sorry. It's easy to get desensitized, isn't it? To sort of just how much money we're talking about, the sums that are being traded in the cash games here, mm -hmm. the ones that we film and the ones that we don't as well as these massive stakes tournaments. But if you go over in a full run in Triton, you're talking about a big blow to your bankroll. Yes. Assuming, well, I mean, these bankrolls are large. But yes, I understand what you're saying. Especially with the rebuys. Mm -hmm. You know, the average of two buy-ins, I think it was, in the 100K per player. I'm, I've seen in the past some people in for like five bullets or more in 100k, so like so wild. it can get crazy, but then sometimes they just ship it anyway, so it's like, oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> 8 10 queen with a couple of diamonds. The board pairs on the turn here in a four way affair where Devon wants to figure out what's going on out there. Two overs in the Broadway gutty, Rui open ended. Lots of stabbing, you see. 7-9, both into the muck. 7-9 would have got there. Ace-King is good. He doesn't know it. He's, he sees that Ace of Hearts, like, maybe I can take a stab out. Rui's got King High. Can he get anything to fold right now? He thinks so. That is a 2.5x pot bet. 50k with King Jack. <laughs> Polarizing. Trying to rep that flush. How is Dwan not folded yet? He's just got Ace King High. And oh my it's God, good. because he knows Rui is capable. It's such a polarizing sizing, right? It yeah. feels like either you backed into the hearts, <coughs> pardon me, or maybe you don't have much. Because mm -hmm. wouldn't Queen's Full try to milk? 
Yeah, this, this is really like, I know we're on level one, but a really perfect lineup to watch. Like those are those three guys on the left, amazing short deck You're players. You're so right. They were here from the get go. So much experience. You know, I talk a lot about how the VIPs, the businessmen, the recreational players who are regulars on Triton, improve each and every stop mm -hmm. by virtue of having a front row seat to the top players in the game navigate. Sorry. Not necessarily For understanding the principles or the concepts that I are influencing their decisions, but just by a little bit yeah, of mimicry and just recognizing, oh yeah, I remember this guy did this in a similar spot. Probably a good thing to do, mm -hmm. sort of recreating plus EV situations for themselves. But I think the inverse on some levels can be true for the long deck pros when they're playing with the VIPs and the businessmen who tend to do a lot more, have a lot more short deck under their belts. And you start to watch how they approach things and go, well, that's an interesting little concept. Yeah. That worked out kind of cool. And Rui Cal, even though he is a professional poker player by trade, hailing from the Asian contingent and having kind of more of that Let's call it D-Gen Phantom sort of uh, vibe about him as I play back off of the oh. Triton Play Game, the new app that we're developing and teasing here. We have factions yeah. where every demographic of Triton is sort of represented. The tycoons, yeah. the legends. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at this real quick. Wow, did he just flop Jack-9? Oh, man. Jack's full on the flop for Dwan as I picked a poor time to get deep into his story. Ivy finds himself drawing live with Jack-10, but in trouble and in need of help. And there it is, no waiting, the 10 right away. And now only another 10 could have rescued Dwan. Instead, time to redeem a lammer, young man. Of heart. Six of heart. So we know Rui Cow's the D-Gen. What do oh, we classify oh, Ivy? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> well, we have the, the Wizards, the D-Gen. The Wizards, that's what it is. Uh, well, the Wizards are the GTO guys. Yeah. In the I don't app, think right? Ivy ever opened a salt. Uh, listen, I think Ivy's been a D-Gen. You put a pair of dice in his hand, and he's definitely <laughs> been down that path. I wouldn't call him a D-Gen. I wouldn't call him a wizard. I don't, fall. I don't, really don't want to say a phantom. A phantom. No, he's not a tycoon either. I yeah. think a phantom is probably the best way to describe him, right? Because he's the kind of guy that can throw the GTO out of the window at any given moment mm -hmm. when he just looks through your soul and decides, yeah, you don't got it. I think you're right. Tom's still getting stuck anyway. That's my vote anyhow. See, those two guys on the right, those are wizards. Gar hands down, no questions oh, yeah. asked. Divorce uh, and Soiza. Oh, yeah. Tom Dwan. Also a phantom, right? Phantom, but a little DJ <laughs> as well. <laughs> but we're we're gonna agree with Rui Cal on the DJ part. Are you allowed to be a part of more than one faction? I think I wouldn't he call wants him a tycoon. To, he I wants wouldn't to call be. him a wizard. I think <laughs> he's a DJ phantom. Yeah. Let's see. So there's already 20,000 in this pot. Tom, dealer button, going to represent. And these guys are just fighting for pots. So much history between Dwan and Ivy. Way back in the days playing the Rail Heaven games yeah. on full tilt. And if you have a few years under your poker belt, you probably remember them pre-Black Friday. Massive stakes, just incomprehensibly big games. Mm -hmm. Who else played out there? The likes of Phil Galfon? Yes. Was Isildur a part of that he was period back in time? Yeah, he was back then too. And then there was John Juwanda. Sure. He was in Juwanda there. Juwanda was involved in those games. Yeah. Patrick Antonius Patrick was, in those games. was playing in those games. I want to say the famous SB Rugby 
Brian he Townsend, did day. he get involved like in the Real purpose? Heaven days? Or was he, he just he was heads up? He was there, I believe, yeah. I don't think he was there for the whole time, but he was there. I'm not really yeah, it's funny. Place. Dwan and I were chatting about him the other day. When I brought his name up, he, he kind of looked at me like, yeah, he was there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after we got his stat. Yeah, exactly. He it didn't work gone. out so well for him. He did run it up. Pumped a lot of fear for a minute there, but then it all came crashing down. Cool. New player, Santi J. Yeah, a Spaniard from the home team with the ace-10 suited. Limps in. Ivy does the same with ace-7. Oh, yes. We'll see the connector for Dwan and Ray Cow says, let's go, boys. In position in a four-way affair. King Jack six. Was that another sound effect? Did somebody give a noodle slurp sound effect on that flop? It's got to be IP. <laughs> I want to say it is. He's been... It's funny. <laughs> Showing us a bit of a different side here. He's got like these really subtle jokes. You know how Michael Jordan used to put his tongue out when he was going to do something yeah. amazing on the basketball court? I feel like with Ivy, it's just the mouth comes open a little <laughs> bit, and then you just hold your breath, and you're like, uh-oh, are we going to see something awesome? All righty, so open-ended versus the gut shot straight. Santi J. Unpaired versus unpaired. No longer the case as both players hit the 10. Advantage Santi with the better kicker. Yeah, but they both don't think that card is good right now. So, a couple of knuckles. Inconsequential looking seven on the end. Thinking about turning their hands into bluffs. First one of that would probably win this, but they could check it down. Ace 10 would be good. Check, check. Kicker. As Santi Jiang, who's participating in his first ever Triton event, picks up his first pot here at the feature table. He did finish seventh in the 25K short deck for 83.5. Coincidentally, the only other two events besides that one that he has played thus far have both been short decks. So, specialist, Seven. specialist indeed. One of the pair, standard king and our check. Okay, so 44 anties, rip it in. This is what we're talking about, the short sex and kind of just jam it in and hope for the best and collect the anties. No customers confirmed. DeVore is taking a second before he turns his hand in. We've all been there. You throw your hand toward the market and they're like, hey, I called, buddy. And you're like, whoa, give me that back. Still with two bullets left. Recal with just one. Santi. Two bullets left. Duan just one. As we saw his jacks full of nines get down by Ivy. Ivy with two bullets left. And Soiza. Same story. Meanwhile, a limp up front from the ace king lures ace jack into the pot. Rui Cow. Like spades. Trying to trap divorce. I think once they saw some guy just open ship, they oh yeah. Could try to trap the guy who's desperate. Jack seven six. Dwan hits the side card for top pair. Three cow. Flush draw. 
And divorce with bottom pair. Round of checks. Nine on the turn, and now a two-way straight draw added to the mix for Rui Cow. Ace Jack, gonna try to thin out the field now. Snap call, Wiley whistles, no less, from Rui Cow. So he's got sound effects too. is a queen giving Rui Cow the best hand. Oh, and Duan obviously <laughs> not gonna bet. It was funny the way he turned his hand up. He was like, Jack? Mm -hmm. And Rui just gave him the, no, no. But the way he said no made it seem like the river wasn't what beat him. He was already beat. Not the case, obviously, as the flush draw misses in the best of ways. Yeah. I, I actually really like how fast Rui Cal plays. It's like 0.1 seconds. Yeah, you refreshing. Know. Yeah. That guy doesn't need a time clock. If he could trade those time clocks for, you no, know, cappuccino, he would. I've never seen players drink this much coffee. Either the barista back here is is like top five on earth, <laughs> or no one's sleeping. I don't know which it is. I'm going to lean towards no one's sleeping. I'll tell you what, Madrid doesn't sleep. That is right. I know that because the city keeps me up each night I'm trying to go to bed on the infrequent occasion on which I'm doing so at a reasonable hour. Last night, I think I turned in at 7 a.m. And you're here. You're sharp, though, right now, so can't notice. Oh, Randy. I'm a dull knife right now. Aces. Go grab me one of those cappuccinos, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Queens running into it here as Soiza on the best of spots with the best of hands. Uh-oh. Rui Cal, two queens. Tried to lay the trap. Oh, man. All in. Well, we know Soyuz is never going anywhere, and Rui can't like it when he gets snap called like that. Queen. Please. Please. I have to be nice, please. For favor. 182k in the middle. Oh, and there is a queen high board. No waiting. Two runners needed. Oh, it's quads on the turn. So, Soyuz's aces get showered. Not three. Now he's down to just 23k. Have you ever seen anybody buy into a short deck event and just redeem all lammers at the same time? You're not obligated to stick them in there one by one. Mm, no. Would there be any argument in favor of doing so? Mm, not that you if you do, nice. you might be the spot in the no. game. It's just not a good strategy. Oh, they made it so big. Um, you're Cancel. just creating a situation where everyone else can take advantage of your situation. Can for right? Like, for example, a simple example would be Can like, I don't know if it's simple, but, Can you know, you reshove on someone, but now you have to commit more chips when you just want to only pay like 60 antes or something, you got like an ace queen, you don't want to reshove in 200 right. antes. You actually someone. cripple yourself mm -hmm. by buying in too much. You give yourself less options, less plays. Tom call I shot for sure. Tom call I shot for sure. I don't, I don't know what to do. So I think Tom got moved away. Make you four race nine off sometimes. Either that or he quit. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to play Rui anymore. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he's going to mind getting moved out of that seat with Rui on his left. Yeah, one player who's more aggressive than him. I'm very tight player. Come on. He just said he's a tight player. Please. So he's just trying to sell us. 
on the idea that he only plays straightforward poker. No, that man's got moves. He knows when to bob and weave. Seven, six of hearts. It looks good. It's just really not a good hand. But he knows how to maneuver. He's going to see the first undergun limper. He can represent those ace kings and ace queens. Those guys always trap under the gun. He has stone air here, and both gut shots go right into the muck. Lee really Cow just kind of giving us a taste of why he is as successful Glass in short deck as he's been. I feel like he gets a little bit of enjoyment of getting people fold like hands. You know, some people. That's kind of like a DJ trait to me. Yeah, sure. I buy that. up front. Ruiz says run it. King 10, 9. Devoris. Top pair up against bottom 2. And the gutter for Cal. So this is just sitting on 20 ante, so it's actually a really nice spot. For, <laughs> see, like, Devoris. usually you're pretty scared of bottom 2, but when you're this short, you're like, oh, it's simple. I just go all in and see if I happen to win the pot. I would imagine he'd want to jam this, this oh, small yeah. stack. Yeah. And on divorce, actually in a tough it's spot. Like 20. It's like the you price is too good to fold. Yeah, not really anywhere for him to go. No diamond to speak of. No straight draw. 43% still? Really? Dang. Short deck. Uh, hashtag short deck. Yes, very much so. Ace on the turn and the river. Is a jack. Nines and tens will hold and double for Soiza. That goes to show you how weak bottom two pair is in this game. Um, that Dvorah still had that much equity. Yeah. And why you'll see people play very cautiously uh, with it when they're deeper stacked. No question. Now, in that cash game last night that I played, mm -hmm. I kept thinking that I was in late position, when actually, I was in the blinds. Why? Yeah, why? Please tell me. <laughs> because the dealer button moves counterclockwise out here, and the blinds are placed to the right. So it's reversed. It's reversed. It's so mm. awkward and discombobulating. I can't even begin to tell you. So you can't even like figure out who's first to add. It's so, it took yeah. me the better part of two or three orbits uh, little, right. before I gathered myself. I thought it would be it's much better than Barcelona. Then our producer I mean, James Dempsey came sniffing around, looking for a spot. You go a little bit Ever the cherry picking so. game selector. <laughs> So he tried to get position on you, but he put, took the wrong seat. Exactly. No, we didn't have a seat for him. We did, but we pretended we didn't. He actually wanted to sweat my hand in one hand exactly. Prior to doing so, he goes, I'm really bad luck. I was <laughs> like, well, then why am I going to let you sweat my hand? I let him sweat anyway. I put it in the muck. I promptly flopped the second nut flush. However, in a sweet moment of justice... My buddy Jose, mm -hmm. he flopped the nut flush, and wow. I wasn't in there. Would have been socially awkward if I got stacked by him. Four players to the queen, 10, 9 flop. Ivy with the two-way straight four. draw. Starts by betting 4,000. Top pair in the open ender for Rui Cao now. He'll, of course, call. Pair and the flush draw for Santi Chiang. Yeah, 
Yeah, so Santi's thinking about can he play aggressive? Probably not. Just try to hit your hand. He hits. Oh, it. yeah. Hits it. No waiting and leaves the field drawing dead here. Ivy does have the jack of hearts, however. Yeah, Ivy stabbed the flop, so it's actually a little tempting to keep firing, right? You're like, oh, well, if they call me, I can still hit a heart. Nice check. Save themselves. Kyle checking as well. Santi, these 10 of hearts. I don't know that Cal put tremendous amount of thought into this turn spot, but if you don't think Ivy's going to be leading with the flush draw too often into the field, and you're unblocking hearts as Rui Cal, then you start to ask yourself, what did Santi Jiang overcall with? Mm. Yeah. And as we see, it was the hearts, and Cal just folds. Let me think about it. He knows he's got so much experience. He, yeah. He knows this game in and out. Like, we need to analyze it over time, and we can see all the whole cards, but he's like, I know these spots. Analyze is a bit rich. I don't know that that's the verb that you can assign to what I do here in the short deck streets, but much like a lot of the players who are newer to the game, keep those eyes and ears open and absorb some of the approaches to this Hold'em variant. Kings, slow playing. On T. Chung here, ace jack. Starting foot call. Divorce is so short. And Soiza is pretty short too. I have you tried to trap one of those short stacks. Couldn't get a single one of them to yeah. do it. Yeah. Kind of surprising. Yeah. Nine nine eight two clubs. So he's his gut shot blocked by Dvoris, who is cooked by these two kings. One of the better flops for two eights. It's um, reasonable for him to take a stab here. A lot of people don't continue on paired boards. But Ivy's got pocket kings going nowhere. Turn. A jack giving Dvoris a gutter. He's got just 22k behind, 15 in the middle. Checks it and does not bink it. Seven pairs on the river, and now these kings can feel pretty comfortable. Yeah, it's um unlikely Dvoris would play a hand of a seven in it, so. That's why you see him value betting, trying to get called by like Jack 10, something that would stab this flop. Seventy five hundred, half pot, the sizing. Thinking about it. Time banking. Okay, so holding the eights, he's like, well, he can't have a straight, unlikely. It looks like, he's like, would you really value bet a non-full house and a non-straight right now? He might not think Ivy would, but Ivy is doing that. Pocket kings. Can beat busted clubs. Ivy factor, lay it down. Just because Daniel's down to his last 22 doesn't mean that he's going to be lined up in the punting formation. By the way, Molly, you know that picture about the mountain in Linus? Someone sent it to me. Oh, I've really? Seen, I've seen it. Do you want to see? I do want to see it. Yeah. I feel like we should share it with the folks at home if possible. Well, it was 
someone I had in my contacts. Let me find it. Give me a second. Two jacks for Devoris. Rips it in there. Ivy's got ace queen, and we'll give him a spin with the two over cards. 50 50. Cow. Calling it correctly. 50 50. Until, of course, an ace and a queen roll off the board. And now. Not the case any longer. Two outs once for Devoris, and Queen's full on the river for Ivy as Daniel will redeem a bullet. I'm trying to log in, and I'm getting captured, and I can't pass the capture. <laughs> Give me a second. What is it, like uh, bicycles? Boats. Bridges? Boats. It's always something. I hate those things. You want me to ghost your CAPTCHA? Uh, I've already failed it. Hold on. <laughs> oh, you already busted out? <laughs> you want me to team viewer your, your phone and ghost your CAPTCHA? <laughs> it actually works, these CAPTCHAs, man. <laughs> the bot can't get through it. <laughs> Randy, that CAPTCHA AI is next level, bro. I mean, it's only a matter of time before humans aren't going to be able to authenticate themselves anymore. <laughs> Looking for Rui Cow to get frisky, unfortunately, for Ivy. Cow just happy to check back, and they'll go heads up to a flop of King King 7. Rui's got a piece here. Randy deep in the capture streets right now, <laughs> trying to find us this Linus Lolliger <laughs> bouldering or mountaineering. I'm getting destroyed pick. right now. But yeah, we'll talk about this hand a little bit first. Cow. Stabbing. This time third pot. Ivy. Check popping it to 8,000, mm. not believing that Rui has a king in his hand. Wow. Cal might have some ideas here. I don't think this call is simply on the strength of a seven looking to bluff catch the river. What a safe card, however. If Cal were to think that Ivy's check raise on the turn was having picked up some flush and straight draw equity of some sort, now the bet of 18 into 25 becomes far more meaningful. I think Rui can easily remove Jack X from Ivy's range here. And if that's the case, is it down to a king or no king? Yeah, pretty much. No one would really bet a Jack that way. But I mean, to be fair though, Ivy was betting queen, so. You bluff me? No. <laughs> Rui instantly wanting to know if he got bluffed. Not quite. May six is full. Randy, for the love of God, are you still <laughs> trying to get past the CAPTCHA? I mean, this might be no. the deepest into the CAPTCHA weeds anyone has ever really? gone. No. Yeah, this is this is embarrassing. I mean, haven't they locked you out and just blocked your IP at this point? Pretty soon, yeah. The you really are still trying. You know what a boat is, right? It's a little thing that floats right. on the water. I, I got us in, all right? I got us <laughs> in. Gosh, Ollie, I'm trying to share a few. Okay. Be a bluff? Are we on Instagram? Is that where we are here? Yeah, well, someone, one of the guys who was there shared it with me. So this is not Linus's page. So whose page is it? Your buddy? No. The me. Linus stalker? My, Linus's friend. Come on. Okay, all right. I'll buy it. Four-way action, ace-queen-ten. 
Middle pair and a gutter for Ivy. Currently with the most equity. the turn, Ivy making the Broadway after Soyza was hunting the two-way straight draw. Okay. down there. Still the early going here in event number 12, the 100,000 euro buy-in short deck. A warm welcome to all of you streaming us live from whatever corner of the globe you happen to be doing so, whether it be via Twitch, Facebook, or YouTube. Love hearing your thoughts in the chat and certainly hope you're enjoying the efforts of our production team here in Madrid as we begin to wind things down in the 2022 Super High Roller Series. Nine eight six, not a bad flop for Rui Cow. Top pair in a gutter. I'm the button next. So Sansi just going for it. Yeah, for Let's have the gut shot straight draw. Cow, an obvious customer. Now he's got trips to go with the open ender. But checks once more to Santi. On the river, Jang is unimproved after checking back. Yeah, so the check looks doesn't look like a nine, so there's a chance Santi wants to take a stab. But Rui's a very tricky player. Yeah, wow. Taking the bait. Yeah, induces the bet of 12,000, by the way, into 19 from Santi, who strikes me as having a fairly tight table image, but Rui Cow, what's he afraid of here? Strictly Queen 10, as I can't imagine 10-7 checks back the turn. And how much Queen 10 is probing at the flop with the double gutter? Some, I would imagine. Yeah, you can see he's worried, but he's probably going to end up just... Side calling. Five seconds. Yeah. Nice. Sure it's enough. Spend free and cannot fall. <laughs> <laughs> and as the players will head to their first break of the afternoon here in Spain, we give you a look at the chip counts. 153 antes for Ivy. Still on his first bullet, Rikau and Daniel Devoris have both had to redeem one already. And the newcomers, Santi Jiang and Michael Soiza, resting on the shorties. As the Antis will progress to 1,500 and 3,000, those chip counts brought to you by Armand de Brignac Champagne, better known as the Ace of Spades. Plenty of that was flowing last night at the party. And uh, seems like Phil Ivey is flowing here at the feature. Yeah, Ivy is playing great. He's enjoying his food and getting aces and hitting full houses. Uh, it's a really treat, a real treat to see these uh, top pros that we've followed for a long time playing these different games and maneuvering at the beginning and the end of the tournaments. Also a real treat, perhaps the fact that we have managed to get our tech team on the case and have stumbled upon this Instagram page where we can see some of these photos from Linus Lolliger's adventures up in the mountains. Looks like yeah. these guys are pretty serious about this stuff. Yeah, look at that one right there in the middle. That is intense. And they said there's harnesses the whole I time, mean, but I, I find a way to fall down. 
They said no one's ever died doing that, but I'll tell you what, if a harness fails, you can kiss your bankroll goodbye. <laughs> All right, login time. Uh, time for Randy and I to step aside briefly. The players are on a short break. When we come back, more action from event 12, the 100,000 euro short deck main event right here at Casino Grand Via. Keep it close. We double up on everything. Come play now on GG Poker. And welcome back inside our broadcast booth here at Casino Grand Vial. Alain Nijat, joined by Randy Liu. And uh, Randy, we're just getting our feet wet here in the 100K short deck main event. Let's take it to the Triton Poker Plus app. If you want, you can download it for uh, I iTunes or the Apple App Store or Android. And you can take a look at exactly all of the information at Randy and I's disposal here. Looking at these chip counts, far and away the chip leader right now is Tom DeWan with 910,000. He was removed from the feature table, and he now sits with a better than, well, an almost 3-1 to one lead over Ike Haxton, who's kind of been hovering at that 320K level. The only difference, Tom is on two bullets, whereas Ike is still on his first. This is a look at our new 
feature table where Boss and Ike are both located, along with the ever-exciting Ivan Liao. Scattered among them, Jason Kuhn, Martin Nielsen, and Mike Watson as well. And as we look at these six players, Randy, what do you think we're going to feast our eyes on in terms of gameplay? I feel like Ivan is the hot sauce in this particular dish. Super hot sauce. The spiciest hot sauce you can <laughs> ever think of. Yeah. Ivan splashes like crazy, but then he can run up big stacks. I remember the one where he won multiple titles in one series was just he was reckless, but it was working because everyone was afraid of him. Um, Ivan's going to work, do his magic, put some pressure on the people. He likes to put pressure on these young guns coming from the Nolan backgrounds. We got Watson. We got, well, I mean, Jason Kuhn is a well-versed short deck player. But, you know, I still see him as a no limit player from my point of view. But uh, anyways, it's going to be fire. And boss man, he's just too solid. And listen, he's already got a title under his belt here in Madrid, does Paul Pua. Looking at Ivan Liao, however, 6.4 million is already two titles. Nothing yet here in Madrid, though. Might be on a bit of a cold spell. Could he be due, or is the frost going to continue? Time will tell. 12 caches overall for Liao. Taking a quick peek back at Paul Pua. We see that title that he won earlier this week in the 30K 7 max no limit event and that was his second straight cash as in the 20k no limit he finished fifth but yet to pick up a result in the short deck streets here in madrid 14 and a half million in total career earnings and 21 caches paul pua always a joy to watch navigate uh, at a poker table always happy always laughing keeping the mood festive and light so ike haxton Definitely part of the wizard faction. Paul Pua, a tycoon. Ivan Liao, I don't know, a phantom? A tycoon, tycoon for DJ, me. Uh, all of the above, maybe? Uh, Jason Kuhn, certainly a wizard. Mike Watson, you could call him the same. Martin Nielsen, don't quite know enough about him to make an assessment. This is first Triton event, hailing from the Faroe Islands. Good mm -hmm. luck finding another participant from that neck of the world. Oh, no caches yet. For Martin. Antes up to 1500 brought to you by GG Poker. Now, we'll does Martin play only short deck or does he also play Nolama here? In looking at his profile thus far, he has been playing strictly short deck. Played the 20K, played the 25K, played the 50K, but no long deck under his belt. So maybe there's a sweet short deck scene out there in the Faroe Islands. He's, look what he's wearing, a wizard patch. Oh, right on cue. Kuhn with the king-queen suited up front, limped it in, Nielsen. Jamming. Looks like a huge overraise, doesn't it? It may seem that way if you're playing no limit normally, but for 40 antis, this is a... Uh it's a good play. You're just going to okay. pick up so that much. Is 58K, right? You get called. You're never in bad shape. Making sure I'm doing all my math right ahead here. King Queen suited is. Bear with me. I've been playing a lot of poker lately. <laughs> Pretty close. Here we go. Looks like Jason paid a visit to the real Madrid merchandise shop as he's rocking the kit there. All right, let's go. I think I folded it 10. So the king Thanks. queen suited will spin the wheel and flop an open ender up <laughs> against so middle pair. <laughs> Not so good for me. You see, queen, queen is ahead. Has way more straight. equity. And there's the nine. Sure enough, it leaves Nielsen drawing dead. And Martin will be redeeming his second bullet of the three given to each player, each good for 100,000 in chips and the later on it is when you redeem those later bullets the less antis they represent so mm -hmm. kind of diminishing value there's 10,000 and I'm the dealer yeah yeah all right uh out of water yeah a sparkling water come up missing just going to tease something real fast. I'm listening. So during my downtime, while you guys were commenting on a PLO, don't know if it was you specifically, I was commentating on the Triton Cash game from Cyprus. 
that's going to be sick. I, I, I was like, oh my god, the action was ridiculous. They're going and they told me they're going to try to release it as soon as possible, as soon as I finish them. Now these are short deck cash games. I already we already released the short deck cash okay. game, which was amazing. The Jack Six off. Now it's a no limit cash game. And they always do both at every single stop. Right. We record them, release them, and you know how to find them. Triton app. Triton Poker Plus app available for free on the Android or Apple app stores. Liao, ace jack suited, limping, has bosses king nine covered. Axed him with the two sixes. And look at this. Queens for Jason Kuhn on the button. He's going to ask a question. Let's see. I've been reasonable hand. How it's much do you play here? It's a pretty big raise. Uh, here's 150. Because of the deep stacks, actually. Ivan wants some blood. Calls of Ace Jack suited. You'll find he's not that far behind. 21. 21. Haxton's trying to decide if he can set mine these two sixes. He'll be able to close the action. There's the upshot, but obviously. I, usually you don't see people defend this, but Haxton would have studied these spots. It is multi-way, so if you do hit a set, you're more likely to get paid off. Probably what's crossing his mind. But if you don't hit a set, you just can never win the pot. All right, see, Ivan's got 43%. We've just won over. You see Ike resisting the temptation there. It always comes when you tank fold. Nah, just kidding. The owl needs one of the queens in Kuhn's hand on a king high board where Jason sits with second pair effective against the gut shot. 51 out there, he fires 30. Yeah, even though this is not the greatest board for two queens, he raised pre flop and he feels that if he checks, he's kind of telling people he does not have the king and it just lets him get blown off the hand too easily. Liao not interested in tearing one off with the gutter. Puts it into the muck. Nice pick up there for Jason Kuhn. Jason has... I really do use three. my time banks in the weirdest spots. Triton titles. 13.4 <laughs> million plus in Huge earnings. Huge spot on the river. Rarely. Two of which came earlier here in Madrid. Counting the pot pre-flop all the time. <laughs> you are world class at, at short neck blowing a time bank up to count the pot. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Colorful shirt. Paxton limping. Yo. So let's see. Nielsen, take that free flop. It's dominated. Flops himself a Broadway gutty up against Second pair. Let's see if Neeson takes the free flop, a free turn card. Still nothing. Nothing's changed. See if Haxton decides to value protect or just check. I really see it go both ways. The dealer bun cap, such random cards. Yeah, I don't think he, nine. He doesn't want to let like a random eight get a free card. To maybe two pair him. 
9,000 from Haxton on the turn. Just 14% equity for Nielsen. And you get the sense this man knows the numbers. Wow. Race. Wow. Wow. Leo, Leo. Big Al wants to go dinner 930. Right. Shoots it. Uh, you, you go and book a rest, nice restaurant. Yeah. I like This is cool. He's representing two pair because technically on a dealer button, yeah. he can handle his random two pairs. Two no. And the sizing makes yeah. sense as if you did have two pairs. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever got back on. Oh, Short yeah. deck specialist, man. Oh. Look at that. Impressive. I was a little tired yesterday, but only for the PLR. Martin. Fighting for that pot there and earning it. PLO is nice basically normal today. Yeah, it was just basically normal today. I mean, playing any game that you aren't that sharp in and <laughs> don't play all the time is a little challenging. If you're tired, you might get in a spot that you have to really think it out, but Fair enough. that still happens in games that you play a lot, but especially problematic. Yeah, I had a. We definitely had a thinking, a thinking game yesterday. I imagine. Progressive small blind bounty. That wore me out, man. Yeah. It was two big blind ante too. Two big blind ante and progressive small blind ante that got up to at one point twenty four big blinds. <laughs> that, twenty four bigs in the in the progressive yeah. ante, which can only yeah, be won was, by the uh, small blind. Was, I can imagine there's a pretty was, wide range yeah, from the small in those spots. In a big blind three bet or shove, you go. You cannot count your your big blind. You can count his big blind. Yeah. I the worst hand that Adamo <laughs> three bet from the big blind was yesterday, or from the small. Your blind big blind might yesterday. be sixty. His big blind might might be thirty. You know, in that sense. Yeah, that sounds like a cool the game. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a bloody game. Also, <laughs> queen Jack for Jason Kuhn. Well out in front of Leo's too, Queen Nine on the button. Both players knuckling quickly. Yeah. And on the turn, Leo picks up an open ender. You played hold them with a bounty? <laughs> <laughs> Nielsen having his interest beat. You make everybody play looser. You fight for the bounty. Is it like if you bust someone, someone stacks? No, you can only win it if you're in the small blind. So in every pot that the small blind doesn't win, you add another big blind to the puck. So it just goes around. So if, if it goes 20 hands that the small blind doesn't win, there's 20 big blinds for the small blind to win. Empties. So basically, yeah, it'll fold to the After small After the small blind win, it starts from zero Yeah, again. so it'll go like raise and then the small blinds, you know. So the small blind is playing crazy. <laughs> mm. Crazy is one way to, yeah. <laughs> that sounds created a lot of blood, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just imagining you got like fifth pair. Your small blind is betting until you like have to call because that guy has such incentive mm -hmm. to, to make go for it. Oh, it just sounds like a blast. What's up, man? <sighs> Let's see. Okay, he's got a six in his hand. I want to know what the other card is because most people don't play, but this is no, a short right. deck specialist. It's usually another six or the ace of spades. Oh, Paul closes the action with a check on these two nines, which turn into an open-ended straight flush draw on a jack-10-8 board, where Haxton has top pair. Ivan Liao has a gut shot straight draw with a flush draw. We know the straight flush won't come. A pair of tens. Could drop that seven of diamonds, Ivan. though. No, for uh, Liao. The nine of diamonds being blocked by You got Paul. me. Okay. I don't know Martin what Nielsen has. Martin flinging 5K <laughs> out here. He's got the dustiest looking holding here. I'm just... I bet you no one could guess the other card. I, uh, it's impossible, right? Is it a six of diamonds, maybe? I mean, why would he even... A nine? But the nines are blocks. Nine of spades? No, I... Oh, my what God. What is that? I think it's the seven of diamonds, and last time I checked, that is a straight flush for Paul Pua I, here on the turn. Wow.
First time I've seen it. Bye, Kazak. Somebody's making money on the Poly Market app right now. <laughs> Ivan, you want to represent that straight flush? Because Boss Man's got it. He does. Oh, wow. Yep, let's check those cards. Got 15K. It. Smoldering in front of Ivan Liao. And of course, Pua. Gonna reel him in with a flat. Can't be a diamond, can it? No. It's a queen in now. Liao. With the flush. Any ace, king, or nine of diamonds beats him here. Good yeah. question, and I really don't know yet. It will depend on Small a lot little of things. Block pet? Bobby's room. Whether or not everybody in Vegas has COVID in a couple of weeks. Paul raises it up. Do you play all the games? Yep. Yeah. I think I'm gonna put the... Take photo, take photo. Swift flash. Free look. <laughs> no, I don't say that. As poor was always going to be the recipient <laughs> of that pot. A one case ball. Yeah. I'm not sure I've made better than two pair at the feature table yet. <laughs> well, if you like diving deep into the stats, there is no better place to get your fix than the Triton Poker Plus app. Live data at your fingertips. It's the exact same one that Randy and I, as well as all of our other casters, use right here at the broadcast booth. It's available now on both iOS and Android platforms. Download it today. I haven't been at the feature table a whole lot, but it seems really unlikely. Haxton limps the jack 10. I think Pula this ace jack's got a lot of incentive to jam, given how short he is. Unless he's worried about the undergun limp, but yeah, Watson knows these spots. Have you played it? Yeah. I've played all the games, I just don't, I just don't know how to play them. But I've played them all. Indeed. Very adventurous. The jam comes in. I don't, like if I had a reason to learn about wood, mission. there's just no action, you know? Like, what yeah. am I going to do? Like, no point. No point, man. Mike Watson, hometown St. Yeah, John's, action, Newfoundland. To know it. I, I would love to do Currently it. He lives in Toronto. So I can go play a $3,000 Lovely wife, program. Sarah, joining him on the road. Doesn't Studied math I would love at the University normal. of Waterloo. Very prestigious uni up there in Canada. Learned up in Newfoundland during the summer while he was still in uni with his friends from the math department. His favorite poker memory, winning the WPT Bellagio Cup all the way back in 2008 for Sir Watts. His most memorable moment from a Triton event was making a royal flush at the FT at the 100K No Limit event just a few weeks ago in Cyprus. King Jack 10 here in a five-way pot as Kuhn has top and bottom pair. Pua with the two-way gut shot. Watson with bottom two. Yeah, it's even two pair here is pretty dicey. Five ways. It's it's pretty scary, so I'm not surprised Kuhn and Watson are playing a bit cautious. They don't even have the best two pair. 
And can you believe no one's got a queen? I can when I look up at the screen. Yeah. Action freeze are there. If someone wants to throw out any bet, it would work. But I don't think anyone is really willing to. It's just too risky. Maybe because you've seen three checks in front of you, someone probably would have bet a queen by now. Wow, what a read from Watson. He's like, I only got to worry about Ike. And Ike says, no, you don't. As he puts his hand into the muck in the face of this Pro B5K, which Kuhn will call. Wow. That is a good read. Now that double gutter. Not valuable at all for Pua. As he sends his hand into the muck. Board pairs, but oh. it's not the card that Kuhn needed. Instead, the Jack-10 would have <laughs> filled up. Or does fill up, rather, for Watson. Wow, amazing. So, yeah, Kuhn didn't need the card, did he? He was already ahead with kings and tens, but in some ways. Wow. As we see Kuhn betting the 100K, trying to rep the hand that Watson <laughs> had. 56. I don't blame Jason for doing that because. Watson sh shouldn't really have a full house. I don't think he expects him to bet. No, I, I, and look at the backs of those I agree. Cards. One of them looked marked as it was going in. Obviously, we yeah. assume Watson's got a queen. If he does, there's no yeah. way he's got yeah. a boat. And so it, it might have just been how the light caught it, but it looked to me like it was dented and reflecting. Putting him to the test. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Incredibly fortuitous that Watson would have hit the jack. When I say it's Kuhn that needed the king or the ten, as we see, he mm. sees the opportunity once the board did pair. Shut up to fire and try to bluff. We know that had he not filled up with a king or a 10, in all likelihood, he would have checked and given Watson the opportunity to maybe bluff one more time. But again, Sir Watts, once you get called in that spot, could be a queen that just doesn't have any redraw value. And yeah, it's uh, time to play passive as we get a look at the chip counts. Pua still at the top of the leaderboard here at the featured table. In event number 12, the 100K main, where the players are still getting their feet wet. And that stack of Pua's is good for the overall tournament chip lead. Mike Caxton, second overall. Those chip counts brought to you by Poly Market. Cool spot there at Akun. Yeah, I, that for him to do that move means that he expects Watson to fold a queen because the flush got there, the full house got there, and it was actually very credible. The thing is, he just didn't think Watson ever had a full house. Yeah, and who can blame him? Like in these sunnies. That's a statement piece. That's a man who's been to a music festival or 12. He's clean. Well, Watson's got a stack now. 135K. Yeah. Looks like he wants to pump it up. A little bit worried about undergun limping, I'm sure, but he's clean usually is good. Um, All in. Just keep it simple. Heaps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Revenge. Ace King suited for Jason Kuhn. He's waking up with the medicine on the button. Yeah. Let's go. Feels that way, doesn't it? Well, one Ace Queen down. Watson dominated. Sees the bad news. I believe I'm all in, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm. I got a buck thirty-five. Yeah, almost exactly the same. Buck thirty-six, I got. I think you cover me. Nope. In fact, it is Watson that covers Coon by just five hundred, and now it is that five hundred that may be all that is left in front of Mike Watson after the dust settles here. 
And that seven does create an opportunity for both players to make a straight with a nine. River. Trip Kings. <laughs> One, three, so six. Kuhn just really loaned Watson his chips. <laughs> yes. And he, he took them back with interest. Gave him that little bit of hope. 10-9 would have been nice there, three-way. Hmm. Watson is left of one chip. I wonder if he plays with one chip, or does he reload? All two on top of his one chip. I'm sure there's a strategy out there. Randy, if he doesn't reload, River was I all quit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's reloading, so see ya, Ollie. Give it a second. He's not budging. Mike, buddy, I need this job. I need you to just put the lammer out there. Listen to me. <laughs> all right, so are we getting Henry? Are we getting <laughs> Jeff or Brian? <laughs> Why not reload? I mean, are you ever? Do you know how many spins you're going to need off of 500 before you even have anything remotely close to a semblance of breathing room? Well, the reason he's actually yeah. not reloading is oh, oh yeah. is he gets to pick up all the antis. So ah, he's getting it's what? the ROI on that chip. Yeah. Yeah. that chip. But even then, it would take like three spins before you even have something you're 500? to yeah. think about. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand where you're coming uh, from. 3,000. But if you study mathematics and you know this poker, like, can't skip plus EV spots. Even though that EV is kind of small. Yeah, he's Liao, oh. ace jack suited up front. Limps in. Watson is going to be all in with the inferior ace suited. Haxton connected in there. Kuhn disconnected. Same story. Knew he could do it. Knew he could do it for me. Good Martin Nielsen, ace nine offsuit on the button, piling it in there. Legs. I kicked him under the table. <laughs> <laughs> Ivan found. Oh. Yeah, he's got the medicine for this move out of Nielsen as he comes over the top. That will clear the field, and what a terrific spot Liao finds himself in. 45%. He's got both players. See what we got Covered. going on. We got our ace and nine. Oh, nice eight. play by like Ivan. I like it. Jackson. Real life here. We got their six of spades? Mm, probably, but we'll see. It's a heart. Okay. A heart, bro. You're crushing. I can feel this. I'm making it straight here. <laughs> what a trap. With ace jack. Oh, I got to tell break. I kind of don't want to be the guy eating, but I'm starving to death. Yeah, I gotta do it. Watson all in for a very modest main. The rest of it is between Liao and Nielsen. Oh, the flop. Seven, nine, ten. Liao has a gut shot straight draw yeah, up against a pair up. of sevens and a pair of nines as both the inferior aces hit their side cards. Six on the turn. Now an eight would give Liao the clear win. <laughs> it's nine oh. six, and what a big really double for Martin Nielsen with the double fist pumps. I'm sure Liao enjoys that. A few tournaments. Brutal. That was just what a clean spot. Mm -hmm. Wow. I mean, it's safe to say though, this Martin Nielsen really pushes some edges. In this case, he had no edge. Mm. <laughs> Could I ask for a water? I always say, I always forget to say please. Thanks. You don't have to say a word. That sounded, you sounded completely polite. All right, so. 
Ivan's down to 23 antis. Folded to Nielsen. King six. Might just push it and just hope it happens. I don't know. He, he would know these spots. Assuming he is a specialist. No, nope, just lay it down. I guess he's getting called too often. No, the six is such a bad card, right? What am I thinking yeah. about? It's like a non-existent card. You just straight into the bin. Hollywood Haxton, start with super limp. Ace King suited for Coon right oh, behind him. He perked up. He's like, all right, what'd you do, Haxton? Got Ace King. He's going to trap. Wow, the after limp with Ace King suited. That's sneaky. And Ivan's got Ace 10 suited. Probably going to have to take the bait on this one, right? 30. Anties. I don't blame oh, him. Oh, yeah. That trappy limp behind Ike induces Ivan to shove in that 49K, exactly what Kuhn would like to have happen. Haxton's jack-10 shrivels. Can maybe Ivan get lucky this time? <laughs> From the PLO, I guess. <laughs> No luck so far. Ace King still looking good. And it holds all the way down as Liao gets the rest of his stack showered by Kuhn. Busted a lot of bullets already. That was his first Short bullet. Back. A lot of bullets to be busted. You want to change, Ivan? Yeah. No, I have to take it. I drank it, but I think it's someone else's. Jason Kuhn now second overall in chips with 334.5, still on his first bullet. Pua, the overall chip leader, is on his second of the three each player received for the 100,000 euro buy. And here in the short deck main, where Jack 10 offsuit again finds its way into Haxton's lap and he limps once more. King six suited. Just enough. Flush draw on him to, to go for it. A lot of kings and tens out there. Yep. And jacks. Ace eight starting to look good. You'll often see these kind of raggy aces, but granted the ace nines, ace eights, ace seven, six, they, they all can make straights with two cards, so they're mm -hmm. not as raggy as they look when you have the long mm. deck lenses on here. Make a move like the one Watson has because they block the ace-kings. They block the aces. Yeah, and it's really important to block those hands that can call you. And, you know, you pick up all those antis in the middle. Everyone kind of limp. They look weak. Yeah, that's it's a brilliant play. It looks reckless, but it's very calculated. Expanding upon Watson's bio. He was asked about his favorite type of poker. Options being cash or tournament poker. Mm -hmm. PLO, long deck or short deck. He wrote short deck. A little smiley face. 
Perhaps not what we would have expected out of a guy who cut his teeth in the No Limit Streets online and is such a legend for so long. Mm. Sir Watts, as he was known. Mm. It's kind of one of those games where, you know, you can always have a little bit of involvement, whereas if No Limit, like, if you get card dead, you just literally can't even play a single spot. Yeah. Fifteen K a man as eight nine suited squares off with ace eight on the ace ace nine board where both players have connected advantage Pua. It is a raised pot, so calling with the nine here would be pretty dicey. Twelve K follow through, size down from the pre flop raise amount. You you could be ahead, but if you if you are ahead, the guy often has two picture cards, which would have very high equity against you on two cards to go. Paul giving Ivan a look at that ace of spades. Do, do, After Leal do, do, laid do, it down. Do. You gotta come back to here every year, Paul. Mm. Madrid is yeah. the best. It's yeah, this awesome. is the best place. Yeah. <laughs> I agree, Randy. The food, the this the how the city's alive at night. Yeah, that's awesome. It's amazing. This place is killer. It's beautiful. The architecture, everything about it's just wonderful. The pharmacy is open at midnight. Mm -hmm. It's like everything's just open. Yep. This place is a dream. <laughs> well done. Coons talking about the city being alive, the architecture, the beauty of the Casino Grand Via poker That's room, and in chimes that. Martin Nielsen. <laughs> the pharmacy is open at midnight. Yeah. Everybody's saying this. <laughs> I was laughing at that too. I was just like, wow. <laughs> I really love Montenegro. Yeah. Really, really yeah, weird Montenegro, statement. Montenegro, really nice. I is mean, it London though, Randy? Incredible <laughs> but Mont I really love Montenegro. But Montenegro. I just like being able to get in the sea and yes. then go straight to the poker table. <laughs> yeah. Does not have the pharmacy open 20 at More midnight. Like a yes, but Jason, the pharmacy closes at 6 <laughs> in Montenegro. <laughs> yeah. Can bring family day for a few days. Yeah. Those little restaurants down uh -huh. by the dock. Bro, so authentic, yeah. Yeah, just go... Get some fresh caught fish, pick your fish. Yeah. <laughs> that might be my favorite kind of restaurant where you just go in there, they show you what fish they caught today. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Do they have the little holes in them? Sometimes they catch them with like the harpoon. No, no, these are line caught. Harpoon might be a bit of heavy artillery for a table side fish. A little salmon Spear, swimming around. Maybe. You know, the only thing I know about the Faroe Islands is I believe they are still a whaling nation. Uh. I'm sure it's a bit of a sensitive topic. Not looking to trigger anyone. Have you ever eaten whale, Randy? I might have had a little piece when I was in Iceland once on a trip. Not in Japan. No, it wasn't Japan. But I could be wrong. Maybe it was shark. I can't remember anymore. Are you still recovering from the mercury? Because you were really struggling with that captcha and might have been <laughs> clogging up a synapse associated you know, with identifying boats. I think at midnight I'm going to the pharmacy. Get some <laughs> medicine. <laughs> the correct mm, answer for suspicious. a poker player is but hell yeah, I've eaten whale. Give it up. Double <sighs> entendre. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Paxton with a pick up there. Mystery side card with the Queen of Spades. If only I could announce raises like 11 antiques or 
90% uh, yeah. I'd use a lot fewer time bags. I size at least once or twice wrong. Free flop for a tournament, for sure. Yeah, you came in with the power raise, didn't you? Didn't you come in for 19.5 over one limp? No, it was two limps. Okay. Speaking of two limps, Pua and Watson in front of Ike. <clears throat> Pardon me, he'll join the party. Yeah, I misclick all the time in this game. A better way to think of it, like this is a, it's a nice save you. Think of the the button as a big blind, and just think about like. Oftentimes, whenever I'm like super dead. And all the ISO spots. Queen nine seven in the family pot here. We'll use the button. Pua. As a, as pair a and a flush pot. draw. I don't know if that makes sense. Do you? I'll explain to you on break. Top pair I'm for Watson. I'm not following it just yet. Yeah. Bottom pair for Haxton. Got shot for Coon. I also was not following that one. Same story for Nielsen. And another got shot for Liao. So something on the stove top for everybody here. Yeah, pretty tough to bet into six people. You take a free card, Ivan, or you want to go for it? Let's check. Queen pairs on the turn, giving Watson trips. But Paul still got that flush draw. It's definitely something you can consider putting a little action in. Well, the ultra action card, which would be the Jack of Clubs, is busy in Watson's hand. Nice observation. And for that matter, the Seven of Clubs is busy in Paul's. Nicer observation. Okay, so this is actually interesting to me that Kuhn decided to call just ace eight. Trying to hit that mm. little six. Little six. Yeah. I guess it would be very disguised. But also got to feel good that 10 eight isn't involved in this pot. Mm. I, I think he thinks he's up against gut shots too. So he actually thinks the ace high is good a reasonable point. amount. Nine of diamonds on the river. And Watson's now How full. People. How many people live there? Hmm. It's pretty hard to get called here, but I mean, you got the best hand. You just yeah, gotta hope uh, someone has a nine and is willing to call a bet. I don't think he can go too big. They're just gonna keep folding all the time. That's why you see this tiny micro. Not micro, but smaller bet. Hoping for the best. Yeah, the 16,000 from Watson. Not going to get paid off by either of those two holdings. As Sir Watts hauls it in. Average chip stack. Currently 161,000, which is good for 107 ante. <laughs> You know, earlier when they were talking about misclicks, live, I feel like it needs another <laughs> phrase. You know, you're not clicking anything, are you? <laughs> I would work. Fuck up, Randy. Would that work? It would, yeah. That would work. Just for come me. over with me and what you folded on the mic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, on a microphone. <laughs> hey, I, uh. <laughs> Ivan with the two jacks shoots it up to 18,000. 
How much? Paxton asking for a count with King Nine suited. Two jacks is really hard to play post flop. It's one of those hands you want to just take it down pre. And that's exactly what Liao has done off of one of the shorter stacks. You know, it's funny, when we first got a look at this feature table, both of us thought that Ivan would be the man that would be kind of stirring the pot, dictating things, but has not proven to be the case. Really hasn't gotten much going yet. I mean, after he got sucked out on when he had the ace jack, you mm. know, like, mm. that just ruins your stack. Sure. And, you know, some guys would just let the ace jack go, so you can see that he was still willing to go for it, but still a game where he got a hold. Actually, this guy, that's been driving the action, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Two sixes and ten seven suited, allowing king nine to join them. Now that king queen suited on the button for Watson could definitely press. Watson did press, what, the ace eight earlier? Thinks this hand a little bit too good. You can play this hand post a lot much better than the ace eight offsuit. Ace queen nine, giving Watson the pair of queens. Yeah, but he wouldn't feel good about it four ways. Undergun limper, undergun can easily have a big hand. Can anyone stab? No one's got a good piece. Checked around, 10 on the turn. Both of the kings pick up the Broadway gutty. It's such a connected card, yet no one actually improved very well. I don't think Paul knows it's his turn. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Did he hear you? There's a time bank. Oh, cha -cha -cha. <laughs> like he's just looking in the weirdest yeah. places. It would have been great if as he was turning around, he was like, 1,500. <laughs> yeah. Jack well. on the river here after another round of checks is both Pua and Watson are going to have the nuts. Paxton thinking about stabbing. Is it ambitious? I like that when he's stabbing, it's tiny. You know what? It looks like he got a king. Don't need to bet more and risk more. 3,000. So, Haxton <laughs> takes a match to 3K. Whoa. And Paul just flats it, maybe looking to get Watson <laughs> to call with it less. Worth a try. Mike <laughs> flatted as well. Yeah, they're like, that why was waste peculiar. Time? I mean, they got the nuts. No one's going to call a raise of worse. Let's be real. Yeah. Just You're make, not wrong. Make the dealer count, cut the chips in half and everything. Like, you just splash you know, them around. I was once at one of these private cash games. Mm-hmm. And it was a super small pot, same thing. Thanks. It was the nuts on the board. And I'll pick up the story in a moment as we take a moment to remind you that the Secret Lab Titan Evo 2022 chair 
replete with game-winning comfort for when the stakes are high, can be yours at secretlab.co slash 2022. Learn more, place your order. It's exactly what Randy and I are atrophying our muscles in day in and day out. So this game that I'm telling you about, it was a similar spot where, you know, just any king makes Broadway. <laughs> yeah. A guy bets. I don't know. Pot was super small up we until that point. Start you a guy the bets. Other end of it at some point. <laughs> I move all in for heaps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Trying to make it look like maybe you know. Gotta go ten percent. I don't know. I just sure. I, 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 I just don't see a reason not to at this point. This is years and years ago. The guy calls me. Called my mates. And then the dealer proceeds to try to rake people get called by the action from the river. Uh-huh. For like the maximum rake, right? And I was like, "Whoa, what are you doing?" Mm-hmm. And she's like, "Well, you yeah, the pot is now, you know, whatever it is, five k or something." Yeah. And so we take the max rake, and she's trying to take, you know, a hundred bucks or yeah. something crazy. And up until that point, I think it was like five bucks worth of rake, you know, because there was mm-hmm. nothing in the middle. And I'm like, "You guys have got to be out of your mind. We're both going to lose money in this hand on account of you guys raking this last street of action in a chop situation." Needless to say. Took my business elsewhere from that point forward. So they did rake it. They did rake it. I was like, good night. And on the way out, I was like, if you guys think you're going to beat this game, you're all out of your mind. Mm Mm-hmm. Raking like that. Yuck. Nah, that's disgusting. Should have just called like them. You would have got the pot a lot smaller. Yeah, they played it better than I did, and they're (laughs) not even facing rake. (laughs) <laughs> Two jacks, queen nine, ace ten. On a king high rainbow board, Pua. Still best. So just trying to protect his hand. If no one's got a king, they're not continuing. Because, you know, even a hand like 8 and 9 won't be calling this flop bet. So, nice little takedown. You kind of approach these short deck flops a little bit differently than how you would approach Nolan and Hold'em. Whereas in Nolan and Hold'em, so on C bets, they almost always call with these mid pairs. Keeping an eye on the chat out there. Is this Twitch I see? YouTube. YouTube. I say hi occasionally. They're loving you. Love Come your on. stories. They're not all great. I think someone thinks you're a dummy for jamming all in. Yeah, well, I didn't know what the rake rules were. <laughs> What's that guy's name? <laughs> huh? Let me let me ban him real fast. All right. Mom's basement 6969. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Let me ban him real fast. Randy, you're a good friend. You know that? You think I'm a good friend? That guy doesn't exist. I made that up. (laughs) You're a trolley friend, but a good friend nevertheless. Ace, eight, six here as Liao's got the straight draw and a pair of eights. Yeah, everyone's got this little tiny pair, maybe a little straight draw fit. Very... Try telling that to Paul Poole. He's got King-10 here. (laughs) He doesn't have the tiny pair working, but of course, Haxton and Kuhn do. Dealer button. Dealer button can represent funny stuff. So that's why Kuhn's reaching for chips. He's the guy that can play the 8-6, the A-6, even have the 9-7 for the straight. So that's why you see him firing huge. One pass, two pass, three pass coming. So Kuhn leveraging position to fire. 
take that one down. Put the wrong amount out and drink juice. We got away with it too. It wasn't meddling like. So other than go out and stalk my sweets stores <laughs> earlier today, <laughs> Randy. Were you doing anything else? I mean, I was. It took me a long time to find the wrong sweet store. <laughs> By the way, did uh, you go in and buy anything? I'm trying to buy a new pair of shoes. There's mutual exclusivity between Hello. purchasing a hundred grams of sweets and a new <laughs> pair of shoes. I mean, how tight's the purse strings over there, Lou? <laughs> I haven't laid out all in with Ace Ten. Nothing tight about his purse strings here. Ooh. Yeah, the Jack-10 suited, resisting the temptation. Uh, Queen-Jack yeah. off for Ike. What do you want? Presume we'll meet the same fate as it does indeed go into the muck. Ivan. Trying to claw his way back. Still Very has quiet. one of those bullet plaques there. So, you know what? We should actually make Triton bullets. That would be pretty cool, right? I think it would be cool. I feel like yeah. I just gave the idea away for no, free. No, no, mm -hmm. I had sixes. Did not want to. Call Everyone that. we work for is listening to the stream right now. Dang. Before I know it. We're going to come back to our next Triton stop. There's going to be Triton bullets. And I'm not going to have any extra yeah. paycheck. <sighs> I'm very it's okay. annoyed. You know what? I'm one of it's the more right, annoyed man. people you've ever met. It's a really good idea, though. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Producer James has just stepped in to say so that he is currently like, in a pitch uh, meeting with the powers that you know, be about the Triton bullet concept. A spectrum or a curve. Awfully sporting. I've got and moves quickly. Normal happy and going to murder someone. And nothing in between. Huh? We're talking Here's about murder now. No, I'm just a, a maniac. I hope he's not thinking about using Triton bullets. I think Jason said he has two emotional modes, normal, happy, and going to murder someone. Ah. It's uh, interesting. I hope he's talking about cards. Yeah, I don't think he's actually <laughs> going to kill anyone. But I'm not driving the ship, you know what I mean? Guy's shredded enough to do it if he wants to. Here somebody just takes over. He could break me in half. One finger. 2K any level. Five-way pot. Very connected here. Jack, queen, Wheel of Fortune seven. comes up queen. Jack, seven. Haxton with second pair and the lion's share of the equity Mike's here. the same way. I look at he this might board. Look, yeah. might look like a yeah. nice, kind of grounded guy. He's terrifying. I mean, you know his nickname, right? No. Mad Dog. <laughs> I don't believe you. That's his nickname. Yeah. One of, one of the two things he just said is true. Yes. I've never <laughs> seen you angry. Well, that's because you don't know Mad Dog yet. Watson has so many nicknames. You know that? Sir Watts, Mad Dog. Uh, what's the other one? Is he got another one, too? Mike. Really? <laughs> really? You have to do Mike. For me? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you don't know. I feel like he's got another nickname, though. Hmm. A round of checks in this 10 of diamonds is a wet card as Nielsen has made the bottom end of the straight with the straight flush redraw two pair for Haxton. Of course, the King High Street for Kuhn is actually the best of all hands right now. Overlooked. Yeah, the King Nine is actually quite strong here. Yeah, because you can take the a lot of the Ace King out. Exactly. Especially the guys behind you. They definitely don't have Ace King. I, w I would like to see him bet. He's going to do that. With no dime in your hand, more incentive to protect it. Well, you might have the best hand. Got clearly a draw to a nutted hand. With that straight flush draw, why not?
5,500 bet and called. The issue here for Haxton, if he were to try to go for a full house, is if he's up against the flush, he's drawn dead. Exactly. It's one of the weak two pairs. I would rather consider if I had, like, a queen as one of my two pairs. With this one, it's getting pretty dicey. I remember, there was, like, five or six people in this pot, too. Good lay down. River, an eight. Less value to Nielsen's holding. So, Jason should be able to get good value here because the opponent he's up against is behind him. What I mean by that is that person will very likely raise ace king pre flop. Twenty-four. Good size too. Not too much and not too little, especially because you, you, you know, if you share, you shop the nine, but you got the king, right? So you would uh, overtake the whole pot. Really nice, but tough spot for Nielsen. Twenty-four into thirty-three. Because of the deep stacks. Who's listening to me? But nine of diamonds is a good blocker. In case you think you might be up against the straight. Flush less likely. A tough spot. It's annoying. I think Neosin's also thinking, okay, we start with five, six players who just flop. That means Kuhn should be bluffing at it a little bit less. Tense. Uh, is that side calling chips? It is. First installment flung in there, and the rest coming shortly as Jason manages to get good value out of that king high straight. Felt better and better about it. The deeper into Nielsen, into the tank that Nielsen went. Two. Although every now and again, on the back end of that tank comes the raise, and you're like, oh, come on, buddy. Yeah, that would be disgusting. I'm not sure what Jason would have done, but... Good thing he doesn't have to face it. No. Full bet, I would fall. I think Boss took an opportunity to catch up on the stream there during that pot. It felt like I heard your voice yeah. in the background bleeding into his mic. See, he, he wanted to hear my commentary. But then he quickly shut off and we realized this guy does not know what he's talking oh, about. Stop. No self-deprecation on my watch. Quite to the contrary, Randy. I think it's, you know, consistent with sort of the positive vibes here at Triton. Occasionally a player will pull one of us aside and just mention, hey, really like the stream or, you know, hey, I thought yeah. this was funny or this was insightful oh something to that effect and nothing Quiet. funny about Look this, this. They ever bring you water here i feel so bad for ivan yeah, i feel like he's online, getting man, this is, uh, i haven't touched this glass very unlucky Earth. open to twenty thousand, and the fuse is lit as boss has two oh, yeah, black oh. aces okay. well, on the button that here's Interesting what sizing to make it because Haxton's got a ton of chips there and he wants the maximum chance that maybe he can yeah. stack Haxton as well. And note that that's who he's focused on is Haxton mm -hmm. behind him. He throws a time bank out there as he weighs his options. Because if Haxton has a hand like ace, king, or queens, he wants the best chance that he does not hero fold those hands. Is it by just jamming or is it by <sighs> re-raising small, trying to induce... <coughs> I 
Feels bad, Kings and its pieces. All in. All in. All in. They already all in. All in. And the bad news delivered. <laughs> Paul can't I was look. In third place. Oh, you hit the place. Queens? By enough that you wanted to call? Yes. No. <laughs> Aces against Kings. You're warm, no Three to one favorite is Pua. And it's looking good Some. on the Queen 7 what? 7 board. Can't say the same for Ivan Liao's prospects. And no king on the turn or river. Leaves Ivan Liao redeeming his one last bullet. Yeah, just not been lucky today at all. Brutal. So I always say, "Don't enjoy it with your hands." I want to engage with the chat. You want to? I want the chat to weigh in and set a line on how long they think it would take me to learn Mandarin. Now, believe it or not, Tom Duan. <laughs> this has sort of been dwelling in the lab, mm -hmm. learning a little bit. I'm not sure how I committed he is. a lot of nostalgia for the... And I'm not saying like, fluent, but enough to get Sicilian by. Sicilian white wines I drank all the time when I was living in Malta. Those were really good. I just want to warn you, they're speaking Cantonese. The Maltese wines, too, for that. That's too. fine, but there's plenty okay, of Mandarin Maltese speakers here. Yes, yes. It was okay. really good. In case you were trying to join in in that conversation. No, 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 no. Large majority of... The wine drinking I've done in my life while I was living in Malta, and it wasn't fancy wine, but I, I have very positive memories of the wines I drank there. I I don't know how to there tell you, you this, but if you have memories you? of the wine you drank, you weren't drinking enough of it. I mean, this is super cheesy, <laughs> uh, super cheesy, but I really like American Cabernets. I like no, them. they're good, man. Yeah. Um, I've I've loved I've had a decent amount of Spanish wine I, yeah. since I've been here and I've really enjoyed it. Yeah, I like the Spanish wine. Look at these two sophisticates. We we have discussing this, uh, vintages. Mm -hmm. this Australian Chardonnay, uh, that's incredibly good. I'm getting. Oh yeah. Like incredibly, incredibly I'm good. I'm seeing and more two in three years. A few. Alley. Uh, Oregon wines that two and three year what? That For you to right learn now. Mandarin. That's my favorite ah, okay. of the American wines. Like you, I thought you were talking about two and three year yeah. vintages <laughs> since we were <laughs> on to wine. I forgot I'd even asked that it. question. Always As good Paul value Pua at a restaurant, too. They don't Binks the seven. They do. Makes the straight. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's true, yeah. And Oregon wines are way cheaper. You yeah, really you want to get a decent value at like a fancy American restaurant? Get like. The second cheapest Oregon Pinot Noir. Uh, <laughs> How are you petters? We get some decent value of this Jack Nine, hey? We drank some outrageous, outrageous we'll Spanish out. red here that was the highest rated Spanish red wine you can get. And it was like, it was half the price that it, I mean, I guess that's not a surprise, but it yeah. was half the price that you can get it at the restaurant. It was yeah. half the price that you can get it retail in the United States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wine, European right wine is so much no cheaper takers. here than it is back in the States. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to ship yeah. the wine. Just picking it right off yeah. the vines right here in Spain and France. Yeah, we're obsessed with the French cuisine in America. Yeah. Yeah, French and Italian too. But. Yeah. Yeah. Italian. So the wine conversation's over. I can jump back in. Two to three years. <laughs> Two to three. There, by the way, there's no difference between how long it would take me to learn Mandarin and how long it would take me to learn Cantonese, right? Of course there is. Why? 
They're just dialects. One is much harder than the other. Okay, is that because of the different tones in oh, Mandarin? Oh, so you do know. Oh, shit. <laughs> Pretty you good. speak Mandarin, bro? Very little. I'm as good as you. Come on. Don't take me to KTV. <laughs> I'll light it up. King 8-7. With two diamonds. I need a rating on that pronunciation, by the way. Somebody out there has got to give it to me. That's not bad. 7 out of 10? Yeah. It was much better than expected. Liao bets the gutty here as Haxton contemplates navigations with top pair. Tricky, but probably mandatory to call here of King-6. Obviously doesn't want to see further heat. Oh. Kings and sixes now for Haxton. One of the few really nice cards for the King Six. Yeah, but then some of that 910 is problematic. I'm not sure if Liao were to barrel yeah. once more that Haxton would go sailing off. Liao does pump the brakes on his very last bullet, which is down to 84k. What, so several Chinese dudes, because their names are in Chinese, said, okay. that's pretty good, and that was great. Shishishifu. Jesus, I'm looking like a fool now. <laughs> no, you're not. Hey, Stop. you asked a question on how to learn a language. You, you already know the language. You're fluent, aren't you? No. Be serious. Just because I went oh. to it. Oh, my oh, God. God. Did this nine burger just roll off for Ivan Liao? It went check check on the turn, didn't it? How sexy is wow. this? Yeah. How else does he get there? Jeez. I'm surprised Haxton checked that one. Any ace makes the nine high straight. Any ten, the ten high straight. Third diamond would be more of a concern in long deck. But so tough to make these flushes. So Ivan fires 30 into 38. And you now Haxton going to reconstruct things here and Figure out how much Ace X and 10 X are in Liao's range. Yeah, so let's see. Ace X would be like what? Ace King? 10 X would be like King 10? Other than that, you might not think it's too often. Ivan's got that image though, you know? <laughs> like you pay him off a bit more than others. Hmm. He's ace ten, uh, king ten, ace king. Would ace I bet thirty k? I don't believe you, Ivan. Yeah, I I just don't see an ace betting thirty k. So I think that's why I accept that just now. It's like ten or nothing. You heard Haxton say, "I just don't believe you, Ivan," and could Pretty be some awful hand for player specific life. suspicions there as Liao, so feisty, but Haxton. Deeming it too rich. Now here's the wild thing. I actually, when playing at the Lucky Chances Casino up in Cal California, Northern California, it was brand new, heavily populated Asian area, South San Francisco. Yeah, I came upon a group of guys after the poker game would break, would go over to someone's house and play mahjong. Okay. I will see soon enough. Needless to say, one night they needed a fourth. The Guaylo was at your service. <laughs> you have it, Ivan? gone down. Have it. Pretty similar to gin rummy. The great tiles. Day. Yeah. And... Initially, I learned to play 13 tile, then came across a group of Taiwanese guys huh? and started playing 16 tile. I spent an entire summer oh. <laughs> grinding <laughs> mahjong <laughs> and kind of putting the poker in the rear view because it's such an addictive <laughs> game. <laughs> yes. Longest poker session I've ever had, dwarfed yeah, by the longest mahjong session I've ever had. I got to a guy's house at Friday. I think I left Monday night. <laughs> we need to know what that one was. We subsisted on pizza and Red Bulls. Isn't it so fun touching the tiles oh, and just arranging them? And then learning how to touch the bottom of the tiles yeah. without looking? And then I do. That's my they favorite. They still don't show my cards in the stream. Yeah. <laughs> it's a degen game. Oh, yeah. I hadn't noticed that. That's funny. I noticed it like two or three Oh, times. you haven't noticed that? 
I've so, so many times. Like, did you have to learn the numbers? Do, man. I'm one through nine? Fuck, to read the change. tiles? E R San Si Wu Liu Shu Jiu. Right? Is that right? Yeah. Ali in the chat oh, is just schooling me right now. Only for Mahjong. <laughs> Counting to nine doesn't exactly establish fluency. <laughs> but uh, learning the special points values of certain hand combinations. Did you guys use flowers and seasons as yeah, well? Yeah, of course. Flowers, seasons, directions. Dong Nan Shi Bei. You could do it. Come on, buddy. A man of the world. I've stamped my gambling passport in many an activity. <laughs> hey, King for Liao here. He's looking to stamp a double. On a rampage. All in, all in. Can't wait for the Triton Mahjong tournament to come now. Oh my god, don't tease me. You know, one of my favorite things ever, and we still do it to this day, as the mixed game breaks down back in Vegas, is play old school closed face Chinese poker. Ah. My favorite. Yeah. Don't like that pineapple open face business, but the closed face, just kill time, trade some chips. One of my favorite. I caught Rui Cow playing, by the way. Did you? Yeah. Just briefly. <laughs> I got excited. I said, Rui. <laughs> Sup, <Sam?" laughs> He was like, no, no. It's just like a one off type of thing. The other game is Cho Dai Di. Do you know that game? Big two. No, big two, yes. Big two. That is That's a, a great classic. Game. I'm pretty sure I got in trouble in high school for playing that game. We'd yeah. all squat you know, in a group of four <laughs> with a deck. Show <laughs> the ID. I can't believe we played that game when you were in high school. I did too. Oh, yeah, man. Game was awesome. And we'd play for like 25 cents a card yep. or something like that, right? Now, do you play clubs, diamonds, hearts, spades? Lowest suit to highest suit? Or do you play it the other way? I think the spades was the largest. No, no. God, but I can't what's remember. the smallest? Clubs or diamonds? Clubs. Okay. Clubs. I, too, played it that way. Yeah, no. Diamonds is the American way to is play it. Is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah so it's clubs. I believe so. And but then there was like long. the Vietnamese variant where you could play three card, four card, six card, seven oh, card straight. I love that one. You do? That one I think has more strategy. Really? We can choose the number of cards for your straight minimum yeah. three, right? And you just, no, first I hand, you just go 13 cards straight. <laughs> yeah, well, and then everybody's like, I quit. <laughs> that was fun. Going back to class. Uh, I'm going to tell you, the chat is impressive your Chinese. Yeah? Just like me. There you go. I thought you were just seven. making some conversation because no, they were man. speaking a little bit. What do you think? I just went to a couple of Panda Expresses and, and read a couple of fortune cookies or something. Be serious. I'm a cultured man, Randy. Queen 7, Jack 10, Ace 10. A clear favorite here is Liao on the button with aces and sixes. Check to him. That's 10,000. Takes it down. You know what? I would love to play Cho Dai D with Ivan. Yeah. I want to play Cho Dai D with Ivan Liao, Elton Sang, and Rui Cao. How much fun would that be? That would be super fun. The problem is... The stakes. I could lose one <laughs> can and I'd be broke. <laughs> Ollie, you're just going to have to commentate for us forever. Yeah, exactly. The your life. servitude. I'm actually not getting paid. I'm just working off my Triton marker from Chodai D with those guys. <laughs> you know the psychology experiments where they ring a bell and the dog starts start salivating because it thinks it's going to eat? Yeah. When I hear the music, I just think I'm going to have a chip count. I just, I'm ready... <laughs> <laughs> to talk about something on the screen. We got teased there. And Mike Watson with two Hold aces in. under the gun. Limped in. Ike takes the bait oh. with ace-queen. And the other... Oh, I thought it was two more aces for Nielsen. My eyes were deceiving me. No, it's just a 10-8. Sick. Perfect trap under the gun. That would have been a five aces deck. If Nielsen <laughs> woke up with aces, we would have just chopped it up. Meanwhile, Watson, of course, going to make the call. The only good news for Haxton is he's deep enough to cover Watson and then some. Yeah. 
So 80 to 15 in terms of percentages on the flop. I pick some oh more my. equity, however, with the ace queen on the king 10-7 really board is. where he's flopped the gut shot and the back door hearts turn a, very big a seven. Turn. And that is not any excitement for Haxton. I think it as Watson wants wrong. to fade the jack and he's done it. Aces hold and double for Sir Watts. How many levels we play today? Ten. Do you know how many levels we play today? Ten. He can't hear you, Randy. But I was right. Pretty confident. Well, if you're confident, there is no better statement than a Jacob & Co. piece. The official timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series who manufacture not just the incredible pieces that you see on your screen, all of which are here in display on display at Casino Grand Via. I had a chance to check them out in person, but it's beyond just sapphires and rubies. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, it's all about their Astronomia Casino piece with the functioning roulette wheel inside it. Not to mention the beautiful Triton Epic X timepiece, which will be awarded to the winner of the short deck main, as it was to Henrik Eklund, winner of the long deck main. Yeah, I heard he was really proud of it, too. Just, like, really enjoyed it. Yeah, he was rocking it or what? Yeah. Um, right. Because, you know, some people, they win, like, some kind of jewelry. They're just like, oh, they just store it away. Yeah, but he was, like, yeah. really happy about it, loved it. I mean, it's a limited edition. Mm -hmm. You rock that, everyone knows. Yeah. And he actually had a fairly nice watch on before we gave it to him. Promptly took it off, stuck it in his pocket, and was beaming. Yeah, see. Yeah, because, uh, you know, other people could have that watch. Not everyone can have yeah. the Triton No Limit main event watch. They said it was 22K euros retail, if I'm to understand. So is it? There's some watch enthusiasts spread out across the field, not the least of which is Jason Kuhn, who is limping to open this pot with Queen-10. Liao does the same with an ace-queen suited that has him in trouble. And he's got Paul Pua in bad shape as Pua in the cutoff. Gets frisky for 20,000 and Liao piles. Mm. <laughs> nice trap. <laughs> Got him. Pua <laughs> <laughs> shows a six. <laughs> it's the only time I blocked before. Uh -huh. And got threatened. Uh -huh. <laughs> Been hearing this for years, man. <laughs> uh, I won. Good track. Liao really hasn't been able to get anything going thus far. You think he plays Mahjong? All these guys. I must mean, know yeah, how to play Mahjong, come on. Right? Like, it's just the hot. problem is the Cantonese speaking folks usually want to play 13 tile. Mm -hmm. And that's where you have like minimum points in order to win. Oh, I right. like 16 tile. 16 so. tile is a little deeper. I don't think I've played 16 tile. Taiwanese style. Yeah. So you are, have you made ever made one of those magical hands before? Yi Tiao Long? I forget which one that one is. One through... All the same? All One through nine, all one suit. Pretty sure. Then you got to have... Uh, what about the one nine, one nine, one nine? You know that oh one? Oh, yeah, that one's nasty. <laughs> for sure. You know what Nigu Nigu is? No. In me. Taiwanese? All pairs? Oh, that's the easiest one to do. Is it? Go ahead. Try it. I mean, I know how to make pairs. Yeah. Trust me, someone else is out there with the last pair that you need waiting on the card just like you are. <laughs> Meanwhile, two jacks and a king leave Haxton in front in a four-way affair. Yeah, you just need a, what, a pocket fours, a pocket fives, a pocket sixes in your hand. Yeah. It's not as hard as it sounds. It, it's easier if you play poker, but back to the hand real quick. Nielsen. The bad end of a gut shot, sprinkling 65 out there. I like it. A lot of guys um, bet here because oftentimes people will actually fold the king because they're scared they're drawing dead. 
Maxon kind of knows this guy stabs a little bit, right? So maybe he'll peel. Yeah. Nice. Ike does have Martin covered. Another 13,000 into the middle. And now the straight becomes a two-way draw for Nielsen, courtesy of that eight. So whether Nielsen bets or not depends on what he thinks Haxon has. If he thinks Haxon has a king, he might multi-barrel it. As a king probably would fold two, a two-barrel, but of course a jack. If he thinks he's up against a jack, then he'd slow down. And a lot of times Trips doesn't go blasting off on the flop because there's such a wide array of equity on this type of board, whether it's a flush draw or one of many straight draws, which are easier to hit. But once an eight rolls off, Jack X is going to feel a lot better about it, in particular when it's checked. It's Haxton on this occasion doesn't have the jack, of course, has the king. How comfy is he going to feel? Checking back, pot control. Free shot at it. Hits it. Bingo. Runner, 8-7. Nielsen, jack high straight. Yeah, so when Nielsen sees check back, I'm going to guess he thinks Haxon's got the king more often than the jack. Jack would probably want to get some value on the turn. Trying to lay the trap. I guess he thinks Haxon maybe has some busted spades. Queen 10. Take it down. <laughs> <laughs> I like that neck crane, pause, furrow the brow, knuckle knuckle, hand into the muck. It's the little things. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you can do it, buddy. Good job. Meanwhile, a sneak preview of our next featured table here in the main, and it includes Winford Yu, Nikita Badziakuski. I think Michael Soiza had his back to us there. Yeah. Action packed. Checking out Six, the no, no, no. Triton Poker Plus app here, searching for that particular lineup. It has Kiat Lee and Rene von Krevelin as well as Seth Davies, along with the aforementioned Yu, Badziakuski, and Soiza. Watson starting this party with Jack 10. Paxton and Kuhn both with Ace X and both with a little something. Not as good, however, as Watson's top two. He will check. Solid jack 10 there. Tricky board to bet for Haxton if he wants to go for it. Just so connected, you just don't know where you're at when you get called. Kuhn probably going to take a free one. Mm -hmm. Six of diamonds, an interesting development for Haxton after the round of checks as he picks up the backdoor diamond draw to go with the gutty. I think Watson's going to start charging. 14. <laughs> 14 into 18. Should see Haxton just call here. Wouldn't it make sense that, how, why would you check the flop and all of a sudden raise on the six? So I'd be pretty shocked if he does anything but call. Maybe exactly eight, nine of clubs would play it that way, but in a three-way pot with one behind you, yeah. even then, ambitious. feel ambitious. Yeah. Six pairs on the river. Doesn't help Haxton, the only customer. And for Watson, not exactly a welcome sight, given that the likes of Queens could occasionally be 
participant here. Looking dangerous. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh. Yeah. Um, yes, but I think it's very unlikely given positions. I think when you read the position, hacks and limping queens in the cutoff unlikely. seems unlikely. Yeah. A six is unlikely for a cutoff range too. So I agree with his value bet. It's very comfortable. Thirty-six thousand. The river sizing from Watson and Ike into the muck. Watson's been getting the better of him here. First, it was the double aces against Ace Queen. Great. Now taking another nibble. Cool, man. Out of Ike. Much Paul's got the sound on. He might yeah. be hearing about this Mahjong game, or we can, maybe we can get it going. I really hope we can get it going. Let me tell you that. But don't expect me to come into the booth with any sleep under my belt. <laughs> In fact, I'll be like, guys, save my seat. I got to go through this little commentary thing a few hours. Be right back. Oh, they'll wait for you to come back. Oh, I bet they would. I'm the fishy fishy. I'm the VIP in the Mojo streets. <laughs> Three limps in front of Kuhn. And he's going to raise it to 22,000 here, Randy, with 10-9 off. Yeah, just really trying to put some pressure on. They've got some pretty deep stacks around, too. Look at the amount of interference in front of them, by the way. Pua with 8-9, Watson with Jack-10, another 8-9 suited for Haxton. And behind what him is Martin Nielsen, who is re-raising with this ace-jack. This that is makes called knowing your player. Things super simple. For not the field. An, not an easy jam at all. No. It's 130. Haxton, there's getting count. Nice. Feeling ambitious, maybe. Wow. I'm just trying to wonder is this ever a call for 9 8 suited? Because he's got a count. Well, I'm trying to wonder is that vegan leather? <laughs> I guess Haxon's trying to bait. How often maybe the other two guys got the same hand, like ace king, ace king? Then technically, 9 8 suit would be crushing. I think it's real leather. You were saying something? <laughs> <laughs> Big spot here. Hollywood Haxton. Does he want to spin the wheel of fate? You've seen some shot clock on this. For some people, they wouldn't even be thinking about this, so. He's still got two bullets left. Yeah, think about spinning up. Looking for well, like the thing is, if, if he were able to get it in here, it's kind of contingent upon the frequency with which he thinks he's going to clear Jason Kuhn in oh. doing so. Wow. This How is some gamble. Is the same? Less. How much less? He thinks they both have high card. 110.5, and this is 130? He doesn't right. think if, Jason if, Kuhn has 10.9, I'll tell you course, that. Of course, of course. And if both Nielsen and Kuhn oh have big cards, then Ike is thinking That's about this much have. differently. And Nielsen's going to be completely thrilled to see that these players are sharing a 9 and cards that would help them make straights against his ace jack. It's amazing to be ahead with ace jack two ways and three ways. Haxton in for the main. And a small leftover side between Kuhn and Nielsen. The board. King Jack 7. Ace Jack oh, with game, middle pair. <laughs> yeah. uh, double today. gutty. This is a sick game. Haxton has a gutty as well. 
in the turn. Pardon me. Pairs of seven. So you have to fade all the wraps. You got to fade 10, 9, 8, queen, right? Yeah. River is a 10, I, and Isaac Haxton makes a jack oh. high straight. Man. And Martin wins this I lose pot. the side pot for, you get like 20,000 for me. Ah, the tank call scoops it three way, dominated. How does he know? Wizard. I don't know. What? 10 9 suited. I mean, uh, yeah, 10 9 suited for sure, but. 500 or 1. Yeah, I mean, you I know, don't have Paxton any saying 10 9 suited well, for I mean, sure, but the 8 9 suited kind of close. Yeah, Maybe leaning more toward the degenerate side yeah. of the spectrum, but. Obviously, plenty of thought went into that decision, and plenty of chips will be going his way as a result of that big, beautiful 10 on the river. If your name is Isaac Haxton, despite the pickup, though, he still sits second in chips behind the chip lead here of Paul Pua. Second overall in the tournament, Rui Cow, the overall chip leader, Haxton, in fourth. Those chip counts brought to you by Dyer Pay. The Annies will be going up to 3,000 as we will head to a break. Randy, no time to discuss things. We got to get out of here. Make way for Brian Rast and Jeff Gross, who are going to take you home for today's coverage. It's certainly been our pleasure to bring you this uh, event 1200K short deck. The first couple of frames, the rest of the way, will belong to the Czar and JG. We bid you adieu. Keep it close, though. More coverage from Casino Grand Via after this. We double up on everything. Come play now on GG Poker. Welcome back. I am Jeff Gross, joined by Brian Rast. We are going to be covering now, taking over for Ali and Randy, the short deck 100K main event. This is this is one of the marquee events of the of the of the series, Rast. This is short deck. This is fun. I don't know if it's one of your best games. I think you're getting pretty good at it. We've been covering a lot of it. We're going to be checking in if we can take a look at the app on the featured table that we're going to see and 
Rass, any familiar names here? Anyone that, that you're impressed with short deck that you've seen this week so well, far? Well, I mean, familiar names, it's everyone other than Rene Van Crevelen. That is not a familiar name to me, but every other single person on here is someone that has been on Feature Table multiple times just in the last two stops. Um, you know, kind of a bunch of different styles here. I mean, even like most of these guys, like yesterday I was up and there were three cash games going up on the sixth floor, like sweet little outdoor thing. And all, all, most of those guys were even playing up there in, in the games. So, yeah, a bunch of familiar faces. I'm curious to see the new guy, so to speak. But uh, I, I, we got to mention Makita. He won a title this week, four-time winner, of course, just an absolute crusher. Winford Yu also has got himself some some big scores and is no uh, stranger here. Michael Soiza, also a crusher. And Seth Davies got off the snide with a big score, big cash in Triton just recently. Yeah, and, and finally uh, laid claim to a nice score here after a bit of a dry run. So I, just th I think Seth is a guy who, um, and I'll say it again, I think he's kind of prepared – uh, for for a run, right? I mean, I think sometimes things happen. They're a bit streaky. You have a bad run. I think Seth has weathered it, and uh, once a few things start clicking, uh, you know, I just think the next year is going to be a good year for Seth. Absolutely. And Kiat Lee, I was I was playing soccer today. He was out there. He was mixing it up, and he was we out had there. some pickup soccer. He was soccer. playing cash last night. He was the guy can do it. He can do yeah. everything. He's playing tournaments, playing cash, playing soccer, and we had a we had a fun time. Some pickup like eight on eight, nine on nine. Um, uh, most of these guys indoor. Are, uh, it was outdoor. It was okay. hot. It was it was it was early in the morning, and and so I, I think most of these guys are more poker players and soccer players. But there were some people yeah. that could do some things. It was it was fun, good time. But yeah, we are going to be covering to the winner. Not today. We're going to play short deck over the next several days. We'll we'll make it through day one, then we'll have day two, and then there will be a final table as well. So um, 25k PLO. We saw Durr win. He knocked me out at the, uh, in eighth, but we are today covering he short deck. He knocked me now. out, too. He can do it. Some guys knocked, can do it. I mean, he probably knocked half the tournament out, he, at least. <laughs> he, can, he definitely does it. We're going to shoot over here to the, the feature table. Uh, I think Durr is – he's got to play this, right? He's a short deck guy, too. He just of got course. a title. Durr's in the mix somewhere. We'll, we'll take a look at that. And on the Triton Plus app here, you guys can see players' records, see the other tables, see what hands are unfolding. I'm going to take a look myself. I want to see what the tables are shaking short out. Short deck is Durr's preferred game here at Triton. Oh, wow. Okay. He was playing the short deck cash game last night up there on the sixth floor. Um, $500 ante. Yeah, and oh, he's this is there. what he's – yeah, he's he, in there. And if he busts, he's going to be rebuying. He is this got, is, he, he's got He's got the second most chips at his outer table right now. Stephen Chidwick with 335K. That's 112 antes. Uh, Danny Tang at that table. Ferdinand Putra, but – we're covering this table, Rast, and I'm excited to see Makita play short deck. You Those were actually the two guys. So I sat at the table a little bit. I ate uh, after the players' party, and Durr was to my left, and it was like a combination of – it was actually Ferdinand Putra's seat, but I think uh, Wai King Young was playing for him for a while. So those two were to my right. Okay. So I hadn't really spoken to Ferdinand Putra before, but uh, chatted a little bit with him. He's a super cool guy. Obviously a sta staple of the Triton stops and, and the short deck streets. Uh, Wyken, obviously a legend as well, multiple Triton titles. So that, that was a fun little cash game to sit, sit in on while I chowed down, kind of, you know, after some beers. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. But, yeah. Well, well I know the man, you, Renee, will call him. I'm not going to go for the last name <laughs> from the Netherlands. He is yeah, fresh off a 50K short deck, and he looks like he's a short deck specialist, Ras. He's played three events, cashing one, the 50K, got eight for 114,000 euros. He played the 20, 25, 50. So he is, he's here for the short deck, it appears. Yeah, he just flew in for these last short deck events and ready to smash. Just ready to go for it. There's... Hell, a lot of people hit this hit this flop. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of way. Seven eight's got something going on there. See who stabs at it. I mean, now we're getting to the ranges that this flop is best for here, the cutoff and dealer button. And yeah, he's gonna he's gonna take a take a swing and Makita easy fold. Winfred here. I mean. This is a very appetizing bet. He also has the backdoor flush draw. Again, flush is not that good, but I mean, an eight could be a big card for him because if anyone has just a 10, he smashes them with the nut to the second nut straight. And that is actually 
the situation Soyz is in here. So. All in? Oh, wow. Soyza going all in with the worst hand and might take it down. We could see here that Winfred should call this. How much more? 52. I mean, he's got to call 52 to win more than double that. He's getting over 2 to 1 on his money. And he's actually 44% equity against Soyza's hand. So see if Winfred can figure this out. I mean, he's not, I mean, he's actually doing pretty well against two pairs, right? Uh, with the two overs in the gutter. So, I mean, the worst hand he could be up against is like 10-8, which Soyza can have, but maybe it's not quite as likely. And you have like nice eight, little nine? call. 9 10. Yeah, equity is very close. That was a good card for Soiza. Total yeah. brick. Oh. Ooh. And Winford with the super straight. A6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack. Street. Street. <laughs> yeah. You can call, but why must you hit? Fuck. <laughs> is all over the place. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, got some good price on that hand and, and took it down. What jersey is that? Is that Fe Feyenoord from from uh, Netherlands? They're in the, the first Rome here in the AS Roma in the... Europa Conference Finals, I think, on the 25th. I don't know if that's, that's it's Dutch, and they're in the final. I think that is that. It's a cool-looking jersey. Took a stab there with the 7-8, Ras. What do you think about that? He's blocking the nuts. He's got, uh, Yeah, you know, I think it's fine. Pair. Looks. Yeah, the funny thing, actually, is that he, 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 the thing that sucks about taking a stab there is I guess sometimes you end up folding, I mean, you're going to fold the check raises, basically, but, uh, you might end up folding like a decent mm. amount of equity, but it makes sense to try to attack the pot with the basically seven and, it, and an eight, both pretty yep. relevant cards. Yeah. You know, as it turned out, he was kind of against two other players who had bottom of range given the action and, and he ends up technically making a bad fold versus them, but he obviously could have been up against like much stronger hands there. Yeah, well, it's clear he's he's the short deck guy. He plays specifically the Triton events. He didn't play any in No Limit, so didn't see him in the PLO. And a lot of short deck specialists here. Well, I mean, if you're a short deck specialist, where else are you going to go for tournaments? This is it. Triton is your jam. No, this is, yeah. I mean, there's nowhere else. <laughs> for, this, for the stakes, that's for sure. Saw the WSOP, I think one, right? There's one event, maybe only one, at least one 10K. Yeah, one event, and I don't know if it's a 10K that I saw. All right, Winfred with the ace king, not suited. He's in the cutoff. Gonna kick it up, Seth Davies. Get out of the way. Kita not going to play and just takes it down. Yeah, we're still, I mean, this is just early stages. Show on TV how aggressive you are, huh? I feel like I'm back home on this table. <laughs> back home on this table, right? Same seat as well, right? Yeah. Makita wearing the same outfit he won, the, <laughs> won that tournament the other day, so he's feeling good, feeling lucky. There is gonna be let's see we'll play 33 still re-entries open a little bit surprised the field size but i guess you know it's gonna it's gonna go from here rest but it's 33 in the main got 93 for no limit a little surprised by that still early a 
What do you think, Rast? Do you have a guess on that? What, how many total entrants in yeah. this? Yeah, it's, it's, it still seems relatively early. Three buys open till cool. tomorrow? Yeah, I think we'll get confirmation, <laughs> but it is, I believe that's right, maybe even two levels tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, probably most of these guys will rebuy that have busted, but I mean, not all of them, clearly. So yeah, maybe over 40, I'd say, but under 50. Yeah. I mean, if it only has 33 right now. Yeah. It's a tough lineup, tough. A lot of, lot of great players here. Of course, this is, you know, cash games are fun. It's it's enjoyable, but this is where you get the trophy, the hardware, so you get to play it the best. And this is a man coming in a little less well-known, but looks focused. 24. So yeah, not coming in for a limp. A lot of players been playing that way up front, but and under the gun, he's he's raising. Yeah, it's a bit unconventional from what we've seen. But in situations like that, it is nice to just take down the pot, huh? Yeah, gets it done. It is a fine or jersey, if I'm pronouncing that right. I know they are in the final. Dutchman. We're going to get to see several more levels today. Seth Davies getting a mic adjustment. So he's been rocking the mask. Been a little yeah, bit quiet good. this series. Let's take a look at his resume. Soiza. How familiar with Soiza? Rast, you played with him? Did you play with him at all this week in the main? Mm. He has four million. I think he, I think I was at a table with him, but like briefly, not not for very long. Yeah, he's got eight caches, a title, four million in earnings. Been playing since 2019. Actually. He won his first ever trade event. First place, 11 million Hong Kong, and a 500K 6 max. No limit hold him, so it's a little hard to follow in those footsteps uh, when he got off such a hot start. But should be. No. Shit. Keep giving this a thought. Yeah. If this this won't go three way, because Soiza won't call ace eight, <coughs> Nikita, you can see actually a favorite three way. He's gonna put it in. But heads up, ace queen gonna be the favorite there. The good news is that an ace is gone. Lucky Mikita called. You know, maybe I should call a little. I kiss Mikita's pocket sixes. Nah. Hiya. Back down the pop. It's the jack, so flips the percentages. Hiya. A lot of outs, though. Yeah. I mean, that's not one of them. Just one? I only left one. The king pairing actually made the two queens an out for him, times. as you can see. So it gave him a couple more outs, but. Can you actually? <laughs> Yeah, players jockey for position. A lot of gonna be a lot of all ins. Even though Queen seven. The early stages here. Yeah, Makita with, with felt like a bit of a loose call, Queen Jack off. But uh, this guy's lucky tracksuit on. <laughs> tracksuit is going for it today. I mean, it's definitely. I mean, I'm sure when he puts it in, he definitely would like the like to go three ways with. Uh, you know, the other player behind him. I believe it was Soiza, right? <laughs> but but not a spot where he... I, I mean, you can't figure it's doing a favorite against Catley's range heads up. Yeah, if you go over to the Triton Poker Plus app, you can see actually how many of their bullets they've used. So Rui Kao is up to 912,000, a massive, massive lead. I mean, I mean he that can is, really he build can, up the, he, the stacks and short deck, can he? It's crazy. And he still has a bullet behind. So really, he's over a million. Paul is also in third. Paul moved up the PLO tournament an hour today, oh. requesting, wanting to get it over with to get. Oh, that's how, that's why it started yeah, earlier. Because he, yeah, because he thought it was, you know, for the short deck. They actually thought the PLO might take a while, but it was super fast, yeah, which, fast. which was 
a lot of short stacks. So, I mean, Durr just <laughs> did his thing. Yeah, just like got. just one, just one every one all the chips. Yeah, I'm no sure. One, how many? I mean, the, 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 on the bubble, he must have. Did he literally? I think he won almost every hand. I was. Yeah, he was just winning. It was just boom, boom. He started with three point four. By the end of the bubble, it was like five point four. You know, just Durr couldn't lose. Yeah. So it, it ended pretty fast. Yeah, it's one. I mean, he just never really had a, a speed bump, even. Yeah, even because I mean, everything was working. Oh, hand. Antonio's had double suited aces, just called, got in a weird spot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he just. And then there was another hand where Antonius actually Dur opens button. Do do? Antonius yeah. pot, blind, ace king queen eight single. Oops. And and then. No. But like half guy? his chips, like you 700 in the pot, pot, 700 yeah, behind. So it was like 1.5 in the middle, and the flop was like jack 7 6. What do you do with ace king queen 8 there? You put in the rest? I mean, I don't think so. Yeah, Just yeah. check he check folds. Right. VIP so, <laughs> I mean, that was huge for Durr because, I mean, not only a massive pickup in chips, but it's like Antonius, dangerous player, directly in position, just got like cut in half. Yeah. You know, went from possible threat to just like another yeah. short stack. So, I mean, that was I mean that was a huge <laughs> pop for Durr. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know who Sean Winter is? Yeah. You ever play with him? Yeah. He always stacks the chips in the most ridiculous way like that. It's like stacks of like three. It's like 30 stacks of three. <laughs> what was he up to? And then... It, he, he has a family. He just play, kind of plays the American stuff. Hmm. He, he plays all the Vegas stuff. But we played. He's been playing some Titans and stuff, no? Has he? Before, yeah. I mean, be, be probably. Yeah, he, yeah. he has like a little daughter and stuff, so he probably doesn't travel oh, anymore. Yep. All right. But Renee yeah, gonna so rip it in here. Makita interested. His chips just like this, and he'd like he'd look at you like you were crazy when you asked him how much it was. He's like, one twenty six. Sorry. Up. He looks like Justin Timberlake. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's, he kind of does. <laughs> Sean Winter, Justin Timberlake comparison there. But my Michael Soiza, it's pretty funny. I guess it's actually a little true. Yeah. It does look it. a little bit like yeah. him now. I never thought about that, but. Wow, well, Makita, gonna, gonna go for it here. At Halloween with our kids, we did walking around the neighborhood. He's a funny guy. Let's see what Van Krevlin does here. <laughs> I mean, I think Winfred's we'll not in, over calling in. with Ace Queen, but. Before we all in for TV. Oh, Van Krevlin's already yeah, all in. He ripped yeah. it. He just he ripped gripped it, it and ripped it, shipped it. <laughs> wow, super good that the Ace and the Queen are out. Like, this is no longer a flip. Makita's probably like 60 40. <laughs> like, Ace and Queen gone. Yeah. Out of, uh, you know, I mean, we see it's only five handed, so. Insurance? Yeah, it's a big pot. Keita looking to build build up a stack. Yeah. And what do you know? No, no more aces queen. and the queens in the deck. Huh? Why can't I have ace king one time? Top top. You still want ace king? <laughs> I think it's still yeah. Good. This pot cannot be chopped. And Makita. Would have been a long way to get to the rivers, pocket eights. <laughs> yeah, Renee gonna go out. Be interested to see if he rebuys. He cashed his last short deck, short deck event at 50k. So far, so hot. So far, so hot. Whatever happened to Gabe? And that's as much smiling as I feel like I almost ever see Makita do. He's got that same tracksuit on there. He won the event in, man. I, mean, I think he's feeling good. He likes know? Madrid. Oh, yeah. yeah. Four-time Triton champ. He's in a club of his own there. Hope you guys are enjoying watching. Yeah, before used to play with Facebook, online, Twitch, right? YouTube. Mm -hmm. See yeah. all you guys. Much love. Missed those days. When Did I a giveaway, Ras. Didn't so work out. It was zero. It was close to something special, but couldn't quite get there, man. Yeah. I know you were sweating for me in the box so today. It looked like ace queen. Exactly. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Like by the end when we were playing like the 500k Hong Kong almost every day. Hit the fucking leaderboard and shit. Mm -hmm. There was a leaderboard. It was <laughs> awesome. It was amazing. <laughs> One twice. The leaderboard. Huh? You won the leaderboard twice. 
I think I won it once. I did really good in those games. I made, I made a bunch. Just me and you? Mm-hmm. You yeah. have 90K. Yeah, man. Oh, I was pulling for you. You had a bunch of tough spots today. Okay, let's see. I yeah. mean, oh, okay, let's I, a number of those spots I wasn't really oh, sure. Okay. Made some guesses, ah, but need some help. You need help with it's you like five big blind bubble PLOs. Is, is, uh, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not something you're familiar with. Yeah, me neither. But I mean, it's with an Annie now too, right? So it may, changes it up. It's like when you're down to five blinds, I mean, that's an extra Ooh. blind to win. You know, you're probably supposed to play a few more hands than you like normally would. Yeah. Like, think about it, five. Let's say someone else you're getting. So instead of playing you seven and a half to your five as opposed to six and a half, pretty big difference. Yeah, I don't know. And yeah, no doubt. No, it was, it was uh, a fun, fast tournament. These guys are pretty lax for the 100K day one. I feel like short deck kind of gives off that vibe. I feel like this is a bit more lax than like day one of the no limit 100K. Right, I did I, in the commentary. I felt like guys are a little more, yeah, a little more serious, a little more serious. Yeah, this one. Yes. Two more to go for walk. Two people more to go. chatting. How much button? Kind of shit. A lot of <laughs> shipping it in. <laughs> I'm gonna do the show me into this. <laughs> Seth here with, just kind of going for it with the Ace Nine off. Yeah, nice pickup. He's got that big score confidence just coming off that, I believe, 600,000 third. Him, Chidwick, and Adamo were, 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 were trading blows in that. that uh, Listen, man, the way he know. slung in those white chips, that was that BD energy. Not going <laughs> to break down those acronyms. Okay, but the B is big, Lock, and D you can down. try to figure that out yourself. Yeah, he's, he's firing. He's ready to go. These guys are gambling. Tight until the registration close. Your last bullet, you can gamble on those mm. first two, but that third one, you have to Done. <laughs> lock it down. Wait for pocket sevens. <laughs> sixes, maybe. Wait for sixes, yeah. Oh, here we go. But this time, there's a limper in front of him. The limper's only got 200. Ace nine suited is actually, it's kind of like the ace five suited of short deck. So yep. see what Seth goes with here. I mean, he could just rip it in again. 30,000? Okay, no, he's... Gonna raise. Ooh, Soyza. Soyza is probably going with this. I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the pot's laying him a lot with all the dead money out there. But, I mean, Davies, here's the thing. Davies's raise could imply a stronger hand, right? Mm. But, yeah, he's, he's going to take his chances. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Just... Big smile. Uh, no timing. No, <laughs> didn't didn't take the obligatory ten seconds. I think. I mean, Seth Davies is out of here with Ace Nine suited. I think. Uh, Winfred actually might like multi way here with the Jack Nine suited, right? Yeah. It's kind of bad for him. He doesn't know this. Obviously, the Jack and the Nine are out, but all four Aces are out, which is pretty good for him. So bad. Yeah, it'd be ambitious. Yeah, De I can't see Davies continuing here. I mean, he is getting uh, he's getting a pretty good price. 84k, but I mean, Kiat Lee's range has to like kind of be crushing him. Like those flushes just don't seem to come either. And when you start calling off, uh, I just I, I don't. Oh wow! Oh, he's gonna gamble. That means he buy gem. Really if I jam, then this, this is yours. Huh. This could be felt a like a little speculative call yep. by Davies. Yep. Okay. Which hand do you pick? I guess it's a f it's not for he, for his stack. It's the effect that those guys. I mean, the other thing is he already has 30k yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah, so it's part of the problem. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the thing is, is if Kiat doesn't have aces, I think Kiat's range is kind of like ace king, aces kings queens, maybe ace queen suited. So like. Ace is obviously is like the worst for him. Yeah. So kind of makes it extra. It's kind of just extra bad. One of the nines is dead. You would have a little and like I mean, so Davies has one out. He raised first. So 
Ooh, yeah, man. you just know Soyuz is going to get there here. So Eight outs. How could Aces ever win? Start with yeah. what? Aces ever win three ways against Ace-9 and Ace-Jack. It's impossible. It's, it's hard. <laughs> Short deck. It's, it's, it's definitely hard. <laughs> Even with a Jack and a 9 dead, it just it can't happen. How much was the insurance? Insurance pay? Right. Save Mike. Save I bought the insurance. Obviously, Greenwood joined the action. Having a solid week, had a the 100k final table. I jam, you have no side pot. Mm -hmm. Took a nasty one, Kings to eights rast. That eight just came, flew right on the turn during that yeah. MADA promo. It was just sitting right there, eight eight, and then right on the right on you the money. I mean, that's a brutal card right there. Yeah, it's a multi-million. Or <laughs> well, <laughs> it's a lot. It was a lot of equity. I don't know. It's three and a half million. I don't think it million. was what a million. Probably a million. Uh, it was. It was close. Oh, no, I, high I mean, six I figure. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. It's a nasty eight. We'll just call it that. One eighty. Yeah. Probably somewhere in, in between five hundred thousand and a million dollars. That card. Awesome. Yep. Is that Davies under the gun? No problem, nope. Mr. Greenwood. On to the next one. <laughs> he's back. <So laughs> he's back. He's in the he's in the short deck ready to tango. I mean that's the thing. Sometimes just a, a good night of sleep. I mean, ha probably had a few drinks at the players' party. So this this man's a gamer. You know? Greenwood's in there. Yeah, Greenwood's ready to roll. Okay. See, now, this is, like, not that dissimilar to the last hand. And, right, had Seth Davies been up against the King-10 and the Kings, his Ace-9 suit would actually have a ton of equity. Like, he'd probably be, like, well over 30% three ways, right? Because that Ace is just so live. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it's one of those things where, oh, it, it looked, the percentages looked really bad for Seth la last hand, but he was kind of, like, worst-case scenario, essentially. Yeah. Second yeah. line. So, in the bullet tube. <laughs> but I, this hand, no, 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 he no, doesn't no, call. No, 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 no. And, uh, oh. oh. Ooh. Sweaty, sweaty How pop. could Kings ever beat King-10 suited? It's not, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, not, oh, it's, not it's not, it's not, never. Oh, this is over. On, Greenwood. I mean, gonna he's going to get spade paid right here. It's at least a spade. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Maybe Kings just hold up. 70 30 all of a sudden. Greenwood. Third abort one time. Greenwood just. Ace. Yeah. Going to hold. Went bad. To Too many outs. How can you miss that? <laughs> Greenwood's like, I don't know. I just <laughs> I got know. here. I never <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. I never win, bro. What are you talking about? Well, did maybe you see the, the did you see the main? You know. Yeah. Like yeah. then, it, then it's up to then it's up to the god. Lose with <laughs> kings, lose against kings. If kings are involved, I can't win. That's what he's thinking. Yeah. I prayed it last night. That's why. <laughs> All right, Poly Market. Visit polymarket.com to follow the odds. Will Tom Duan place first in at least one event at Triton Series? Look at that. 100% yeses uh, at the moment. It's, it's strong and green. Uh, yes, yes versus no, the price, and that would have been a nice cash in because Duan did get a title today in the PLO and really ran over. I mean, it was a beatdown. I gotta say, I was with him yesterday from 18 down to 8, and he won 90% of the pots, and then today he kept it going and it just a runaway train and got himself his first Triton trophy, surprisingly enough, but. Yeah, but got it done, and he's gonna be in the short Jim, deck. We'll be called. keeping I mean, Tom's him. not really a tournament player. Is what no, it boils down to. Maybe. maybe. Wouldn't you rather have three bullets and a hundred? Uh, wait, He's a we cash were in the same player. position last time. Oh, last Rui time. Cow is last over a million. Yeah, yeah. He has one million sixty thousand yeah, with you. a with a bullet, Ooh, like a lammer. So he's he's oh. cruising. Oh, oh he's king of hearts. He's a, he's a fun person to have at the table when you're doing commentary. It's yeah. the Roy Cow experience. <laughs> He's got two titles, nine caches, eight point four million at Triton alone. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a kind of a high stakes beast. And he's fun because he's in there, he's gambling, he's playing goofy hands, he's putting people in spots. People yeah. are like, yeah, you also I mean, how can I fold? You're going to have a Roy Cow hand. But this one or the next one? This one. That he's got two seconds as well. People not knowing what to do against you is, is a pretty nice spot to be in. Yeah, he's got some big results and definitely. Hopefully we'll be seeing some of him throughout oh this God. main event oh short deck. God, I don't doubt it. <laughs> Up to 36 entrants all of a sudden. People coming in. 
我命運已經推出去，要上天都去。誒，喂 ，I need your card。It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. People know the short deck. They 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 respect the game and they they respect Triton. I I actually got stopped on the way over here, um, right after I left you on our bird ride rest. Guy came up to me and wanted a picture, and I asked him. He didn't speak English. I asked him if he knew who I was. He didn't. But he looked at my shirt and saw the Triton logo, and he was, he was like, "Yeah, Triton in the in the casino." I was like, "Yeah, man." Didn't have any idea who I was, but he was pumped up. He took a picture, the Triton shirt on. Dude, people are funny. Yeah, I mean, it's a big, big tournament. People know it's big buy-in, big action. I mean, I just can't imagine asking somebody who I don't even know for a picture because he's wearing a T-shirt with the logo. That's like, that is some like. I swear, <laughs> and I, but then I asked him. I go, I said him. I said, do you know my name? Like, do you know who? Like, do you know what my name is? And then he said, well, he didn't speak a word of English, and he just went, he went to Twitch and pulled up Triton Poker and showed me a like, Triton Poker on the app. I was like, yeah, I was like that's great. I was like, it's but yeah. Uh, it was funny. Just literally right after, I was like, well, I mean, I love that started. he's fired up about it. You know? Yeah, I mean, it was it's right like outside the casino. Excitement's always. Oh my goodness, Winford, Mister Cowboy, right here. Just all in and call to you with the two kings. Mm, what am I gonna do? I guess I'm gonna go all in. It seems it's ambitious to try to win a back-to-back -back kings all in. Oh but no! But the double ace out there. Yeah, that is that is. I that's mean, I nice. guess Makita can fold <laughs> the ace jack off here, right? <laughs> GG. Like. I don't. I mean, I guess yeah. it's only two hundred thousand. Give me a count. Good bullet. Um, I mean, the number on the bottom is wrong. Good. Clearly, the pot has fi <laughs> over five hundred. So they're not updating. That's not right. It's over five hundred. We can just see. It's about five oh six just in that. That doesn't include the annies. So it's probably more like five thirty. So he's got to call two oh nine to win five thirty. But. He has a pretty bad hand. I mean, Winford's probably got <laughs> ace king, maybe ace queen, aces kings, maybe queens. I doubt he has jacks. He does the math. He lets it go. Yes. Yeah. Great shape. You must have an ace. You must have an ace. You could have had jacks. See, he's so frustrated. Cat, I have to last time I fold an ace jack, ace queen. Oh, that's just oh. there. It is ace queen. I put. There are two kings in the deck. I need an ace for safety. It's not the ace ace queen flop. You want some insurance? Sure, a king is coming. The way that you are running bad. I folded kings. You <laughs> folded kings. You say. All right, so Kiak got pretty unlucky aces to ace-jack off. Gets lucky-ish there, ace-queen. Pretty lucky with the ace-jack having an ace gone, that's for sure. But that Kiak had the aces in that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the, there. Now he a little run good back his way. Back into the game. And I mean, not just the double up, but the triple, because Makita stranded 100K out there. Makita's 100K. Which he just noticed laughing. Makita, I'm sure, thought that was a little bit less funny. Well, at least he lost anyway. He wasn't getting that 100K in action. He was flopped pretty, pretty dead to ace queen there. Yeah. Would have been true on that board, too. True. Seventy-five, eighty-five, ninety-one, ninety-four. That much? Jack ten, popular hand, short deck. Yeah, this feels like a game that's a little bit after my animal spirit of kind of just gambling and going for it. Like it feels like it's kind of okay in this game, and uh, it's right up my alley. I don't like really naturally fit as a type player when I try. It just it feels like I'm denying my animal spirit. But like in this short deck, get these spots. Like look at this table. Guys are gambling, shoving it all in. It feels like some spots you can make some thin kind of calls going, trying to get multi-way with like the jack nine suited. 
yeah. really go for it. Rest. Don't look now, but Rui Cow's at one point <laughs> two five million, and <laughs> he's still got a Lamb Irvine. I mean, this guy is literally double third with early on. I mean, it's an absolute. I mean, it's that's impressive. <laughs> yeah. I have to, actually, I want to on the Triton Poker Plus app. I am going to check the hand history out. Let's see if we can catch like a. The hand history is going to look like. Oh. Like a y equals x graph. Oh wow. Okay. Just like a big slope pot. slope of one. Yeah, he's just he's stacking people. That's a pretty sick hand. Guy flopped the nuts. He had top pair with the flush draw. Hit the flush. So. Versanti. Jang. So yeah, he's in there. He's mixing it up, playing some hands. What's Seth gonna do here? King Jack. I mean, is he gonna let a min bet get by? Giving everyone a cheap price feels a little dirty. What happens if you raise? I mean, are you ever are you raise folding? Yeah, it's a feels four dicey. four way spot. Got two people behind. But, I mean, the button, you're not that worried about. I mean, button can't have kings and queens and probably not king-queen, right? So, given that screen would only has 88K. All right, Seth. Seth going to be very happy he didn't let some hands and cheat behind him. But Ooh. Wow, that's a, that's a great card for Makita. It's interesting because Seth blocks Jack Ten, but you know. I honestly don't but know I mean, that's like doing. the one. How much you got? Right. Mickey doesn't have to, but it's the one most obvious she draw. Call Trio with a flush draw in top pair against a straight in the set, and then you just turn the flush. But still, like, <laughs> you make him to like six hundred k. Yeah, I mean Jack Ten. I mean Makita can also have hands like kings, queens, king, king, queen. Fastest player in wherever. He's got a magic snap, snap. I got the magic. I feel like if Makita has aces, the nine is a really bad card for him because Makita would be blocking some hands that Seth could have, like ace jack, ace ten, um, that he'd want that he'd want Seth to have, you know. Uh, so Seth can't really love this card too much, actually. And he is gonna. Push the action now. Sure, but I'm I'm pretty sure this is a kind of raise with the jack blocker. Hope to take it down. Hope if Makita calls, it just goes check check. I'm pretty sure he fold. I mean, I'm pretty sure he folds to a shove. I, this feels like raise get it in. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I think this is like he's taking his king blocker and the fact that he has equity when called. If Makita decides not to shove himself. Yeah. I mean, you can't be doing very good. You, ha you really have to get creative to find a range that you should want to raise call it off with. It seems. Yeah, that, that's you don't expect to get to get raised here, but when you do, it's not nice. Makita lead flop four ways, lead, and then jams this. I mean, you have the king of clubs yourself, right? Which blocks some, like some hands. Maybe you'd be beating like king ten of clubs, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's like a raise kind of blocker play. If you get called, check back a bunch, especially if you don't improve. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I I, I think it's a pretty reasonable line by Seth, all things considered. But uh, yeah. Really hoping my my man didn't. Call it off on the end, but he's not going to do that. He knows what's going on. Nice. Yeah. He's informed. He knows Man, how many times is Bitcoin going to get rejected at thirty thousand? I'm just looking at it right now. Is this going to be like the sixth time in the last week that it hits thirty k and just gets rejected? That's it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of times. I mean, I'll tell you, it really is up stock about. We gotta, we gotta put that chart away. This is gonna. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, short that. You can't, you yeah. can't blink and short that, guys. Our chips are flying. I mean, yeah, we appreciate you guys watching. If you hit that <coughs> thumbs up on YouTube, it means a lot. Get that follow button on Twitch; it's free, so you guys know. Get your notifications on when it's live. There will be much more 
content coming from well, Triton as well as there are wait. still several days left. This feels like we've been here. I mean, it, it's it's moving though. It's going fast, but we've covered so a lot of events it's now. Almost over. Yeah, there's been a lot of winners, a lot of champions crown. The main event of Hold'em, No Limit Hold'em, is done. Now we have the main event of Short Deck. There still will be a hundred and fifty thousand euro high roller short deck as well and this is a multi-day event so we are going to pick up the action as well oh we're just seeing a lot because, of yeah big pairs, big pairs getting tossed around so Seth Davies things have gone go ahead <laughs> ah. <laughs> big come pairs on, come have on. been getting passed <laughs> around he's queen queen one count it up i want all reds though the entire 100k okay all reds. straight draw yeah Six, got seven, the gutty kind of nine reds. counts i mean this plot to pay. basically preserve the preflop equity. equity it's almost the same as preflop Ooh. pairs the board not what seth is looking for oh, oh my goodness did he just say nine of diamonds <laughs> <laughs> that was magic. <laughs> what? Well, well, once again, you thought we slow roll here. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't even look at it. Wow. I shouldn't have looked at it at all. Yeah. People do that so sometimes. And it doesn't seem to ever happen. But when you call the exact specific card and it hits, it's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> felt Talking. it. I just felt it. Hey, something doesn't feel right here, you know. Hmm. Yeah, no, no, calling, no, no. calling out the cards and shit. <laughs> yeah, that's absolute, no just problem. spot on. We play aces kings, huh? Can you win? Kings are bad hands. Yeah, I know. I've got an old punch ship ace queen. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you just lost ace queen again, Jack. Yeah, short deck, when you get those big pairs, you just, the equities are not the same as hold them, so that's what you're used to seeing. Be prepared. How much are you playing? We'll see. 60 MPs? 60 in break? Is it in a break down there? Probably like Queen Jack. Yeah. I'm going to do Queen Jack. Queen Jack. Big clubs, maybe? Hmm? Big clubs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was there a queen of clubs on the board? I can't remember. Um, I think there was. All right. This is a flop that could get some action. Both players have some straight draws going on. Probably a slightly better flop for Kiat, who V pipped as opposed to Makita, who checked back, but certainly they can both have a bunch of good hands. A lot more dangerous than short thing, deck. Like 90 something, I think. Oh, yeah. It's pretty incredible. Soyza's first ever tournament at Triton, he just yeah. banged it for first place. Yeah, That's hard to do. Big, big result there. Some guys can do it, JG. Uh -huh. They can do it. Guys can do it. Get, what, 60? No idea, man. 60 is kind of ambitious. Like, yeah, I guess nobody. There's anybody else coming? It's not here yet. You never know. Maybe I get Richard and Mike in. So you can you get the three hundred k lammers. You can you can use them at any time. You can buy. You can you can get knocked out with. I mean, you can do one rebuy at two or however. Right. That's that's what I understand. I think so. Pretty sure it's the same for all the events with that when they have those. Let them see the flop Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. They call that jack nine plus that you, so you don't cannot come back and get me. Wow, and Kiatli oh. just Jeez, flops 
the nuts. Flushes. Second nuts. Yeah. Better, yeah. Well, Pretty, in short deck, it's just a, it's really hard. I mean, there there is the king jack straight flush. That is possible. But this this doesn't even change that situation because full house still behind his hand. Mm -hmm. Although I guess technically, sorry, you could have quads now. Quads do beat flushes. Yeah, thinking how to get paid here. I mean, this is not a hand that is really going to want to give much money here. Yeah, I do. It, he's kind of hoping his opponent has a full house now, and that's the most likely hand that pays him. I mean, obviously a flush would pay him off. So he's going for a small bet, thinking, okay, hopefully I can get paid by a queen or a nine here. Maybe a flush raises me, and then he probably re bet three bets it. Um, I guess for this bet too, Winford might consider calling with his hand. I mean, Winford is losing to everything. I mean, Kiat just has to basically be stone bluffing this. And there's obviously hands that could do it. Like, what if he has like ace eight or ace jack with just like the ace of diamonds or jack of diamonds, hands like that, which are just playing queens and nines. So Winford is beating the bluffs. Oh, and Winfred's going to turn this into a bluff. Wow. And uh, now we get to see. I mean, my, my thinking is that Kiat's going to think his hand is strong enough to bet three three bet all in. Yeah, he's losing to King Jack of Diamonds, Pocket Queens, and Pocket Nines. So technically has the fourth nuts. But he's beating all full houses and other flushes. So, and even though a full house probably folds if Winfred somehow raised the full house, a flush... What he is expecting is a flush to raise him, I think, and that maybe he can get paid by it. But if he decides, hey, maybe a flush doesn't call me and there are four hands that beat me, you know, and is it more likely he has one of those four hands, then a, f then a hand on beating calls, maybe he just calls himself. So he's, he's, this is what I think he's thinking about right now. He's definitely not considering folding. I, I, that would, I'll walk out of the commentary booth. All right, good. Because I feel like I would have put me in a dilemma. I, I don't think I can actually walk out. But he, he didn't fold, so. So yeah, he thinks it's more likely he gets paid by a worse hand than Winfred has a better hand. And I agree with him. Like this play by Kiat. Felt like what was happening. Bet three bet. Good bluff, huh? Black sixes. <laughs> Jack nine, nine of that. Jack of diamonds. The guys get a lot of credit to some bluffs there. They they very creative player. He could have some bluffs there. On the button now, yeah. Yeah, I just think after some of these pots, people just like to speculate on yeah. it. But I, I'm sure most people think he probably has it, right? But there's always that chance. Yeah, well, speaking of chance, Rui Kao at 1.3 million with the Lammer behind has the best chance at the moment to win the tournament over here at Makita. Badziakowski is in a nice spot, 141 Annies. He has got 565,000 with two those bullets behind in his hundred thousand dollar entry so technically sitting at 765 yeah oh and and we got a new a new player in second ivan liao oh man 835k listen ivan was out there mixing it up playing the number nine on the soccer field today he got a good good sweat in today oh, yeah, was, yeah get, getting the got some sun endorphins rolling and he's off to a good yeah, start I mean, he's, here he's a guy who <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of different Ivans that can show up. I feel like when Ivan's motivated and trying to play well, he can play short deck pretty well. 
Oh. You know, the Ivan, and I feel like maybe the this is a 100K big score. He's playing soccer today. Yeah. I feel like we're going to see the good Ivan, not the Ivan who's like, ah, let's just gamble and see, you know, see what happens, Ivan. Yeah. Lycan Young in there, Richard Young, Chris Brewer, Seth Davies, as you see at the table. Soy's is going to love someone raised behind him. Pretty sure we're going to see him go all in. Makita, ace mystery card. And thinking about it. Jason Kuhn also in fifth. 500K with the two bullets behind. So really 700K. So yeah, some... Uh, wow, and another ace out for Wimp. Two aces. There's no aces left. This is pretty grim for Kiat Lee. Uh, who, I mean, Soyuz is going to limp jam here. And yeah, will Kiat call it off with the ace queen off? If he does, there are no aces left in the deck. All three aces have been folded behind him. So... All in? Well, that we knew was coming. And the fold here. And now... Oh, oh, oh. It says it's too good. These odds that you're about to see are not correct. <laughs> oh, no. Three <laughs> aces. Dead, bro. Right, I, was in, I was in pretty bad you shape here. Play king ace here. You had king jack? I had king nine of clubs. Mm. I just need small cards. I had some of these cards. Yeah, it's going to be a hard one for Ace Queen. I, it's going to be super hard. That, that's one of the ways to do it, the two queens. I mean, yeah, but not two queens. No, that's kind of hard. No, I don't want to Pairs the board. So he's a one big river away for a big pot. Oh, nice. Nicely done, does it? <laughs> I mean, he did the wrong call. Yeah. Now he's just like, he's fucking toast. That's <laughs> you can't call a card that's already out there. <laughs> Ten of spades, clubs, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I need change. Ace, queen, man. I think. Third, third time you said that. Ryan, yum. He's got 732 plus a Lamner, so technically actually slightly more than Ivan. He's in good form in short deck here this week. Got I mean, a he's been making ninth runs and everything. Ninth and a seventh yeah. in uh, both short decks, cashing the 25 and 50 that he played this week. So two for two, try and do three. See you, Slammy. I mean, in pretty good shape to do number three, yeah. although I guess it's still super early. We're 28 out of 37. Mm. You should have bought in for two bullets, I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah, 800,000 right now. Watch out. This is one. Fucking shot, Nick. Getting the kings on you. Yeah, 28 to 37 remains. So those entries going up. Try to get confirmation on when registration is open to. Uh, I believe we're <laughs> here in end of level eight. We'll double check that, but that that is... Which one? We're on level six right now, so. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna clear 40 for sure. <laughs> but I don't think we get 50. Michael Soiza. We saw the Queen Jack, Makita, willing to gamble. <coughs> couple times winning some big wins. I mean it's I just realized the perfect nickname like for Michael it should be Michael Kaiser Soiza. Oh, all right Rasty, I see I see where I see where you're going with that you got I'm a, that's what I'm I, I'm gonna make this stick by referring it to him for the rest of the stream okay, okay. Right. listen man this is a huge I'll reference you. I'll support you on your nicknames well, you know where this is from right yeah usual of suspects Rast, Kaiser Soize. I get it I get it. I'm not. I mean, you're a little older than me, but I know that movie. I know the. I know the Come classics. On. This is a huge flop. Yeah. Queen Jack is very nice, sneaky, double gutted, and Seth with bottom two. Bottom two in short deck is so dicey. It's just there's so <laughs> many things. Every turn you're just guessing. So it's see what Soiza wants to do here. He knows he's got a very creative kind of top straight draw. Possible to have the double gutter here. One of the problems is if he raises the hands that he gets it in with, for the most part, not doing that great against. If he calls, 
definitely bluff out some weaker hands. Like Boy. if Davies has two pair plus, maybe he doesn't call. But yeah, he's just he's just going for it. Can't blame him. Kind of feel yeah, like Davies like probably calls hand. this off. Like Soiza doesn't have too many aces, right? With the check back. I think two pair. I mean, you're never happy calling, right? But the price you're getting. I mean, you're doing pretty well against most hands with draws. So he's a probably doesn't have ace 10. Might have ace 8. But you're blocking. I mean, you're blocking pocket 8s. You're blocking ace 8. No heart. And, uh... I mean, you're flipping against straight draw hands. You're actually doing better against 9-7 and jack-9 than you would be against queen-jack because of the over cards. Right? Yep. No, yeah, queen-jack's a powerful one here. It's like queen-jack can win with an ace and then any queen or jack, whereas, like, 9-7 can't win that way. Right? Yeah. Ace, and then you can't pair, so... And even we can see against queen-jack, he's a small favorite. So I, I just feel like... Given that he's actually blocking tens or eights, which are good, he's probably actually doing pretty decent against this range here. But I mean, it's an uncomfortable spot. I think it might be a rebuy potential for him because, yeah, so he's got 180 in front. Let's see if he has a lammer, which we can see on that. He does have one lammer behind, but he's at two. Draw. Two fourteen. Draw. Yeah. Ten eight. I like two. two. Yeah. Players just sharing what they got. What's happening? I should have checked like a good boy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, seen a lot of action here, Rast. This has been. This has definitely been. Been a lot of all ends right now, this stage. Seeing, a, seeing people not afraid. Got the uh, kicks over there. Winfred rocking mm -hmm. some, some, some grinches. From Mandarin? That means double, double, double. Three in a row. I want Three that shot row. clock. That's Mal what I want. I just like if I, if you play in a home game, I feel like you should have a that kind of clock. What would be your guess? I mean, if you could buy one, like just stock, what they pay. What do you think? You know, I'm sure they, they buy a big bundle of those. What do you think a shot clock like that costs? Custom nice shot clock. <laughs> Possible. <laughs> Two thousand. Thousand. Mm, good yeah. guess. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. a shuffler in uh, like eight grand for a used shuffler, 11. basically. 11. It's an electronical 11. device. 11. I don't know. Maybe that's a good, good guess. I, I actually don't know. Yeah, definitely four figures. Yeah, that's not six hundred bucks. Yeah. I mean, because it's not like mass produced. Either, that too. Right? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Which actually might make it more than 2k, right? But I get that. We're figure that out. I almost committed with my hand is shit. This one is shit. Well, it's okay. I got more now. Yeah, I mean the trade events don't usually have more than what the most they'll have at a main event. Maybe there's. Call it 120, you maybe the most plan. ever. So it's not like they have thousands of those machines. They probably have, you know, they don't need that many. <laughs> Just nice. It's probably cheaper than ever, though, with all these, like, 3D printing type machines, whatever. I don't know anything about all that manufacturing, but yep. it might actually help keep the cost down. It's probably not that hard. You send a design somewhere, and they just make it. So it's not that big. But, yeah, maybe because it's 2,000, I feel like. It's not, I mean, they probably had to buy, like, 20 of them, or maybe they spent 50K on just the, yep. you know. Who knows? Kiali is now in with King H. Shoves Makita calls Ace Nine, so you can see 60-40. This is definitely a decent favorite. Ooh. but I mean the eight Up for the G. immediate gutter. So one G, good bullet. Good turn. And now a king. That's a sweat on turn. Not a seven. 
Nope. All right, so that is going to do it for oh. Kiat for the moment. We know no, he still can. No, for the moment. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, obviously. I, I know the guy. He's coming back. Just saying. He's, he's off the feature. He's got to go get the redraw, the receipt. Tap the Luxon pay account. It's true, actually. Re-enter, but he will re-enter, yes. That was actually that's probably part of the reason, just folded to him in the cutoff. I mean, he's got 70, he's got no bullets. He's probably just like, all right, let's blast this in here. Yep. And uh, we're either, we're, we're chipping up or we're rebuying. Yeah. So uh, he's, uh, he's back in this tournament. A hundred. How's Makita gonna play this? Jam, raise. What do you do if you raise and get jammed on or limp? Maybe, maybe just, maybe just jams. I mean, there's 20k in the pot. Okay, it goes for the limp. All right, let's see a flop. Nine seven, queen seven. He's going glasses. Glasses on. Every pot matters. Rest. Yeah. It's not just a not just the six figure pots. He's in there. It's how you win tournaments. You're focused. You're in there fighting for everyone. This one's gonna be hard to win. You can be as focused and dialed in as you want, but when Winfred's got trip queens and you got air ball, he's going for some betting to start. It's gonna be really hard for him to win this one. I mean, he's got to run out a straight or a flush. And uh, he might not even get to the river. He might not even get to the turn, actually. No, nope. well, just a call, so we are getting to the turn. My guess is Winfred's going to... Still has 11%. He's got yeah. a couple oh. interesting cards. There's one per chance. Yeah, I mean, that's one of his best cards, picking up a club. Also maybe thinking he could start telling a story, get a jack X to fold. Oh, for sure. So I think he's going to follow this up with a bet. Definitely wants to get a jack to fold. He had 635 to start the hand with the two lammers behind. So really 835. And he does slow down. Interesting. Up. Interesting. Interesting Makita doesn't barrel here. Maybe he wants to find out if Winfred ha feels like he gets clean information on Winfred by checking to him. Well, I gave him quite a price. I guess it was only 40 in there, so 20, but still. I mean, uh, 20 to, win to 38. I mean, if he feels like Winfred's betting here a lot with queens, I mean, maybe he just check folds. Flush does beat the full house, though. It does. But it is just a nine high. Oh, wow. He's Whoa. a check raise move. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't just a check raise. He just he just put the... Okay, Winfred has 73, right? So it's not a... No, no. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a... But it looked powerful, and it's it's putting them all in. I was wondering if he was going to do this. I didn't... I didn't but it's me. like, here's the question. I mean, I guess Winfred might, might have some diamond draws that maybe he folds... Right? Like 10x of diamonds, 9x, 8x, whatever. Doubt he has too many nut flush draws. I but, mean, and so maybe he's thinking he gets those to fold. I mean, I don't, like, he doesn't think he gets a queen to fold, does he? No. And yeah. that's the thing. Like, that's how powerful his bet is. If the guy had, like, king 10 or ace jack or, I don't know, jack x, yeah, it's like. Ace jack is raising Prius Winford, right? Versus a limp. I'm saying, but what, so, like, Even if maybe king 10. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Winfrey can't. I don't think you can fold a queen here. I mean, if you're up against a straight, you just. Oh, wow. wow, he's folding. I mean, this is this is Makita the Makita show. That's a wild deal. Wow. 
Makita, I mean, they've played a lot together. Makita knows his man. This is this is how you have the most Triton titles out of everybody. Is you just know what to do. I mean, that's a pretty strong play if you get a queen to fold. <laughs> like, what's ever calling you? I mean, I guess it's straight. And Boats? Have, uh, <laughs> I mean, Linford doesn't. What boats does he have? He doesn't have kings. He doesn't have jacks. Right. Is he, he's not doesn't have king queen ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just saying. But maybe uh, queen jack. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe queen jack doesn't raise. My point is, it's an line. effective bet if he's getting. Yeah. And he's got and you're nine high. Just queen x, queen little to fold. <laughs> like, yeah, it's bluff. That's why I almost feel like as Winfred, you have to call that off, versus somebody who's as good as Makita, because, like, I mean, you really kind of towards the top of your range. The only boat you can have. And you only have it sometimes probably as queen jack. You don't have ace 10. So your best hands are queen jack and 10 9. Yeah. Right? And, and now Makita's got. So, I mean, you, you're, you have like essentially your third best hand that you can have, which is queen little, because you never have ace queen either, right? Yeah. So, just feels like as Winford, it's like a shitty spot, but given okay. that you're at the top of your range, you have to call. I mean, that's my read on it. And Jack tends to actually a favor here read, actually. versus ace nine. And oh wow! Now ace nine is a big favorite. Ooh. Wow! <laughs> but you can see it actually only now picks him up yeah. three outs. It's like way less than in hold him right because ace of spades. Oh, that was ace of spades. Is the spades wasn't Eight of spades? Sorry? Is the spades wasn't an out? Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, but this would have been a fun one, flush versus quads, right? Yeah. 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 Right. Rui Cow had a little adversity, but he's back to 1.27. He was down around a million. Calling people out, and then it won't come, you know? You learn the problem. You learn all the bad things. Makita calling for the fun card. Yeah. He loses with Trey a flush to quads, cards. but uh, didn't oh. get it. Yeah, and Makita sliding up there. He's actually now second in the tournament in chips because <gasps> he's got the 678, but he's got two. Uh, oh, no, now it just slid 605. But he's still second in the tournament with uh, two of those add-ons. So he technically has 805,000, which is just a couple annies more than Ivan Liao with 792 and no add-ons. A7 off. You can see here, actually, Jack-10 offsuit is a considerable favorite, 57%. One, six, one, yep. Let's see what Soyza does here. Mm. Gamble or not to gamble? Yeah. Seth definitely doesn't want him to gamble. Yeah, that is... No gamble. No gamble. Oh. Add a six suited. Oh, way better. <laughs> Seven, eight suited. <laughs> Ace queen. Wow. Way worse. <laughs> yeah, Brewer seems pretty in tune to like hands and ranges and where he's at. Already won a title this week too. Yeah. Well, I mean, seven, eight suited wasn't a very good guess, I think. I will say that. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I don't think Michael's calling the 7 8 suited there. Yeah. I mean, 7 8 suited is a pretty dusty hand in this game. Super I dust. know it like sounds good coming from full deck, but it's almost like saying, hey, guy jams into you for, you know, 14 blinds. Like, you're just calling with like the 4 deuce suited. You know, the answer is no. <laughs> Four three suited. It's 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 more similar to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think one of the, the nice things to, is to calibrate hands to hold them, to understand also some of the equities like ace king versus jacks, how yeah, it Ace doesn't King's work accurate. exactly, of yeah. course, but just just to exactly. give holding people a better idea, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's good to kind of try to find similar situations. A lot of these guys are very well versed, have played a lot of short deck and short deck cash. Wow, and Jack ten off, just getting king queen to fold. W will he get Makita to fold the queen jack? Makita actually called here earlier with the queen jack, but I think it was for a little bit less. But the ante was smaller. But the time before, I think he was up against ace-queen, and he, he got lucky and won, right? And this time, he gives up the queen-jack when he would have been dominating. Yeah, so interestingly, Winford did make a, a fold that was he was way ahead, and then he got to not have to stew long, though, because he doubled next hand. Yeah. You know, he basically got likely what he would have got the mm. hand before. So been a roller coaster. We've seen some players exit from our feature table. Kiat Lee, we saw briefly, probably re entering, and we are up to 40 rest. 28 of 40, so Rui Cao fluctuating at 1.1. Ivan Liao, a lot of people's favorite player at 788, has used He's, all his lammers. He, Ivan's cool. Every time I walk by Ivan Liao, he gives me a smile and a fist bump. I mean, he's just got, he's got good energy. He's got swag. Guy. He's fun. Yeah, he's fun. He was the, he like, you knew he was running the point today at number nine up top. Yeah. Like, he was getting it's there. It's surprising. Yeah. No, like, he wasn't yeah. playing center back. He's got no. the BD energy as yeah, well. Yeah, he, he, was, <laughs> he was in there ready to roll. I mean. Trying to get a couple of buckets out there. I it was mean, fun. He's a beast. Yeah, if you guys have any predictions on soccer ability out there, there was, there was a, I mean, there were some people, I was actually a bit surprised. There was people mixing it up. There was some, I could tell people Pretty have played fine. before. The funny part was it was there was like twenty ish guys. There was like four or five Spanish guys that were pretty good that like were local I think or involved somehow that knew people. And then like there was a debate, do we play ten on ten? It was a little smaller field than normal. And they were like, No, we gotta play seven on seven on seven, three teams and rotate and like all these guys were looking at each other and were like like, we're, no one's going to be able to make it. Seven, it was like, would be so gassed, right? Like, because sh we wanted to have more guys. So it ended up being 10 on 10, and everyone was just dying, like, for air. So I'm glad we didn't do short field, you know, because then you have to you just have to run so much more if it's 7 on 7. Yeah. But no one out there, no one's in there hitting training or hitting the treadmill daily. Like, people are huffing and puffing. <laughs> yeah, of course. And me included. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of short sprints. Tim Adams, we didn't see much of this week. He didn't have m many runs. Great player. Great soccer player, too. Usually organizes that World Cup of Vegas during the World Series. Oh, he's the one who organized yeah, that. Yeah, he's, he's the main catalyst behind that. That is pretty cool. If you're in Vegas, this WSOP, and you do play soccer or football, however, and you're part of the world that is, and you're interested, there is a very cool tournament, usually around the 4th of July, where everyone gets to play for their country where they're from. And there's usually like 12 teams, World Cup style. Uh, very fun in North Soccer, six on six. So if you're interested, you're in the area, either reach out to Tim or check out World Cup of Vegas, I believe it's called, on uh, the socials because it, it's a lot of fun. Interesting here. 10-9 off. It's probably going to be too weak. Nice little hand multi-way, though. But, yeah, the 20 anti open. Going to get it done. I mean, I guess there's a chance this gets to to 50. We're already at 40. And this is level 6. We've got two more levels. I think it might get 50. Oh no, there's going to be a 30 minute break after this level for the players at least I don't know if that, that will be so for the stream are you going to finish? Uh, we might, we might play some catch up during that been a long trip yeah I'm coming to Monaco too uh, even longer. It's open jamming the ace 10 golf runs back home now too so I like don't really want to not see you for three weeks or whatever yeah. You going? Mm -hmm. Back home. 
I don't think I don't think it's gonna. Happen. Maybe they'll have a big call now, but it doesn't seem like it. The venue's sick. I mean, Venice is awesome. So smelly, but awesome. Smelly because of the water. Or? Yeah, it's just a bunch of bottle in the middle of a city. It just yeah. gets a smell. <laughs> I, mean, I haven't I haven't been since. Yeah, I went when I was fourteen, so I haven't been in fifteen years. But probably got worse. <laughs> probably dead. Probably not gonna get cleaner, you know, I don't know. Roy Cows down from 1.2 to 1.05. That's a volatile stack. Yeah. That thing is gonna be yeah. Paul Flo is place. shooting up here. He's in you going to Venice? third, but actually no. second if you include the Lamners. Nothing Ble big there. Believe yeah, on a no, rebuy. It's gonna feel like a big letdown after Didn't this. See some Man. eliminated players. So Devin Tang, just Martin Nielsen, so Lund so Loon, and Renee. Yeah. If they, I guess if you re-enter, so they just put you yeah. back in and not as eliminated. Yeah. I mean, like Venice is a nice location, but like Chidwick down to 100k. Me, you know, it's very close to Slovenia, so like I'm I'm being there pretty often anyway. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Once a year at average, so. I'm excited to go back to Vegas. It's gonna be hot when I get back, though. <clears throat> it's kind of stupid they have like this 100k right on the first day and bounty. So dumb. Yeah, I mean, I have. It's also, I, I looked at the structural, you just start like 400 big blinds deep or something. It's like impossible to get a bounty until registration closes. Yeah. And they also like make it bounty, which is. Like, I mean, is this structure anyone plays every, anywhere? Like, you know, it's not being played online 25 Yeah, because now it's PKOs. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it'll be a huge hit, though. Like, maybe I'm going to talk, be like, oh, I don't get it. And then all of a sudden, like, 90 people are going to play it. <laughs> Never know, man. These things are confusing. And Makita actually like, bringing up something. I love ballets and payoffs by the end of the summer. I feel the opposite that what he just said. I actually like it more when they do stuff like that, and it's not something a bunch of people play. Like it's just more fun when you go in a tournament, and it's not like oh, like there's guys just grinding this online who are already super good at it. Yeah. Right. Like it's much better. It's like okay, like sure. For example, like I don't really play online. I know there's bounties online, but I actually like hearing that this isn't the same bounty structure as like online tournaments. So it's like guys who just like play bounties every week aren't don't just like they already know all the spots. Yeah. Right. They at least need to make some adjustments in their head that maybe they won't do correctly. So I don't know. I mean, I feel like stuff like that is more fun. Kind of just it, it like levels the field a bit and it makes it just more appetizing for, I don't know, people to step in and. and sling a sling a buy-in in because you know maybe less people have have studied this right for sure so i mean anyone that p plays bounty tournaments and willing to buy into 100k is going to buy in even if it's a different bounty structure right that doesn't matter to them but uh, something like that actually kind of ma would matter a lot to who knows someone like me or who doesn't play bounties so i have the just a complete different look at it than makita does yep that's i mean yeah it's always going to be Different, different thoughts on on these type of things, and yeah, this is for sure something that is different right here. We're seeing the more uh, multi-way spots in this game. We see a lot of four or five way to a flop, which is pretty unusual. And I no mean, it happens when it's limp and no raise, right? That that's when you get these multi multi way. A lot of jacks out there, so a lot of people are going to be interested in this. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, no, I'm yeah. saying different than Nolan Hold'em. Oh, you know, yeah, you see yeah. like four or five way to a flop. Really That's why I right. actually had this fun conversation at the party last night talking about, hey, like, what if Triton does, like, a mixed tournament, right? And, and uh, you know, um, <laughs> the idea was, what if we put no limit, short deck, and, wow, huge card. This is sick. I mean, they both have a straight. Makita has the redraw here. The queen got there. The jelly roll. Um what if you do short deck, no limit hold 'em, and PLO, but you just play all of them with the short deck structure, right? Just the annies with the the big blind, uh, or the button double annie. 
So, in other words, short decks played the way short decks normally played. Okay. But then No Limit and PLO played with the, that short deck structure. I feel like that would be pretty fun. Something like nobody's kind of ever really, I mean, who, who really plays No Limit or PLO that way? Yeah. Could just get, you know, No Limit, PLO. Everybody wants to fire that. You know, short deck guys probably want to fire. Stuff like that. That could be really fun in the next stop. Don't make it one of the huge buy-ins. Make it like 20, 30, or not more than 50. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, that was a good idea. I hope I hope they do that. I, I would definitely fire that one. Yeah, I mean, look, Triton's innovative. They take chances, and yeah. they they listen. So, I mean, yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll discuss it. And, look, they throw 50K turbos on and just add stuff. Yeah. Uh, whoever's here and is in the mood for something that's going on. And, and, yeah, all is possible. And Makita and Seth are going to have a chop pot here if it gets to a river, likely to. The most relevant thing here for this pot is that Makita can have a lot more ace jacks than Davies. Davies limping the hijack after, you know, a limp or two off of a short ish stack. Like he's going to, you know, we've seen people be pretty aggressive and get after it here. I mean, Seth's already done that multiple times with ace jack. So he could limp behind with ace jack, but he could also raise. Whereas Makita. Um, so I, I actually don't think Seth. Well, I, let's see what he does. I, I don't know that I like raising as him just because Makita can have way more ace jacks. Than, so I'm probably just like, all right, fine. You know. The weird part, though, is if you did have ace jack and there's a decent chance, right, your opponent could have the, the jack, wouldn't you try to, like, price hit them harder here? Or do you think he's almost like, what What if Seth raised and he showed it? Do you think Makita would knows that? Like, just... I mean, of course. Right, that, that's what I'm saying. Do you think? That. Do you think he's? Fucking Makita knows. But do you think he knows bro. it? I'm saying. Do you think that he might? He know that. So yeah, Seth could raise here. What if Seth like re-raise? If Seth that, raises, that that's why I almost wonder if Makita is going for right. the bet three yeah. bet with just a jack, yeah, right? Sick. That's why I'm saying like, of course, Makita knows that. Makita knows everything I know about short deck plus and like plus, plus a lot, a yeah. lot. <laughs> so. plus four Triton titles, <laughs> right? Yeah. I know. I just this this would be super sick if he gets him to raise and then rips it. That would be like, this would honestly become, yep, like yep. this. This is where it gets very curious. I mean, I, I, I really think there's a good chance he does it because I think he's got to think Seth doesn't have ace jack too much. The flip side is like, here's the flip side. The flip side is they're not super deep here, right? I mean, it's only another 115K. Like, realistically speaking, if Seth never folds a jack but has ace jack even some small percent of the time it's still not worth it to make the play yeah but if they were deeper if this was a cash game i actually think makita would do this play wow. yeah he's doing it anyway I mean, this guy is yeah. a he's a, he's a real sicko dude i'm sorry <laughs> like there's people obviously these guys are great players but there's been a few hands so yeah i told i i told you Seth should just call this so I mean that to me that was a mistake. I mean, see, this is this is, used two or one? this is what illustrates I think so how beautiful yeah. poker is in the game. Like even in hold'em as well, but in these spots, I, and I think it's a lot more defined in short deck, right? Like how the people play, like their pay, certain spots, different yeah. hands, and here you really can kind of narrow down hands and what people yeah, are doing. Yeah, because there's up so many. Deck. There's less hands. Right. I mean, it's it. You know, the game is a simpler game. You're taking 16 cards out of a 52 card deck. So, but, so you can re really narrow things down and uh, get some really precise play. I mean, I love this play this by Makita, and I exciting, thought, like, maybe honestly. he was doing it. And I just feel like, you know, Seth didn't, didn't realize that in the moment, right? Um, and I, I think that's why you have to be careful raising the jack here. This just makes me want to go out, get out there and play. I mean, it's just, ex honestly, it's exciting. Yeah. Chop? Yeah. But this is, the, this is the thing, is that if Seth doesn't fold a jack, then, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. Seth considered it. He went into a time bank. He called. But if Seth doesn't fold a jack, then, then it's sort of a spot where Makita's kind of free rolling himself for that last hundred, right? Because even if Seth doesn't have ace jack very often, who knows, maybe randomly just like 10% of the time he just limps behind, has a bad feeling, whatever it is, right? But... You know, if you're ever getting a jack to fold, now, you know, uh, that's just the math on that play. But I think it's a cool play by Makita. He's a beast. For sure. I'll tell you what's cool. The Triton play, Triton versus a free-to-play blockchain poker game. Ras, we got to see this 
on the big screen, the demo yesterday. I mean, if you can kind of see what's happening there in the lower left, it is, the UI UX is incredible. They got yeah. something very special here and I mean. It looks dope. Check it out at it looks Triton dope. Play Game. You can see that on Twitter. Get videos, highlights, and see some of your favorite players interact, engage, and give their thoughts on it. I know I got my stamp of approval on it. It's sick. And, you know, poker, poker's getting gamified. Listen, I think the gamified thing is kind of the play going forward. Still, for sure. Like right? I mean, owls or something, or four owls. <laughs> listen, all the online stuff that's going on, you know, it's a little dicey out there. And every year that goes by with the big money, but the gamified stuff—I mean, that's always going to be clean. Yeah. So well, listen, poker. That's a good. Poker's it's a good not move. going it's anywhere. Good people place. love. Yeah, people, people love, love poker. It. They love to. They love a little chance, a little luck, you know. And I think that's also you're seeing like progressive. Uh, not. I, I actually, I'm a little shocked they haven't introduced at Triton yet the knockout, the progressive knockouts like that. I think it, it's just like even like in the 100k short deck, you know, if you got like. 25k every time you knock someone out or something right i just i just feel like it's fun to have knockouts i don't know where you stand on that and that's I, it seems like triton doesn't really like doing a bunch of the, those different stuff. kind of stuff yeah. yeah it's clean short deck they're just this is it boom we have short a couple deck, different no things limit. and I we got plo think, for dur just I to do run think over maybe the field a mix between the the games they already have yeah could be fun right because you have guys that come here that play more the short deck and play more the no limit but like what if you know you get, mix it all together like, would that be popular or not? 36. Yeah. But I think part of it, too, is the stops, like, there aren't – it's not like the WSOP. They have, like, 80 tournaments, you know? They're, the, the stops are, like, you know, 5 to 12 based on how long it is. Probably not more than, like, 14. So there isn't, like, a ton of room to do too much because then you're just knocking out, like, a regular tournament. And now you're already mixing it between two, maybe three games. You know, I think that's part of it. But Makita's in, Makita's getting some interesting situations. I mean, this is a pretty easy spot. He's for sure. King. I mean, no one in this table. I should say fortuitous, chips. fortuitous, not yeah, interesting. Yeah. He's getting like some nice spots, and here he is gonna get it in. What did, uh, did everyone acted really fast, right? Seth called. I'm guessing. No, Seth made it 36. And, oh yeah, now he's calling all in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. ace queen suited. Kind of lucky for. Possible. Hello, Makita. That's the board. Back 10, 6, 2 holds. And then whatever happens, about, happens. How about king, uh -huh. jack, 10, 2 hearts, 3 hearts? 2 jacks. Almost. A lot of paint. Picked up now. I mean, he upgrades to the 10. 4 of those yeah. instead of 3 queens. But a big percent dog Ooh, now in the river awesome. now. But that spade now that takes one of those outs away. <laughs> Got three tens, one card to come. Oh! Wow, Nikita. No change on his expression at all. Pretty <laughs> good. I got something going here, so is a. He called the nine of diamonds on the river. Yeah. Seth ate his Wheaties and wow. is, is, is calling cards. That was. Makita had zero expression change on his face as the card came out, actually. That was maybe the craziest thing about the whole hand <laughs> like literally looked the same before Two like in the five. second before and the second after the card came out no micro flinch nothing just his stare a little like half smile that card I, came I out still half smiling yeah, you with yeah. i think ice might ice might run through that man's veins yeah well let's take a look here there's danny tang that is going to be the next feature Richard Young got a second this week. Elton Tang, we got Ferdinand Pucher was out there mixing up on the soccer field today. Danny Tang as well. There was 23 guys. Everyone had white, blue, or black on. Danny Tang had just a bright red shirt on. <laughs> he was running around trying to run the point. Had the Ronaldo jersey on. <laughs> just, it was all red or white. You know, no Danny's red. Fun, yeah, he's Danny's he's out fun. there. He's the man. And Danny is going to be coming to the feature win for you. 38 blinds. He had a little bit of a ride, a roller coaster. Oh my God, the Roy Cow experience. I mean, it's it's going the wrong way. We're down to 770. Paul, Still chip leader, Mr. Paul. Yeah. Didn't take long to rebound. And he has got 952 with that Lammer, 852 plus the 100K Lammer. Brewer, 77 Annie's champion. Couple champs this week at the table. Seth Davies hit gin on the river there. The 
the specific 10. Anytime you're down to one card, specific suits are not in play. It's tough, but he did it. And Makita going for his fifth title. I mean, if Makita gets five titles before someone gets four, I mean, that's just, this is like Darren Elias at the WPT. It's just an absolute blowout. He is, he is taking names. Asante Jiang, new addition to our table. Cool. Yep, comes in. Like, here Kido we go. with the dusty one right here, the 10 6 suited. He's got the 9% equity five ways. Some hopes and some dreams. Makita with the 10 6 suited, clubs. Nobody really hits it big on this flop. I mean, Brewer has the ace and Soiza, the gutter. Both of them might stab at this. They're the ones most likely to have something big, having flopped an EP, most likely to be trapping a big hand, like ace, ace king, ace queen, aces, queens, which are the biggest hands here, obviously. Um, Feels like everyone behind is going to get out. Got a little heads up. This would be an interesting one for Soiza to barrel. It's blocking ace, king, ace, ten. It's going to be hard to get Brewer off an ace now, though, so. Yeah, Brewer. Asserts himself here at the feature table. No stranger to titles. Got one Triton title, plenty others. Should he three barrel? He would be pretty likely to, to win. This could be a tough call for Brewer on the end. I mean, realistically speaking, Brewer is going to have three aces with a kicker that doesn't even play, and he'll be bluff catching. Obviously, an ace blocker being one of the best for bluff catches, but Soiza can have a ton of hands that beat him. Just any ace is full, ace king, queens or sevens full. Maybe he doesn't play sevens under the gun. But let's see if Soizen was going three streets with this or or he's one and done. Ooh. Man, well, if Soiza was playing the three street here, it's not gonna work anymore. That's that's a key card. Brewer's gonna yeah. feel much more confident now. I mean second knots, he has to call. I mean, he's beating Queens full even, which is would value bet. Yeah, so Soiza is just two street, two street white flag. And uh, Brewer's going to find the confidence to value bet this. It's interesting what sizing he goes with because he's in a spot where he has a really strong hand, but what is Soiza going to call him with? Does Soiza check three aces if so what what will three aces call a hand like ace jack ace king ace ten would he check an under full would he go ahead and bet that for value interesting spot brewer's trying to work it out i mean the give ups he's not so concerned with because like a hand like soiza has is not calling a bet so it's not really a concern to get paid by a hand like like king king ten king jack jack ten So yeah, he's goes big and sees that quick release, probably realizing his opponent was betting some gutter or something, just not have yeah. a big decision there. If ace, ace king or ace jack is gonna mull over it. We did preview that table you are gonna be seeing coming up. Danny Tang off a second, trying to get that win. He's gotten another second. Hey, seven figure score, see what he can do at the feature on day one. We could take a look at the leaderboard here. Seth Davies in the command after that monstrous 10 he did call the nine of diamonds as well it's been been flinging chips in playing pots and getting it done michael soiza right there in second as well as winford you hanging on 142 still has a bullet behind that is a lammer we are going to be uh taking a look and, and getting the tables re-acclimated re-situated danny tang gonna come in as we said and fernand putra as well as richard young who has a second so a couple second place finishers come to the table this week Ras 
I know they're looking for a trophy, though. And if you were going to win a trophy, there's two on this schedule that are in particular of interest. The main event and the main event. This We saw the winner, Henrik Hecklin, take down the No Limit 100K Euro. Now we have the Short Deck 100K and Rast. Any any thoughts there? I mean, the chips were flying. Was there anything that really surprised you? Not particularly. I mean, a lot of uh, kind of all-in spots. I mean, that hand between Makita and Seth was a very cool one. I love that small bet to three bet, uh, knowing that Seth has very little ace jack and yep. he has much more of them. I mean, almost got Seth to lay it down. You know, I mean, the other interesting this point in the tournament is even just going beyond our table, right? Uh, looking at the rest of the chip stacks. I mean, we had the Roy Cow experience. You know, the man was up well over a million. He's back down to 800-something thousand, still kind of with the chip lead. Paul Foy making moves. Isaac Haxton, it looks like, uh, looking at the chip stack, has just kind of laid claim, probably got a double or something. You know, he's second in chips now. Actually, technically first, if you include his two laminars. You know, Wyken Young, Danny Tang, Jason Kuhn. Ivan Liao. So, I mean, there's some huge, huge names that are at this top of this leaderboard. Yeah. Danny Tang is on his way up on the rise. And after the break, you will be a lot of seeing names, Danny huh? Tang. I'm going to be hopping out. I'm going to come back in later. No, you're going away? I'm going to, for a bit, just a little um, bit. Yeah, Henry Kilbane will join. Guys, stay, stay tuned. We'll see you uh, shortly after this break. We double up on everything. Come play now on GG Poker.
Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Jeff Gross has bowed out, and I'm joined by my good friend Henry Kilbane. We're ready to go do some short deck. How's it going? It's going well. And the fact that JG is in here, you know, after today's 25K, I credit to the man. Just stepping out into the booth after, you know, coming in eighth earlier on today. I respect that. You yeah. guys, you just, on you the know. Bubble. Listen, yeah. you got to do both. We came out here to do some work, but we got to fire them, fire away in the tournaments. Listen, we're back. We got a new feature table here. We got a whole new cast of characters. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to the old ones, Makita, Seth, etc. And now we're going, looking here at the app, we see Richard Young, Elton Sang, Danny Tang, Lun Loon, and Ferdinand Putra. Uh, unfortunately, not a ton of chips, kind of like at this stage of the tournament, personally, just as a fan, and I'm a fan just like you guys of the great game of poker, kind of more fun getting some post-flop, which happens when you have a lot of chips. This is probably going to be a lot of pre-flop action here. Um, Danny, Danny Tang, a lot of chips, but unfortunately, everyone else pretty short, so... You yeah, know. Look, looks like it's going to just be... Well, a lot of pre-flop rejamming spots, especially for Ferdinand Putra and uh, Lun Loon. Have you watched either of them play up until now, Ferdinand or Lun? Uh, uh, just a little bit. Actually, both of them were up there last night playing cash games. Okay. Up on that special sixth floor suite here with the outdoor table and all that uh, here at the hotel. Um, so Ferdinand Putra, I haven't really seen on stream yet this trip. Uh, and, and Lun Loon just like very briefly and mostly off camera at other tables. Yeah. But um, yeah, all, I mean everybody here a staple of Triton. So I mean this this should be a fun table. I think we'll get to see a lot of good short deck ac deck action. All these very experienced short deck players. Um, none of them right now, as you can see, going back to the app over here. Oh, this. Sorry, this uh, table doesn't have many chips. The only one up here, Danny Tang, we can see him fourth. But uh, see Rui Cow leading the pack. Listen, full Rui Cow experience. The man just was boom. Every it seemed like there was a period where every update from Jeff Gross and it was another hundred thousand to his stack. He made it up to one point two something plus that Lamner, but you know he's down to eight thirty. But uh, insane. I mean, he could be back up to one point five or out and rebuying during this next hour or two. You never know. <laughs> Right, Isaac Haxton hasn't been on the leaderboard. He's up in second. He's he's made it just a run recently. And Paul Foy, who's having a really great uh, run in this this Triton Madrid, got his first title. Uh, would be happy to add to that right here. And he's he's quite For the sure. short deck player himself. So um, very strong top three up there, I think. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's the main event of the 100K short deck. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah, head on down to the main stage and. Well, allow these five gentlemen to entertain us in the form of some high stakes action. And you mentioned that Lun Loon was up there on the you know sixth floor, a little balcony poker table, some late night action with the boys. Would I be right in saying that that game up there is you know? Well, there were three games up there. The buy-in is last night is most likely more than the buy into this tournament. No, there were three games. It looked like there was 100, 200, 400, no limit. There was $500 Annie short deck, and there was a 500, 1K, 2K, no limit. So, I mean, that 5, 1, 2, no <laughs> limit was... Like also one blight. <laughs> that was the big game. Do you mind me asking who was in that game? I'm going to... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, you know, whatever. Just, I'll just say guys that were up there. I'm not going to say who's in what game, but... Uh, but yeah, some big names. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, everybody up there were the guys playing here in these in the tournaments, right? Yeah. It's not like you know there were some some guys from out of town. I mean, it was all the guys who've been playing <coughs> these Triton tournaments. But respect a little bit of the cash game privacy. Might say, oh, this guy's up there playing that, eh, but not who's in what game, and leave that to the boys.
Danny's shooting it up. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, obviously, that's the race call versus those short stacks. Might not, oh. might not call a Richard Young all in though for 300k. I would imagine he probably wouldn't. I mean, being this far off of, you know, the money bubble, even talking about making it to the money, it's not like Danny can just run over this table at these short stacks. Yeah, you know, take the, the rejam spots. Oh, of course not. But something I'm starting to uh, perceive about these short deck events already that's kind of actually makes me like what Roy Cow does a bit. It's like, like when you get to the bubble in short deck, you just get some spots where if you have a lot of chips at your table, you just get to like, <coughs> I mean, four letter word on people, right? And I mean, just, okay, take it, okay. And I just remember one time, I don't know <coughs> if you were in the booth with me, but the Roy Cow experience on the bubble was he just blindly could go all in with whatever he had and like everybody was folding. That's like how much ICM there was. And like that spot has to be worth so much money that it might actually be worth it to gamble early in the tournament in order to be like mm. more likely to be in that spot, right? So yeah, you take some definitely zero EV, but maybe even potentially like slightly minus chip EV gamble spots to like get huge stacks. Because if you have a huge stack on the bubble, you just get that spot that's worth so much like late in the tournament when, you know, I mean, that's worth even more than early. Well, Anyways, here we are, GG Poker. Yeah, talking to gambling it up. Gamble it up. Girls, or taking the zero EV lines, if you will, as I know many of you do. Look at these, these emojis include. can't even believe it. Daniel's like, oh my God, gamble so much. Yes, give me the money. Elky, yeah, pray, pray one time. Oh, I can't believe you're praying for one time. Elky pointed to this guy, got my one time. The emojis, they tell a story. Okay. You just have to put your ear down to the table and listen. Get the Oreos out. Yeah, you can use Triton 2022 as your sign up deposit bonus code. No customer. No customer nope. announced. And I mean, Picture with three side. pretty happy to get that through <laughs> with pocket nines. Don't really want customers. How much? Elton. <coughs> With the cut off limp. 70 antis. Danny deciding <coughs> to just knuckle back the jacks against one of the larger stacks at the table. What's a popping top pair and a gut shot. Danny getting out flopped. does have the Jack of Diamonds. Oh. Elton, not going anywhere just yet. 61k out there. Yeah, I feel like Danny's probably going to try to I mean, he has a hand he can think about bluffing with. Double blocking the straight, blocking flushes. 
always going to have outs to win the pot. That said, he has some showdown potentially. I mean, feels like a hand, if he was going to tell the bluff story, maybe he would want to tell it by double barreling. M maybe now he just checks back and hopes the jacks are good. But it does turn out that against a hand just like Elton's specific hand, this line could be quite effective. The old bet check bet line. Yeah. Has that ever been a bluff in the history of poker? Oh yeah, it is. Again, good players, it can be a bluff quite often. Uh, uh. But, I mean, the thing is against a hand like Queen X. Oh, and Elton? Hello. Yeah. Cheeky Stupid. little hero. Cool. Yeah. I almost want to raise you. <laughs> you raise me, I back, ra back raise you. <laughs> well, well, I was thinking maybe I can just call. <laughs> Definitely good enough to call. Just call. Uh -huh. Good enough to call. That story doesn't make Crazy much thing. sense. Well, the thing about checking turn to then back raise river. I mean. yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Jack. thing about Danny's. No. Bluff queen is jack. if you can't get queen jack to fold, it uh, probably wasn't going to be a very successful bluff. It's basically the, almost the next best hand Valley from Valley pocket jacks. Valley Valley. <laughs> too thin. That's why yeah. I said too thin. I mean, Elton's got some poker talent, man. He's been playing huge games forever. So. Had a very successful cash game career and even doing quite well in tournaments nowadays. Mm. We go cut off versus dealer button. I mean, Lun Loon not almost never has an ace here, so this is this is a kind of goofy bet by him. I almost wonder if Danny just because he doesn't really have a hand good enough to check call, like does he put in a cheeky little check raise here? Because I mean, yeah, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Oh, he doesn't do it, right? Like, what is Loon betting? Is he betting a king? And it, would he bet call a king? Right. If you're Danny, you don't have to check raise at all. You could just make it like 30 or 35 or 40k and just fold if the guy jams. I mean, so is it safe to say that Lun's gonna have more weak ace x and Danny's gonna he has be zero ace x in my opinion? What cutoff? Is Danny's 5k and the cutoff limped. He's just jamming all ace x, like 100 percent. He just never has an ace. I mean, uh, right. Maybe. I just saw how shallow. Yeah, it was. he's yeah, super yeah. shallow. Like that's that bet makes zero sense, honestly. Right. So if if you're Danny there, I think you just put in a cheeky little check raise. Yeah, yeah I mean, because he's gonna have stone air a bunch that f folds to near min check raises. I like, you know what I'm saying. So if he continues, you can just just be done with it. Yeah, I didn't even realize just how short he was. Chat's having a huge conversation about poker versus chess. Do we want to go down that rabbit hole in the booth? I mean, we can a little bit. Yeah? You know, listen, guys, poker is a game of similar complexity to chess. Like, if you look at, like, the total state space of, of uh, how large the game is from a game state space standpoint and whatever... My understanding is poker and chess are of similar orders of magnitude. Right? They both put an emphasis on different kinds of skills. Right? I mean, chess is a game where you can see the complete board. Um, <laughs> poker's obviously not. You know, one has a luck element and the other doesn't. But from a difficulty standpoint, that doesn't matter. And actually, that's what makes poker a great game to gamble on and why you see stuff like these tournaments. Mm. You're never going to see that in chess. Just like 40 guys come together and put up 100K.
It's like, who's going to put up 100K to play Magnus Carlsen? Like, no one's going to do that. Maybe, yeah. like, one guy in the world. And, like, and, and he would only do it for, you know, he's one of the top five, and he's in part doing or it. Or for clout. Yeah. yeah, for clout. Yeah, yeah. You know? Brand but, building or awareness. So, so I have a question for you then, Brian, because, like, I'm completely clueless, by the way. So th this isn't me, like, trying to come from a place of authority, but... Uh, would, it, would I be safe in assuming that it's a lot harder to improve at chess than it is at poker? Like, say say you're playing like two 15s online, right? And you surround yourself with the likes of Jason Kuhn and whatnot. Somehow, you know, you, you make your way into that circle. You have a lot more information. Within the space of two, three years, it is very likely that you are going to be playing 10Ks in a much higher level, right? Whereas in chess in two, three years, even if you've got Magnus Carlsen helping you out one, two, three hours a week, you're not going to be anywhere yeah. near that level. Let me say why I think that is. Okay. I think it's because chess is a game that has been studied much longer than poker. That makes and sense. also chess has been relatively solved much for a much longer of time by poker and the tools available are much better. Like anyone can go online and get a computer that plays like infinitely better than even Magnus. That would just crush Magnus Carlsen. Yeah. It's easy to find programs like that that are crushing the best poker po like chess player today. The te best chess player is like no chance. And that's not even like the best chess program today. Just like a standard one. And so you know, you so you can study it. So chess theory has evolved quite a bit and, and, and a lot of people are playing it, so it's harder to get better. I think the thing with poker is I mean, there really wasn't even tools to like really study how to play poker mathematically from a game theory standpoint that are any good more than like really five years ago, right? So I just think the level that people are playing poker is much worse than the level that people are playing chess. So because of that, um, it's like much easier to improve relative to the field, right? That's what I think part of the answer to that is. And also the luck factor kind of obfuscates kind of how someone's doing relative to the situation, right? Like in chess, if you have somebody who's gotten better but is still much worse than a grandmaster, they're just always still losing. Mm. But in poker, if you have someone who's improved quite a bit but they're still like much worse than a good player, but like let's say in a field where the best player equivalent to a grandmaster or whatever and this other guy is just like a master or an IM, but then they're playing with a bunch of amateurs, like both will still do quite well because they're not playing heads up. They're playing at a full table with a bunch of other players who might be worse than both of them. And their EV like won't be that different just because the one is better than the other. It's not a heads up experience, right? So I think there's a number of factors that make it different, but it's not necessarily because, oh, hey, poker's like so much easier than chess, right? I, there, I mean, let's look at it. There aren't really computers today that in a lot of the games like necessarily play better than people. Right? Mm. Like, I've never heard of a program that plays stud high better than people. So. Triggered a lot of people, Rust. Always the case when we open a can of worms. Listen, chat, you want to have a constructive con conversation, feel free, you know? Anyway. <laughs> Anyways. Did I trigger people? Oh, dude, massively. Yeah, yeah. Twi Twitch is... Uh, oh, Twitch. I was yeah. just looking on YouTube. <laughs> I think the uh, my favourite one had to be... And then on the river, I have to, I have to bluff. Uh, I gotta open I don't Twitch even too. No, honestly, don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, calling chess relatively solved is preposterous. Apparently. Listen, it's... <laughs> okay, it's obviously not <laughs> solved, <laughs> but from the sense that a computer can calculate just what, like, almost <laughs> the best play is. You really go, you <laughs> Basically, instantly, <laughs> to the point where even the best human player in the world has zero chance against a good computer, right? I mean, am I wrong about that? I mean, this just isn't true in poker. Especially in like dynamic multi-way situations and, and games that aren't no limit hold'em that haven't been studied as much. I mean, like, my understanding is the best computers play like the equivalent of like mid three thousands or like four thousand, and like Magnus is 
still in the high 2Ks. Like, he's just getting smashed by, like, the best computers in the world. Yeah. Magnus Carlsen, best chess player of all time, getting smashed by computers that make the decisions instantly. It's just that, that's, not, that's not the case in poker. Well, wait, what do you mean? Like, Fader on these boys and getting smashed by Monker. Sure, Monker doesn't have everything just insta-computed, does it? Well, it, it does. Okay, for all the games? It's no, just doing it in for, like for pot limit, order. deuce to seven, triple draw, well, and no. limit stud high. Like you can't move the goal, the goal posts. It's like, not though. That's poker. Okay, Poker's not like sure. no limit hold'em. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking from a hold'em right. point of well, view. Well, there we go. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Alpha zero. That's the computer. Uh, someone, thank you. It's breezy. I mean, Alpha zero is smashing Magnus Carlson a hundred out of a hundred right. times and like making the decisions instantly. Maybe you'll be angry. There's a chance you'll be angry. Is Munker doing it in tournaments too with ICM? I mean, it could be making mistakes huge enough f for ICM considerations that it's still losing to the best tournament players. No, just take HRC and Munker, sort of like, put, put the two together. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Tank taking the spot against Lon Loon's Ace King, and well himself a gut shot flush draw and a jack or a nine so we give him the best hand what is the name of the twitch cat what's it what, twitch chat is what? it uh triton yeah triton poker oh yeah honestly i've been doing that for five years <laughs> twitch yeah twitch uh yeah, oh, sometimes Keep you up really really sure you won, right? Do you even yeah, Twitch, bro? The sure. answer is no. Do you even <laughs> Twitch, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Unknown. Can't believe I read the flip. <laughs> Can't believe <laughs> you want to flip, flip, my guy. 150? 138. Thank you. Listen, I'm not trying to say poker is harder than chess. It's just that the games are of somewhat similar Wait, complexity. Me? And if that wasn't true, That's what you get. then... <laughs> Listen, more money can be made in poker than chess. You don't think, like, people have been trying to create AI both for general application, because poker AI is uh, something that solves poker type AI problems is way more applicable to real world problem solving with hidden information and stuff, as well as the fact that you could make a bunch of money. And like, this is, we're in 2022. Like, when did Deep Blue beat Gary Kasparov? Like, 25, 30 years ago? And, and for a long time now, chess programs have just smashed people. I, I know that you guys in the chat want to just act like chess is this guy. Like, listen, chess isn't even the most complicated game that we play. Like, look it up, Go for example, which is an Asian game, is like way more complicated than chess is. Okay, go, way more complicated than chess. It's like people hold chess up to be the standard of like, oh, the most complicated, the highest form of intellect that like humans achieve because you're a good chess player. Like, I'm sorry, it's not. It's not even the top five most complicated games that humans play, sorry. And, and, and you wanna doubt me, go to game complexity. Read the the, just Google the page Game Complexity, go to Wikipedia, and look at the list of complicated games. Poker isn't actually on there, but I've read comparisons before, and chess isn't even making like the top 10 in Game Complexity. Stratego is a more complicated game than chess. There you go. What else is complicated? Finding your way back to the registration desk, courtesy of being KO'd by one of the Triton co-founders. Richard Young, he does have some change, or did he just... Oh yeah, he just won. Did he just rebuy immediately? Wow, that's gangster. I've literally never seen that happen before. So he busts, doesn't even leave the table. Oh, I know why. No, that was his this, laminar, right? That was his yeah, of three course. stacks. Yeah. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> oh, okay, so every, like, yeah. Okay, strategies vary. Some people just buy him for the 300k, others do 100k at a time.
Like, and I'm not even trying to. Oh, it's not like I hate chess. Chess is a beautiful <laughs> game. A, a lot of games are beautiful games, right? I mean, backgammon. Backgammon is technically a game of a reasonably similar complexity to chess. Beautiful game, has some luck. But yeah, Go. You want the most complicated game humans really play? Go's up there. Certainly is. As yep. is Danny Tang on this leaderboard. 118 antis. Richard Young just. Well, I was about to say a few pips behind, but quite a significant drop off between Danny and Richard. 37 bigs. Ferdinand Putra with the rebuy. 19 antis. Right, and here we go. A little multi-way pot, unless Danny Tang wants to get frisky. I saw Charlie Carroll in the chat as well. Charlie, why, why are you not here? I I heard. Why are you not with us in Madrid? Tax, tax issue uh, for English players potentially. I don't know. I am in the chat, but. Uh, Apparently, it's not updating due to some random Wi-Fi issue for like five minutes now. Oh, chat is coming up with some new topics for us to discuss, but about 95% of the topics that have been listed would get us swiftly fired. Which, at this rate, I feel like the chat would be rooting for. Let's just all enjoy some Triton Poker Series, high stakes, short deck, anti only main event action, boys and girls. Well, here we go, pocket queens. Pocket queens for Elton. He's uh, laying, laying the bear trap, and it is going to come in here. I mean, Lun Loon probably pretty happy to just raise and go for it at this point. Top two pair. Pretty good hand, and it is going to be grim for him. I mean, I think we're basically seeing his equity come down to runner, runner, flush. Oh. Yeah. Well, talk about Modern day cooler. Top set. Right. Elton Tang. Lun He's <laughs> running tens or running clubs. <laughs> the best spot to be in. That's 4% equity. <laughs> wow. That's the first step to how you get it done. Halfway there. Five outs once. Goes from 4% to 18%. Turn to river. Oh. No dice. That would have been a dirty oh, yeah. one. I mean, I know it's the, oh, it's short deck, but <laughs> even in short deck, that was a grim one. Elton absolutely oh, flying. So final bullet for Lun Loon, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
right, Elton with a nice little hand. <laughs> Limp it in, and he is going to get some action here. Looks like, I mean, this is probably going to be a three-way pot. I mean, Lund just jams it in, and Putra calls, and I think Elton probably going to be okay enough with this hand three ways, maybe. I mean, I guess you'd prefer the cards to be a little lower, but Lund can definitely have some, like, a small, maybe even, like, Queen Jack. I feel like Elton oh. probably finds a three-way call, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's kind of up against really like Queen, 10, almost six, the worst like combination, ace-king and ace-jack, so just like you know? Queen, 10, double domination. Queen. He's still 18%. <laughs> I like that. DD. Huh? What do you want more, king or jack? <laughs> Maybe three hearts. <laughs> <laughs> I love having oh, Elton at the table, it's just so entertaining. Oh. It's going to be pretty tough to dig his way out yeah, of this one. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good flop for Lun. Oh, eight for a chop. Eight for a chop announced. Always have outs. <laughs> top, top, yeah. A lot of eights in the deck. Ooh, oh yeah. Ooh. Ooh. no dice. <laughs> Regards to chopping, but Ferdinand Putra spikes <laughs> the two outer on the river for almost the full triple. And then you give him five thousand back. Oh no 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 no! Give me back. Well, that's almost five million in the prize pool here. <coughs> <coughs> Still a long old way to go though. Wow, lucky triple up huh? And from a tournament's perspective here, Isaac Haxton has moved into the chip lead. 940 <laughs> with double lamners. <laughs> what do I want, King or Jack? Uh, oh, I need King and Jack, then I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> then I beat his Jack, his King. <laughs> uh. Elton always having a good time. Wow, Ike is, uh, yeah, you're, I mean, absolutely flying. See how many players. So out of the field of 27, how many players do you think have double laminas left? Without, without looking, just you know, just a guess. Um, double laminas. Don't you get those if you rebuy too, right? So I would guess uh, probably been a couple rebuys. So I'm gonna go with five. Very close. You almost had six, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, six. Damn it. <laughs> six double lammers, and as Russ mentioned, it's Ike out in front with the chip lead. I actually only see five. Um, now that I'm looking. Che Wei Lin, Santi Jiang, Devoris. Yeah, Kuhn. I mean, one might have been lost. Nice. The time. Here we go. Call. And Danny didn't want to just oh, rip it in. Oh, oh, sign here. Hey, Would have been a fun oh, spot oh. to maybe do it. Check. A lot of incentive to want to clear out the riffraff here with Jax. Don't want the overcarts to call. Yeah. So. Why, Denny? Do you think Elton would be as entertaining in the commentary booth, or does he need to be out there in the thick of it? I I think he would be entertaining in the commentary booth. Yeah. I think that man likes gambling oh, we'll though. Oh, we'll that okay, would nine. be surprised if he wanted to do too much commentary. But wow. you never know. It'd just be pure FOMO, wouldn't it? He'd just be yeah. sat here and he'd yeah. just be itching to get out there. He loves he loves being in the action. He took a little hiatus from poker as well, like me. But now he's back. And I was talking to him the other day. He's just loving. 
<laughs> Loving playing a lot again. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> yeah, same thing. Yeah, same deal. I don't know, maybe, maybe he would enjoy doing commentary. They call out, I have to say. I don't think it's an easy call with people, you know? But. Those of you just joining us, where have you been? Triton Super High Roller Series Madrid. Feels like it's coming to an end, but we've still got a lot of coverage for the next few days. Feels like it's going to be hard for Danny to get any action here. Pretty dry board. He has the most aces as the first person to limp. Putra floats the gutter. See if Danny checks to him. Check. Yeah, I mean, that's a card that obviously if Putra has gutters, there's three of them, seven, eight, seven, nine, and eight, nine, and that fills in one. Putra bets here. This bet could accomplish getting overcard hands to fold should Danny have one of them. Could set up a multi-street bluff should Putra decide now that he's called he's not good. <coughs> and now actually the 7 is kind of a good card for Putra to bluff. He has no showdown. And uh, he's Jack. blocking full houses. And now it's like extra likely that the low card, he has a straight, right? Because if he had 7, 8, 9, 8, and 7, 9, actually two of those three hands made straights. So would have been cool to see a bluff from him. I think he has a, maybe his like best, <laughs> realistic, <laughs> it's like best realistic combo to bluff with. Blocking the ace 9, the ace 7. And, uh, you know, if you're value betting a straight. You're blocking 9, 8, 7, 8 as well. Yeah. On the turn, I'm like, yeah, and they're, they're also hands that you're kind of repping, right? Any of those hands there. So, you know, a, a bet size that, that makes sense for hands that have wheels. So, feel like feel like that was a missed bluff opportunity, but uh, I'm sure there'll be more. Man, just trying to get a good feel for the equities in the short deck. It's been, a, it's been a fun ride over the last 10 days. Purely from an observational point of view. Just watching these guys play at a high level. Much love to you guys and girls at home. Thanks for keeping us company. Got over 4,600 of you on YouTube and Twitch. For those you don't know already, my name's Henry Kilbane alongside Brian Rast, who has not only come out of retirement, if you will, it's hiatus, it's been recently <sighs> blessing our broadcasts with. Well, not just poker experience, is it, Rusty? I mean, you've been coming in here, dropping some uh, some life wisdom that you can only get from battling over the years. 
Well, I would hope at 40 years old I've picked up <laughs> one or two things. <coughs> but uh, what was the, the, what was the dumbest me. thing you ever did when you were my age? I'm 27. Mm. Did you ever, like, you buy like? a Lambo? <laughs> like 50% of your net worth? No, no, no. I never did anything like that. Careful, my friend. Careful. Um, I, did, I did blow some money on other, some other stuff, like going out, but not like just like one purchase. Not just one purchase? Yeah. Like. What is that love mean? <laughs> well, that's not necessarily a dumb thing either. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't know. I would have to think about it. Ferdinand with I feel like I've done plenty of dumb things when I when I was drunk, probably when I was younger. <laughs> but we're gonna just leave it at that. Alcohol's legal, but I feel like it, <laughs> it's just like Don't, <laughs> don't come on. We're not opening up more cans yeah. of it. I mean there's Gonna get everyone spamming 420 blazer in the chat. I mean, people definitely do way less dumb things on on that particular substance than alcohol. That's for sure. Hundred percent. No sub rear boss. I didn't buy a Lambo. Okay. In fact, for a little while early in my career, I just had like a, a Lexus for quite a few years until after I won the 500K. That's when I bought a Tesla. It's a nice upgrade. Yeah. Put solar panels on my roof, driving electric cars. We're going to be zero energy mark. That was my goal. Care about the environment, zero energy mark. So I contribute in Why solar power what I take out, both for how home energy and for my automobiles, for my wife and me. But wow, Petra calling it off with the Jack <laughs> 10. <laughs> you hit a king on the roof. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, I call you with 10 high. Wow. Big call. Big call. I mean, Petra hoping that. <laughs> Danny's got like nine seven, <laughs> queen nine, jack nine. Yeah. Maybe maybe something like eight eight X, eight nine eight seven. Yeah, eight well. ten I guess. I mean we're chopping with eight ten with the king on the river. Now they're playing four-handed, huh? Fold, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. We have a new chip leader, but not including the Lamners. But Phil Ivy. Philip, no home Jerome Ivy up there. I mean, this is shaping up to be quite the tournament. Yeah, scanning through the field. 46 total entries, so the under 50 thing, I think, going to get blown out because we still have this and another level. And our own Danny Tang here on the feature table, after winning some of these pots, is now up there. He's listed as second, technically has more chips than Phil Ivey, including that Lamner. And the actual first is still Isaac Haxton with his double Lamner situation. Danny Tang sticking with his limp-only guns. I think we're going to hear from Richard Young, however. And this is part of the reason why you can start to discount the ace jacks after the limps. But maybe not with Richard. Maybe with Something Seth. But not with Richard. Ace jack lets it go. This is one that could have gotten Makita into trouble if had that same hand been played. But 
Maybe Makita doesn't make the same play versus Richard Young. We'll never know. Spots like that do not come up very often, do they? I feel like the majority of spots that we see are still relatively new to, to the, well, to most people at home at least. That's why I just give these guys so much credit because understanding how to deny equity correctly, understanding how difficult it is to lack bluffs in a lot of areas and yet still be creative enough to find said bluffs. It's, um, it just goes to show the caliber of player coming to these Triton events. Certainly. Speaking of bluffs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Danny checks down the nut low. 10, 10, 10, 9, Jack. <laughs> you can't have a lower hand than that. Jack 7 and Jack 8. Shot day is a wiki wish. Shot day is a wiki wish. No? Shot day is a wiki wish. Is a what? Wiki wish. Yeah, Danny asked him five times and I still don't know what he said. <laughs> Santi Jiang repping the local Spaniards. With the open rip, going to get round to Richard Yong. May look him up here with Ace Jack, five-handed. Yeah, I mean, the ante's pretty big. It's not that much. And you're very happy. You're pretty happy to see against some hands. Santi can definitely have especially suited aces that are have lower kickers. Maybe even some hands like Queen oh, Jack set, or Jack set, 10 set, set. or King Jack. So. No, obviously Ace Queen or Ace King as well, but Queens. Oh. But yeah, Ace Jack, pretty, just a pretty strong hand. And oh. pretty strong flop. Uh, Santi drawing to just four outs. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. It's going to be a quick departure from the feature table. He's only here for a little bit. But it looks like lost a bullet, implying he has more bullets. Yay. Let's go. I think he still has. He had two bullets, and now he's got one. Tom Dwan, 640,000. Mate, can you imagine? Just one. Ike, Trent. Ivy, Danny, Dwan. Yeah. Paul. Roy Cow. Could be a Legends only final table. I mean, I remember. Chat, what was that online documentary or you saw that like YouTube series where Rui Cow showed up on a couple of occasions? I want to say it came from like the World Series of 2008, 2009. A couple of big French hitters back in the day that were battling in the nosebleeds on full tilt. Oh. Maybe one of the best poker documentaries out there, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm, it, this is a filmed documentary. Yeah, I know the chat's going to help me out. They always do. I'm not exactly doing uh, the best job at the scrum. No, it wasn't, it wasn't two months, two million. It was a different one. It was following a high-stakes French pro around. 
Nosebleed, that's it. Honestly. Yeah, nosebleed. You win. That was amazing. So it looks like Santi just decided to take both uh, of his lamblers. Uh, oh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, what he might be thinking here is... I should just fold it. It sounds like a, a man who's ready to rebuy if he busts, right? That's why you do it. Like, you're like, okay, well, now if I double, I get 400 instead of, you know, I get extra. And if I bust, I, I can get back in with 300K. Yeah, it's even got a rating on IMDb. Uh, 7.8. Nosebleed. Yeah, 2014. I, I don't think I've ever heard of this. Oh. I think you'd, you'd actually enjoy it. And yeah, apparently... Uh, they're Ollie. Spanish, not... Oh, it's about Alex... Not French, I apologise. Yeah. What do you call Oh wow, yeah. I should watch this. Yeah, I remember Rui making an appearance or two. Some of the uh, meetups in Vegas. I'm telling you, Roy Cow is a, a long time legend. Elton didn't want to let it go. Tight full. Tight full. Mm. Things are the goal. Santi Jang is turning it up. This is a man with uh, places to go. Oh. This is a man that is going to take oh. the higher variant spots that most would pass up on. And Right now, yes. Right now, Looks like he's ready to try to get a stack. Is this the last? Oh no. Oh, looks like rebuy's over. Is that true? It says this is the 816 level. Oh no, 612. Yeah, this is the last level. How much is he playing? Yeah. Yeah, this is a man who who would like to not have like to have more chips. I mean, let's see if he goes for it now with the queen nine off. Two and one. Okay, no. That would have been some pure, <laughs> pure gambling there. He just ships in the queen. <laughs> uh, I mean, in a hundred k too, hundred k rebuy. That's like, let's go. So with that in mind, I expect this level to be plentiful in regards to all-ins. I mean, we've already had our fair share, but... Well, listen, not everybody is ready just to gamble and, and rifle in another hundred. So for a second, I thought maybe Santi Jiang was that guy, but I don't know. I mean, whatever. He had some pretty good hands. King Jack off. He's just taking slightly high variance lines. But listen, jamming the queen nine off here, that's when you're showing a commitment to that strategy. Oh, and Danny. Oh, a cheeky little double gutter. The, o the only double gutter, yeah? Yeah. The only... Good draw on the board, and he makes a go at it. Not raising to fold there. Pretty much raise, you pretty much got to go with it. If you put that much in, I mean, he gets two parries close to flipping. So. I like that play, Danny Tang. I like that play. Oh. 
And it's been very solid. All in. All in. Since I jumped in the broadcast booth. It's going to get a count here. Uh, if there's oh wow. ever a player to look up. I mean, it has looked like he's playing fast recently, hasn't it? Yeah, on somewhat lighter side in the, over the kit. Yeah, over the course of the last five hands or so. Does let it go. Jank. I only dumped that whole time. Third time lucky. <laughs> Got a couple of jams through up to 270k. <laughs> oi oi. Chris Brewer with the swag coming over to the feature table. How about that swag? M88.com, one of our proud sponsors, providing some of the most competitive sportsbook selections and has some of the largest collection of casino games. Again, you can head on over to M88 Mansion. Not only the official sponsor of Triton, by the way, Triton Madrid, it's also the official sponsor of La Liga. For the football fans out there. Yeah. Some of the most immersive live dealer experience. I've got some fun stories of poker players, you know, just spinning it up with the live dealer. Oh, yeah. Oh, mate. <laughs> you like, you share an Airbnb, you know, you go to like an EPT or a Triton or wherever, and you, you just share an Airbnb with some friends. And yeah, there are a couple of people that, you know, you bust a 5K, you bust a 10K, and in order to wind down in the evening, after a long day, you just get the iPhone out and start, you know, $100, $100 a hand, 200 a hand, yeah, depending on how you rolled. Not me. Too rich for my blood. And spun it up. Oh, wait, you're actually reminding me of one of the dumbest things I've done. <laughs> <Now. laughs> how, so how long ago was this? I never really, man, this was like 15 or 16 years ago. Oh, so, so yeah, like the dumbest age you could possibly yeah. be. Because like, when you're 25... Even now, like 27, I feel like I still do so much dumb stuff. But when you're 25, your ego has separated you from the 18, 19s, and 20-year-olds. You feel like you have life solved, but the, it's just you just don't, bro. So I never really, d I'd never done this before, but I, I, I'm, I think a high school buddy of mine who who had played some poker. I think he had just started being an actuary, but he's in Vegas. I'm living in Vegas at this point. I had just stopped living in the Bellagio. I think I now had was renting a place out in Henderson. I finished a session. I'm probably, it was a terrible poker session. Like, maybe I was down like 10K. I don't even remember the exact numbers. 10K. But my, my bankroll was probably something like, let's say I had 200K. I don't know if I had two, three, or 400. It was somewhere in that range, right? Let's, yeah. let's say 200K. I lose 10K, then I go over, and on the way out, I'm like, I have this brilliant idea. I'm going to do Martingale oh, no. to, like, win my oh, no. win my back. So I'm to 1K. Sure enough, the very first, it just goes lose, 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 lose. And so whatever, it's huh? like I lose, like, 15K, whatever. My total loss... I lost more doing the Martingale than in the poker, and my total, I think I lost like 30, like maybe 10 and 20, or like 12 and 18, or whatever it came to, and then it was like I had lost, I think I had lost like just over 10% of my ro my roll that day, and I yeah. was like, damn. So it's like a one and done, and I'm like, wow, that was really stupid. So I mean, fair play to you for it being like the one and done, man, like learning yeah. from the lessons straight away. But that drive home, when you pull off that nonsense, oh yeah, my friend you start and I talking to yourself out loud. You drive know? home. My friend was with me. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we were already. I had already gotten the first beer on the, or whatever on the way over to the thing. Probably got another beer right after, and then we're like, ah. And then I think we probably went out to a gentleman's club. It's a good chance. 
but if not, then an actual club. I don't, you know, so. You meet many a poker players. Those, Probably got wasted that night. Those places. <laughs> Anyway, here we go. This is going to be a hand that probably works out pretty well for Brewer, at least pre-flop, because I don't see Danny just letting his limps go with the ace-queen suit. It's a pretty big hand. Yeah, Chris Brewer quickly becoming one of my favorite people in poker. Not just at the table. Seems to have a really level head on his shoulders. Really nice guy. It's great to see him do well here in Madrid. And doing well in this hand against Danny Tang. You can see. Maybe I run hot. 77% of the equity. To 18%. I mean, that's grim. For short deck. Given how close the equity is running short deck compared to hold them, yeah. I mean, yeah, you got ace queen suited, you get it all in, and aces. There you go. And some hope here. Instantly got the queen, got a club. I mean, back door super hard. Well, queen and a queen only needed now for Danny Tang. One out. Nice. Chris Brewer joins the table. First hand oh, gets the double. Oh. <laughs> if I shove, I won. Yeah. Jack Queen. Almost. If the ND less, not like this. Yeah, I shove. <laughs> well, if I shove, shove, they die. Or people are Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to say I've never gambled since then in the casino giving them edge, but definitely never with the idea like, hey, I'm going to come in here to like win some money back after a poker session, which, let, I mean, kind of coming up in Vegas, being around gambling, man, that's the pitfall of many a professional, former professional poker player. Various kinds of pit gambling. There's all <laughs> kinds of just horror stories about those situations. So never was a problem of mine. Yeah, I feel like you see. Um, well, I mean, you've probably heard a lot more than I have over the years, but yeah, many, many a talented poker player have you know, burst onto the scene quickly made more money than they've ever known what to do with and quickly find themselves back at zero. Yeah, I mean, the thing about poker is when things are rolling, you're running well, it seems so easy, but it's, you know, if you want to think of it as a long game, probabilistically the law of large numbers, it's like those times pay for the times when you're running bad. So can't really think of the money that way. Sounds like you were pretty disciplined from fairly early on in your career. But do you know where that kind of came from or did that come from like high school and college as well? Or was it when you got into poker you were like, hang on a minute, I have a real shot here. Let's not let's not mess around. Yeah, I mean in some ways I was pretty disciplined. I was probably more disciplined than the average person coming up. Yeah. In that you know, there were multiple times early on around the same time I'm talking about where I was ru we're running up, running down, but I, I was always able to, oh, maybe not take shots as much and grind a little bit more. And uh, and, and that always served me well. And I actually never went broke. Um, oh, see, I think that's a lesson so everyone needs to. That said, especially in my mid to late 20s, I went through some phases. I met Antonio Esfandiari and uh, started going out drinking a lot. Some parts of my poker game suffered a little bit. Mm. Um, actually, meeting my wife 
And then we got married at a step stepson came lived with us. So all of a sudden I had some responsibilities. I think that changes a lot of people. Yeah. It's like part of it before is I knew I was a really good poker player and I just like know, hey, I'm good enough that I, I can't go broke. But there would be times when, you know, sessions aren't going well. Maybe I'm getting a little afraid playing too much. We're gambling. We're live straddling, playing too long, mm. kind of not necessarily playing well, but I always knew it would like be okay. But at some point it's... It's not like real money. Um, what am I doing with this? I don't really have anything I want to do. But then, you know, you get married. This is things really weird. kind of so, like, change. It gives you a little bit more purpose call, with what you're doing, at least for me. So, now I don't know. so, so at that know. point, time in my life. Seven. So, yeah, I mean, I, I might have been more disciplined than many young t and mid 20 years old. But I, I, I don't want to pretend seven. like I really had it all figured out young. I mean, there's definitely guys who I meet. Seems like Danny probably had a seven, too. As I've gotten older, and I meet these young guys, and I'm way more impressed with how disciplined they were in their they were or are in their 20s than I was. You're wrong. You're wrong. Okay. You're wrong. I just assumed you had something the seven and I acted with. Yeah, I remember. I mean, not that it. Maybe the seven of you. One of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of the. It's not like some, it's not like most I eye opening things I kind of <laughs> learned from <laughs> Phil it's was kinda, just, how aggressive he was with his bankroll when it came to shot taking. In his like <laughs> early to mid 20s. And even towards. Galfond, like, right? Yeah, yeah, Phil Galfond, like And even towards, you know, my age now where he's like. You know, if you're not taking risks like in your 20s, then, like, then. Yeah. you know, are you waiting to be 35, you know, to start so taking responsibilities? Would you have responsibilities? Yeah. I was pretty I good about that because I always kind of wanted to move up and I was willing to take some shots right when I was in my 20s. So, I mean, that definitely served me well. I think that's good for multiple reasons, both from the sense of, like, that's how you make it big, mm. right? Uh, also from the sense of I think that's one of the better ways that you improve, right? I think it can get really comfy for guys. Hey, I'm grinding this. I'm beating it. It's good. But then you, you kind of don't improve as, as quickly because one of the ways you improve is playing tougher and tougher players for sure. Mm. So, um, you know, and being forced well, to learn to beat them yeah. uh, as opposed to just doing People something, you know, it's almost guitar. like in the gym. You go to the gym every day, but if you just like stay at the same weights, huh? different workout than when you're you know okay i got this so then you, you like move the weights up a little bit in order to to keep growing well i think the gym's a really good analogy actually because you quickly realize that the gym isn't enough that's only 20 percent of what's needed right you start focusing on nutrition and the way you're spending you know, your time away from the gym or the table but yeah talking of tougher opponents i think galfon's first the first player he ever played 300, 600 against uh, heads up was Phil Ivy yeah. because Ivy was the only one playing and holding down the lobby and Gaffin was like well I think I'm ready I don't care who it is I'm going to have to play him eventually and then third hand of his life playing 300, 600 he gets set on the set against Ivy and Ivy sends him back down to the 10, 20 streets to rebuild like <laughs> it's pretty brutal Oh, go on, Brewer. No, listen, chat. I love this guy, Matthias. I was disciplined. I did not take shots. I was good in Turkish. I didn't say those. It like it's I said I was disciplined yeah. in the sense that if things it didn't was, uh, work uh, out, I dropped back and, uh, down. Michael, yeah. But that doesn't mean that yeah. as you're yeah. winning, you don't yeah. take I shots playing up. bigger. Yeah. You guys yeah, don't get it. Everybody's... I well, thought everybody doesn't really listen. They're so quick to criticize. Yeah. Yeah. It's so I'm annoying about I'm like. I'm telling you, man. Like, if you if you open up that can of worms, you <laughs> I just can't 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 look at oh, this. So he win with Jax. Yeah, Jax against his queen suit and queen ten. Ah, okay, okay. Yep. I thought he has one cast trick, but actually, that's a huge uh, problem that poker players have. At least that I didn't uh, have is that. It's like you anchor nice yourself to the amount of money you had. Nice and when things start going nice. badly, they're not willing to drop back down. Like, no, I do play this limit. I'm good enough 100%. to play this limit. I can't drop back down. Yeah. And you have to be able to yeah, drop back down and grind. I mean, you know, you need to be... I mean, when you run out of money in poker, it's a problem. Right? So. Yeah, I mean, your liquidity is what allows you to earn, like, your yeah. future earning potentials. Like, so going brokers. You, you have to, you know be careful so if you have a little if you're like hey i can beat this game and you start having more money than you need to play it great you can take shots at the bigger game but once you get down to that level again because the shots didn't work out it's like okay 
Okay, time to time to earn some money again. Definitely. Anyway, I mean that that a lot of that comes down to ego as well. Like the fact that you know someone like Galfon, for example, felt like he was ready to take the big shot. He did, but then as soon as he you know got it handed to him, he was he was okay with dropping back down and rebuilding. Like so, it's a pretty valuable trait to have in poker. So I'm leaving. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Fish go. <laughs> no more fish for you. Thumbs. Sorry. <laughs> Bye. Jason Kuhn. Oh, here we go. Jason Kuhn enters the table. JK. King of suit. Which table? Rocking the Real Madrid yeah. jersey, I believe. You, you have a fresh start. When in Madrid. Fresh start? Oh, just new bullet. New bullet, my man. New bullet. <clears throat> oh no, Kuhn was, Kuhn was, Kuhn had some more chips, but I think he just got waxed and that might have, he might have lost them. I don't know, Makita now 1.8, does yeah. that look like? Might have lost a big pot to Makita. Well, we can find out. Yeah, because Kuhn had he Kuhn had a decent amount of chips, and now he's in for a new bullet with 300. So, big tournament development there. Wow. Yeah, it must have been the last bullet. I hope we're getting off here after the break. Because Makita's big hand came from a three-way all-in against Michael Soiser and Chris Brewer. Are we, are we off prior to Chris joining our oh, okay. table, um, his jacks held against so. ace-queen suited and queen-ten suited for, for absolute heaps. 600 effective, actually, at the time. I sound like I'm really like, you know, I sound like I don't appreciate this. That's not true. It's just, I want to go sit there. Usually the games are faster. You know. so get a massage. Huh? Uh, I, I get it. No, people at home was like, we don't want to watch you anyway. <laughs> Richard trying to sneak one through under the gun sixes. Coon happy to limp behind, King-10 off. And yeah, Danny with a nice little multi-way hand here. And uh, I don't see Brewer popping this with sevens. But he is taking some time. Yeah, it seems like a hand you just want to check back, flop a seven. And this is a lot of nothing for anyone. Yeah. I guess Danny has the only real draw. Pretty rare to go four ways to a flop and everyone to whiff as much as they have here. Fun fact for those of you that are new to short deck, it's mathematically harder to make a flush than a full house. I'm just going to randomly drop like little yeah, facts about short deck about that. I mean, I, I think ninety percent of the people watching. Yeah, no, could definitely use that. I think it's, I think it's the right idea for sure. Do you think everyone that played this one will play the one fifty? Yeah. Try and grow the game. One fifty scary. I doubt it's everybody. One fifty probably the vast scary. majority. Scary. Might be one or I'm two guys. Player, but I'm scared. Don't do it. Of what? <laughs> of four hundred anties, man. Uh-huh. Of 400 anti. Yeah, but you don't have to you play first level. You guys have played so much more than me. No, oh, they're talking about sorry. deep short I feel like deck. it's one life. One life. 
Brewer's just yeah, so honest about stuff. Like He's such a raw <laughs> human being, man. Like, it's obviously why I love him because. Like, I, man, I'm no good deep. Gotta play with I'm you guys. It's scary. You, guys fuck me up. <laughs> you just know where you stand with him. You He's just a real up. straight up character. <laughs> I yeah. think Maybe the fact that level. what happened uh, in event number two just goes to show that, man. Like, the event that he actually won. Yeah, I, I actually have a little of that in me that sometimes I find myself giving a little more information than I need. But in, at, yeah. in the poker context, I actually try not try to not do that because I think it's just kind right, of a yeah. negative free roll, right? I mean, that's why why tell people stuff like that. I mean, you ultimately you're competing against them. Like you don't need to lie. You don't, but you can just withhold some information at times. But it's funny. It's like I know where he's coming from, like with that, because I feel like I do some of that myself. I think I'm a bit older than him. I probably do a little less. I've tried to walk that back a bit, but yeah. But uh, I think that's probably something that comes with time. It was something I was yeah. speaking um, to. I want to say Ali and Jason about about how kind of naive I feel like I've approached the game for the last few years because you can, you know, if you're if you're a stand-up po person in, in life, you you do end up giving giving your opponents an edge by just being like too brut brutally honest and wearing yeah. your heart on your sleeve. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Akun with an interesting little play here. Maybe thinking Danny stabs at this enough and 65K to win, you know, probably like 80 some in the pot. I mean, really this is a, this is a play where he's repping probably aces, queens, or king, jack. So having a queen and a jack uh, pretty good. Probably blocking a queens is better than blocking aces because Danny never has aces, limping behind limpers in the hijack, but might have queens, right? So Kuhn probably feels like this is his number one bluff combo. Yeah, and giving himself uh, a really good price on a bluff as well. I think that's a cool hand that after he did it, I think I can reverse engineer what he's thinking. But after getting called, could just be a one and done spot where he's hoping Danny's stabbing but his range that calls here could be bad. Or Kuhn could just be like, well, F it, man. We're still in the rebuy period. Let's just follow through with this one and rebuy. I mean, feels like a dicey spot to, to barrel again. Yeah, Kuhn's done. I thought probably be a one and done. Unless he goes for the double Dying. check raise. Come Dying. on, that would be sick. <laughs> That's the double check craze. This doesn't feel like the spot. I mean, I know we can see he has it, but like, what does Danny have? He calls the check raise bets again. I mean, it's pretty grim at that point. That would have been. That would have been. I, I feel like it would have been bad, but it would have been legendary. But what do I know? I mean, Kuhn's a way better short pl deck player than me. But. Uh, Enjoying these conversations with you, Brian. Not gonna lie. Yeah, it's a, this has been fun. That's a, that's a that was a fun little hand by Kuhn. It really was. Here we go. I like your breakdown of you know just being able to reverse engineer or at least try to articulate some of the thoughts that may be going through Kuhn's head with that combo. I feel oh. I feel pretty confident in that reverse engineering. I will say that. No, that was I, smooth, I bet mate. quite a bit of money on it because. Uh, it just like makes too much sense after after doing that, but that was very smooth. So here we go. Ace King, Ace Ten, not nearly as buried in short deck in this spot. Yeah, things not going Jason's way so far today. A little bit of life on the Ace Nine Eight. I mean, man. Yeah. All right, the seven and the ten. Yeah, I guess like a ton of cards that hit all give them straight draws, right? With that eight nine. Yeah, I know. We shouldn't necessarily be looking through the back door in short deck as much as in hold 'em. But the back door is just like a six seven queen or jack all give them a straight draw. It's just like yeah. almost every card, and the ten improves his hand. So. Let me give him the two pair. So really, you know, he's got a the board pair and the king, and the ace. 
are his, are his bad cards. It's like the boards are so dynamic in short deck. I love that shot, by the way. I mean, the production level doesn't need... We don't need to... Remind people just how high quality this is, but... Yeah, that's set up super high quality. The production, you know, holes like... Uh, LED off, like, backgrounds are, are like slick. Freeway all in. I think it was like. I mean, the tables are beautiful. I mean, look at our LED sick. background that they no always have behind us here. I mean, look how big this LED wall is. Two hundred and two. Pretty, pretty crazy. Did you hear what Jason Who just did? said? What did he say? Oh uh, yeah, that's pretty strong. Uh, someone at his table. The reason that he yeah. had to rebuy. I mean, I guess King Six is worse than Six. We'll let him talk. Yeah. Still, like, those are both very strong calls. Yeah, so apparently, Kuhn got it in for 150 antis, and the guy caught it off with Jack Six, and there was no bounty. You know they play like the yeah, bounty yeah, yeah. game here, yeah. Yeah. He just caught it off with Jack Six for 150. And beat him. Three way all in apparently. Let's get the app up. I want to. I want to hear wow, more we, about. We gotta. We gotta look that. <laughs> I want to see who what it was. Is going on? Three way all in. That's. That hand sounds. Pretty ridiculous. Uh, we haven't seen anything like that. I mean, oh wow, it was Ferdinand Putra, <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Just ready to go. I mean, that's that's strong right there. That is strong. No need to put. <laughs> yeah, JK was just cruising along, half a mil. <laughs> Further than just rifled in with the Jack Six, no bounty. So hard to be bluffing there. Kiet Lee and Paul Pua were at the table at the time, so you may be just the Early image building for hard to be you know? for later high stakes cash games. Do it. It's JK though. One of the best in the world, man. Yeah. Do you consider yourself one of the best in the world for this game? Lol. I think you have to, right? I don't know, man. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine asking Jason that on a televised. Come on, dude. Come on, Danny. Have a word. Glad I get to play, I'll tell you that. Huh? I said I'm glad I get to play. It's a lot of fun to get Ooh, to play. Nobody with anything here. But, I mean, Danny Tang has the most sixes. Limp pot, dealer button check back. <coughs> so you just, I mean, you just always see the buttons go for it here. And uh, Brewer gonna be gone. No backdoor hearts even. And Kuhn as well, not even an overcard to the queen. Mm. Sometimes you just gotta King let somebody suit. steal the pot. I don't, yeah. <laughs> Jason just said King 8 offsuit. That is like better, mate. <laughs> Couple of pipes <laughs> high. <laughs> See in the bottom <laughs> left hand corner of your screens, boys and girls. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> with the mandatory 6k ante. <laughs> Button with the 12k ante down to the final 26 players here at the Grand Fier in Madrid. Over five and a half million in the prize pool. This is the final <laughs> level <laughs> of <laughs> late reg. <laughs> See if we can get hey, that number up to 60. No all in for Jason Kuhn. Just raising the limp. somebody with a lot of short deck experience and mm, yeah. gonna feel comfortable playing post. Which is no, actually of I had a shitty hand. It's just a hand that I like to play with you. 
I feel like a lot. I feel like that's uh, different than a lot of the other American pros. Shove, you shove, I can still call. Or, or let's say like non-Asian pros. Sorry, well, I, was, I was too busy. Six seven suited. Ooh. Beautiful hand, man. Six. Yeah, I apologize, Ross. I, I was. I just I feel like Kuhn. I feel like a lot of the other non-Asian pros are a lot more like all-in shoving pre-flop strategies. Yeah. And we can just see even with that particular hand, Kuhn raising the limp, no shove, ace queen off. I think a hand a lot of other pro, a lot of other, you know, non-Asian pros seem to the jammer fold, jammer fold. But Kuhn very comfortable playing post, and I think that's something you see like the people who are the real short deck players. They they do that, and then and I think it lets you divvy up your ranges in a more profitable way pre-flop as well. Certainly, I'm not I think sure the jam or oh, fold thing. I mean, yeah, it's like you can be plus no. EV, but it's probably not well, the max. I didn't, I didn't lose a lot. But I think Ace Queen O plays really well as a raise, right? Because you're going to keep in parts of the range that you have dominated, like King Queen suited, Queen Jack suited, yeah. even some Queen Ten suited, as well as weaker really Ace X. Awesome Makes and, sense. And potentially in spots where like it's like guy battle. goes all in behind you, overcall, you like don't lose the 400k. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like yeah. kind of yeah. easy to fold Ace yeah. Queen off actually. So, I love that scene. That's I mean, not easy, but you know, you're going to do it. Like endurance cash games. Mm. Really? Rast, I'm not sure where all of this juice is coming from, mate. You get fired up. You just want to stick around for the next three hours instead of piecing out on the next break. I, I think JG's coming and subbing for me. JG is incoming. You're dropping, dropping a lot of bombs today. Richard just takes it down. Even despite being on the button. Calls his exact hand. I can't understand what they're saying, but that expression sounded like a man who just said, Yep, that's what I had. Right? The smile. He got it bang on. Like, yeah, didn't feel like he lied. If you guys and gals at home want to try and get it bang on over on polymarket.com, we still have a couple of open markets on the Triton Poker Series Madrid. And for those of you that bet on Tom Dwan taking down an event here, you would have had yourself a nice chunk of change. Tom winning his first ever live tournament. Not just his first ever Triton. Is this the end of rebuy? Ever live tournament. Yes. Okay. God. Alrighty. Well, like congratulations, Tom. Stop. It's Stop about time. Bleeding. Congratulations to the people. <laughs> I thought I was gonna do it too. I'm almost a bet on him on over on Poly Market. I was like, yay! I'm gonna do it. Ivy third in chips. He is indeed. Around. Is that jungle? Oh wow, he's in this. Oh, Chris, how you doing? One bullet. Oh, one more yeah. Jungle man. <laughs> about average. Jungle man sighting. It sounds like. <laughs> Could still end up in three. Four minutes left. Okay, let's talk about our luckiest hand we've had today. Jungle with the, la I the max late ridge. I'm trying to think. I definitely got very lucky in a couple spots. Well, I mean, the ace 10 is very lucky. <laughs> that was, maybe that, that might have been my luckiest hand. I don't know. The luckiest hand. Oh, here he is. I mean, his nickname is so epic that it's actually like when I scrolled down, I actually wanted to see if it would be Daniel Cates or Jungle Man listed on the Triton app. Oh, I, I, I feel mean. like he's someone who actually, it's like his name, he's like more known <laughs> more known and called by his name even in real life than his, his nickname than his real name. Like, I never see anyone call him Daniel. Yeah, there's, there's quite a few people that come to mind, like Jungle yeah, Man for one, Linus Wait, Love. So Hollow, Omaha for rolls. Like Linus' Darkness. love name yeah. is Linus, right? He is yeah. actually Linus. Linus. Yeah, yeah, fair. All right, Prince of Darkness. Do people call him that in real life, like all the time? Because like, people literally call him Jungle, Jungle Man. I mean, I don't know. When you see, hey, Jungle. When you see Ike walking down the corridor, you're not like, hey, no. Ike. Yeah. You're like, hey, Prince everyone's of like, hey, Ike. No, no everyone's like, hey, Prince of Darkness. Uh, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> but like, no, no, dude, nothing's like Jungle Man. Stop, no, I stop know, trying. I You're know, reaching. It's a reach. It is a reach. 
Okay. I mean, I mean, if his name in the app isn't Jungle Man, then we need to. I don't even send know who email. Daniel Cates is. There's a problem. Check. I've never heard of this guy. He's a. It's a first-time Triton player, Daniel Cates. Yeah, I'm not. He's. I'm surprised they even have a photo for him. I'm surprised it's his first event here in Madrid, I believe. I saw him about like eight days ago, just chilling out in the park. Check. For this, Elton sang. Jungle. The backdoor boat. I say backdoor boat. He did flop two pair, bottom two. Jungle's a man of mystery. You know, it's like his Instagram. You never know where in the world he is or what he's doing, who he's with. Right? He's a jungle man, man of mystery. I think he's living out UK side now, you know. Fairly sure he's spent, been spending a lot of time in London recently. Some fun games. Here we go, a little board pair. Elton Sang picking up the full house. Danny straight, Jack blocker. But it's a three-way pot. Knows Elton's capable of probably finding some bluffs here, though. Maybe turning another two pair into a bluff. Richard with possibly the least two relevant cards I've ever seen <laughs> at the moment. Just waiting for his turn to mark. Danny in the sandwich. Nice fold, Danny Tang. Oh. Take a bow, young man. Uh, I know the luckiest hand for sure now. I thought about it. Mm -hmm. So I, th I know my luckiest hand for sure. Loon not shoving queen jack and then just gain ace as yeah. ace queen. Definitely the luckiest. I suppose I've just been on bullet three. <laughs> wow, okay. So Chris, the butterfly effect luck. luck. Loon not shoving the queen jack. Eight, nine, nine, nine. Tochi. Queen nine, too good. OG. King seven suited. Alright, I'm probably safe. Hold your breath. Here we go. Is this this is about to be the end of the rebuy period, huh? Oh. Pretty no. sure that's what he meant by I'm safe. I felt like he meant he's safe to leave the table and not get dealt in a hand. All right, raising the limp. Richard has a pretty hand, though. I'm, I wonder if he's going to fold that. Ooh, wow. I mean, do you James. think Elton ever rifles this in here? Just one last spin to have heaps after the rebuy stage? Well, that depends. Does he have, I mean, does he have a Lamner? I mean, potentially, if he Hold doesn't it. have a Lamner. I could, s I could see Elton maybe doing something like that. I don't know. Yeah, no. I mean, it's... it's <laughs> see, players aren't, players aren't really doing that. It's fun to speculate on it, but you don't really see that much of that. No, it's really. very 2017, 2018, right? In yeah. Jeju and Montenegro. I mean, also, he wouldn't be like a runaway chip leader. I mean, Elton wins that pot, he doubles to like 900. I mean, it's a decent amount, but it's not like he's running away with the chip lead. I mean, Makita's got 2.4 million. And a couple guys, Isaac Haxton and Bjorn Lee, are at one point over, you know, 1.2s. So it's not like he can just win all the chips for free by what we were talking about on the bubble by having 900K. What, what odds will you give me to try and uh, recuperate some of my losses from earlier on today on Makita Badziakowski winning this? Uh... I don't the chip know. lead. Yeah, he's got a chip left. lead 2.4. Whatever. I'll, I, I I don't know. Have a think about it. Have, have a think, think about, about it on break. Oh, that's right. You owe me 50 euros, huh? I, I forgot did. about that. Yeah, don't yeah. worry. Don't worry. I, won't, I won't let you forget. We'll, we'll keep it going. we got time. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, send you, I'll send you an offer. We'll figure it out. Oh, nice, man. Well, when we come back from break, boys and girls, the rebuy period has officially ended, which means... Yeah, you, you bust though, you go home. Or you go up to the sixth floor. I mean, it depends on how rolled you are. Yeah, wow, Makita, 2.4. I mean, you, we turned around not that long ago. It seemed like he had a million or low millions, and 
some crazy stuff has been going on. We don't know. Uh, on the app, you could actually probably see some of the hands, but 400 antis at the moment. I mean, that is a lot. Yeah. That is a lot of chips. So, I mean, he could be a fun player to watch on this one. I mean, given the way some of these short deck things go down by the bubble, like that, that could be pretty strong. But Definitely. I mean, we st we're still pretty far away from that. Yeah. 28 out of 59. They probably only pay like seven or eight spots. So still quite a ways to go to get there. Yeah, but Makita yeah. can still only dream of title number five when we come back, boys and girls. In around about five minutes' time, we bring you more coverage of the 100K short deck main event. See you guys shortly. Yep, bye. We double up on everything. Come play now on GG Poker. Welcome back. We are here at Triton. This is a big one. I'm with my man, Henry Kilbane. I'm Jeff Gross. We have a 100K buy-in in process. Henry, how are you feeling? I, listen, man, I, was, I needed a coffee, but since you came here, I am no longer in need of coffee. JJ, what is, where does this energy come from? Man? You played the football this morning. Yes. 25K final table. Bubbled. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, sure. 
Yeah, we don't need to talk about that. But where where is this coming from? I, I know I just, it's the main event, so you bring in the hype. I just looked up. I saw Makita has two point five million. I mean, that's. Can you tell me what happened in the last hour? I mean, what's how did he do that? Because he had like eight hundred. It's a lot. We actually don't know. He hasn't been on our screens. But if okay. you check out the app, he won a three-way all-in with Jax against Ace Queen suited and Queen Ten suited for around about six hundred and fifty. All in preflop. All in preflop. It's been cruise control up until then. Okay. But still, I don't don't deflect the question. Where this hype? What's going on? No, Where have I'm, you been? I'm excited. Honestly, I'm just having a good time. This is it's sinking in. You know, it was fun to play that event. Didn't cash, but it did get kind of the blood flowing. You felt the Bits. graphics. Some big names in there. I mean, there was Ivy Durr, obviously won the event. Uh, Seidel, some other some other mega stars in there. So it was just fun to be in the mix and uh, kind of let down. But it was like a high and low day for me. But I'm, well, I'm back. When can we expect the vlog? Is there going to be a vlog from? The yeah, here in Madrid. people like pain. I tried to neutralize that with five percent giveaway to try to like bring some of the you know to get neutral, but we'll yeah. see. I mean, it's still everyone likes to see. Uh, you know, it was, it was a PLO twenty five k. It'll be fun. Nice man. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'll tell you what else I'm looking forward to: getting down to the bubble in this event because out there. I heard that it is going to be 1.8 million euros. For wow. first, I heard Luca make the announcement as we were on break. We got so 59 runners. There was Ras was throwing 50 was like a good number. Kind of got heated up here. I don't know if there was some late bus or also just yeah. people hanging out. Maybe want to just be in for one bullet and, and come in later. But either way, this is a lot of entries for a 100k short deck. I mean, we saw in sure. London main event in 2019. I think there was you know it got over 100 runners, but this is. Uh, this is very impressive and it's going to be exciting and someone's going to a lot of euros. I mean, it's a good start to the year, right? You know, first event off the back end of, of COVID. We're just yep. warming up. I think it's safe to assume now that, you know, we've got this production level at the level that it's at, the turnout that we've had already going forward, we're probably going to, you know, get more and more people coming. But for now, look, 59 people in 100K in Madrid. Yeah, we saw some people kind of exit. I know Patrick Antonius was just flying out of here. Some other people that maybe don't play the short deck are gone but we have a lot of people that love short deck and it mm. is a fun game and we see some of the best in the world look at makita he is in first place by almost double He's got it's crazy and he has his fourth triton title he got this week which is a record uh, jason coon i saw in there has three i know we see a lot of other familiar faces i mean has anyone else has impressed you in the last hour and a half maybe you hadn't seen before da danny tang chris brewer jason coon all rocking up uh, blessing our, you know, our screens with some high-level poker. Uh, but let's talk about this table that we're going to jump into, JG. So Daniel Cates, first event here in Madrid. Just shout out for the he's, 100K, casually bowls in with a shirt. He's he's absolute wild card at all times. I mean, jungle, you never know. You don't know where he is, what he's doing, what he's thinking. But he's here. It looks like he's focused. He's playing 100K buy-in. And, you know, I, I, it's just always fun to watch. So this is this is quite a, an eclectic group. And Waikin Young, also three titles. Love saying that. He had one of the most impressive runs in poker last Triton in, in the London. 2019, he won yeah. the main event. No limit hold him. Got Ike second Haxton. in that one. Ike Haxton in here. Prince you see of some, I mean, just, yeah, Prince of Darkness, we like to call. I mean, that's a whole other story. And then there's Soiza in the mix as well. And, and Yum, who's been playing a lot of pots and, and mixing up. But I know you guys are ready for some action. We are going to go down and take a look at this feature table that is forming right now and we are going to have some big big action henry kilbay and jeff gross we're going to be calling the action here tonight look at jungle of course he's getting a massage i'm so it's just ready tony for this. g and jungle they just it's like if they're at the feet i don't know if they get massages other places but at the feature they get massages without fail in face massages usually let's see what we got webster i was playing soccer with them earlier today has some game we played a little pickup henry I, I thought maybe i'd see you there i didn't get an invite well i mean <laughs> Just like stick you right in it. Like, I wasn't invited, man. I sent you the gym invite today too. Oh uh, we yeah, well no, I went to uh, I went uh, to a local gym. Okay, all right. Because right. I, I googled your gym and I was like, that's a bit too fancy for my taste. You no. you, you two go into some like boutique gym in Central Madrid. No, it was. I, come on, don't lie. It was, I googled it. I mean, it has boutique in the word, but it doesn't mean it's a boutique. Listen. Yeah. Listen. When I go to the gym, you know, I want sawdust on the floor. You know. No. Yeah. Well, well that's not what we were doing. So we listen. We're gonna pick up the action. We're four-handed. Jungles in the mix. Why can Young is there? Let's see what's going on here. Listen. You can keep deflecting. I'll bring it up. We're here for the next two hours. You know. But I tell you what, JG. It's all I want for the next. How did the football uh, go this morning? It, is. it was good. Two draws. Four, four, two, two. Got well, a couple buckets. A couple assists. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Huh? It's in good form. Wish it went a little better at the PLO. I would have traded no okay. goals and in cash, but you're out there. What if you need it? What did us proud, mate. 
good for you. Yeah, it was fun. It probably is. Jungle looking dapper, man. He got the nice shirt on. Not skipping arms day. Yeah, hack, huh? You should appreciate it. I think it's going to be a case I of you and I just beating our mics and letting Jungle talk. It's perfect. I want to bet uh, 25. Why Ken Young was out there playing football today, too? A lot of these guys. There's over 20 guys out there. Some, we got some video of some footage. That'll It'll be fun. I think, uh, I mean, I don't think they play quite as well soccer as they do poker, but there's a couple guys, a couple, couple surprise gamers in there. Look at Jungle taking the lead here. He's got just Jack-9. Uh, oh, I got him. I got him already. <laughs> wow, it didn't even take that long. I got, I, you've already fulfilled your dream? I already got a got pile of shit. I got a pile What'd you of do? shit. I got the Jack of Clubs. Good. Playing okay. the Prince of Darkness. I kinda, he I named him the you, Prince of Darkness too. That's his nickname for, for him. You know that? Yeah, yeah. fine. Yeah. yeah. The jungle came out. Yeah, so that's. They got five people at once. That's, that's already a win. They got five people at once. It's like. I, I so you, you have Prince of Darkness. Oh, you got it? Okay. And then Falcons, you know, whenever he talks about Phil Galfond or, or Ike Haxton, like he never calls 20, them or no, rarely calls them by their actual yeah. names. Yeah, he's a... 30% thought. Well, I can tell you I what... I made a big lay down. And I you believed you. Jungle's you chatting. No one else yeah, seems too engaged with him. Ike giving him a little, little banter. I don't believe you. I don't think you folded these, Jack. You're right, I didn't. <laughs> it's to read, read through your lies, Hollywood Haxton. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're all show. Oh, man. We're about to have <laughs> Strap yourselves in, boys and girls, okay? Buckle up. This is good. This is going to be Who great TV. <laughs> hey, you never know what mood you're going to get with Jungle exactly. That's true. But he's That's very true. He's tripping the night. We remember in Cyprus, when he was playing with Yoni in like the 200, 400, 800 PLO game, he was literally asleep at the table yeah. <laughs> after grinding for God knows how many hours. Yeah. But he looks fresh, you know, it's his first event here. Wow. Look at Wykin just saying. That is a full, full Chipotle right there. I said all in. I said all in. Can you do my uh, head and face? Okay, can we get the floor? <laughs> all right, well. <laughs> I believe you, I can. I think you have something good. I'm going to fold my King 10 seated. You shot King 10 seated there. No, I limp call it usually. You know, that's how I like trap people who are foolish enough to have Queen Jack and go all in. Queen Jack got you. It's short text funny because like he's jungle's talking about trapping, but even in these spots where like you could get someone to rip in, whatever, it's like you know it can be 54 oh, yeah. to 46 yeah, yeah, yeah. or like trapping with 60% yeah. equity. Yeah. yeah. So you have to trap, you heard then about get the novel coronavirus. The call, <laughs> then I refuse hold. to acknowledge that it's real. That's an interesting approach. I'm not joking, obviously, but I thought it doesn't look like people have to wear masks. All in? No, no, no one is making me do it. Is this a logical thing to do to wear a mask? I believe so. Why? Oh, God. In order to not become infected with the novel coronavirus. In order to not become infected? Yes. I'm pretty sure that's not what a mask does. Oh. Maybe it does the opposite. I think you're mistaken. Someone go and sure tell Jungle to not open sure. up this can of worms, please. Other people from getting infected by like 30%. It does both. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to have to re-research this perhaps. But I still think I could have sworn I read this, but I do not doubt that you read that somewhere. I could have sworn like this was a thing. <laughs> you can't hear him because he's wearing the mask. It's not the mic. <laughs> yeah, that's why he's wearing the mask. We can, we can uh, Webster rock one of the original Triton buddies. Huh? Why are you on today? Why am I on today? Are you on something? <laughs> I read my horoscope. He's high on life. <laughs> I read my horoscope. Oh. Oh, welcome to Jungle as well, boys and girls. We're all just living in it. Man. 
Do you not want me to be on something? Do you do you want me to come in here and, and not say anything? No, I'm just asking curiously. Eh? <laughs> Who wants what you're having? No. Apparently, the reason Jungle rocked up today is he read his horoscope. It's, it's allegedly from you his spend mouth. Spend enough time with me, I'll put you into a, a, a trance of sorts and you'll, you'll get it too. <laughs> you know what? Should we read out Daniel's horoscope oh. for today? Let's, let's take a peek. May as well. Got a big all in here though on a call. Wow, Ike with two tens just says, you know what? Boom. Let's take a look at the horoscope after. For sure. That's it is the year of the tiger. I mean, it could be jungle. I'm, I was born in '86. Do you follow that? You know that every. Do you know your animal? Absolutely no idea. You don't know which animal you are. What year were you born? '94. Uh, year of the dog. Do oh, so you know the year. You know that it is a dog. The year of the dog, but I don't know what it means. Okay. I'll tell you what this means. Can I have a black tea? Webster and limbs. Are we going to be hitting the showers? Black tea and water. Thank you. We're doubling up to over 660,000. Michael, so is it eventually getting out of the way? Yo, hi. Slight favorite hi, gang. for the tens. Hi, hello. <laughs> no <laughs> problem. Queen, queen on the flop anyways, coming for sure. Okay, I guarantee I think you're right, Ryan. <laughs> Players make their predictions. Guaranteed. Oh, oh. oh sorry, Ace. Oh, <laughs> my hand back, I think. Keep them low, no paint. Now, now you want a queen. No paint. It's That's low. not what I meant. It is low. Not what I meant. Ten and a ten only needed for Haxton. Uh, I think it's a king. Oh, no, no dice. Chop. Chop, chop. Okay. Whoops, the limb gets the double. Three ten. Yeah, and, and Ryan Yum is looks like to be a short deck enthusiast. He has played lips? the 100k main event in London in 2019. Also the 100k short deck, 25k <laughs> short deck so in... Here he's played the 25 and 50, finishing ninth and seventh. So kind of laddering up as the buy-ins go up. Let's see if okay. he can keep that big. record going and that that heat over here. Good yeah, start for him. Two for two in caches. My man. Bye jungle. Bye bye. <laughs> well, right there you can see the GG Poker Plus Club GG Daily Triton free rolls. Also, you can get 100 rewards or 100% up to 600 in a match deposit bonus. That is with promo code TRITON2022. And sign up and a 50 free global millions ticket up for grabs. And look at, there's Elkie and D-Negs rocking their emojis that are on the site. Some of the best software you'll ever see. No, they're not actually taking jungle off the table, are they? Well, I think Bai Kin Young might have called that in. He was... He was he was just you know a couple complaints and he and he got just that's it oh dude. old school guys I don't know Henry and I were on but yeah we were in our nice comfortable secret lab chairs just lay, lounging back and right now I was in recline I'm back I'm back what bad beat it's twice twice no three times today first thing I get invited to football. Then you bubble the 25k, and now Jungle Man. You had a 1% free roll. You didn't even know it. Great. I didn't even find out until last night. Yeah, that's that's a lot. It gets taken off of our table five minutes in. That's tough. That, that was a tough. wild break. I mean, obviously, as we know, that is a complete random balancing of tables, but that was, you know, into the big blind, and that was... Holy. I know that's not what people want, but Holy listen, there's 26 to 60 left. This thing's moving quick, and there's only so many tables left. I think we're favored to see Jungle again. You know, likely. That's Ike's fault for calling with the tens. Butterfly effect. Oh yeah. And look at. Uh, I'm not even going to read out his horoscope now. We'll have to wait till tomorrow. <coughs> Bjorn, Bjorn Lee who has two caches and a million in scores now. Is in second. He was sort of towards the bottom of the counts I saw earlier when I was on. So had a busy break. Busy. Hour and a half or so. Ike Haxon in third. Kia Lee over a million. Regards one of the best cash game players in the world. Seth Davies was getting splashy. Hit a spicy nine you on the river. Person, Called his card. Tony G in sixth out of nowhere. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's around. Okay. Yes. Phil Ivey in seventh. Stephen Chidwick. Paul Poir. Big names here. Jason Kuhn in the middle. Five the trophy. 
So there's 25 yep. left, and there's only five 10 above average, and that's a big reason Makita with such a huge stack, 2.4 million. Jungle would not have been my top pick for first person all week. Give me a hard time hey. wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was live. But in retrospect, maybe he should have been. <laughs> I don't know, man. Never know what he means. Yeah. Jungle what? Would not have been my top pick for first person all week to give me a hard time for wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not my first person, but he's, he's in the list. Yeah, in retrospect, he should have been higher in the rankings. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely in the list. Yeah, Iken soy has been rocking the mask the entire time. Haven't seen many, <laughs> many players here wearing it, but Jungle was ready to go into a, a heated debate there, Henry. He was he was fully ready to go go for a heated topic, but... Nah, he's just putting Prince of Darkness as... Yeah, just trying like, to rile him up a little. Yeah, I mean, it's... You know, Ike jungle at the table. All in. All in. They're gonna give each other a little back and forth. I like what Ras mentioned earlier. The Ace Nine suited, kind of like the Ace Five suited, and and hold them right. You got that wheel, six, seven, eight, and y you kind of just like three, see people taking aggressive lines three, with this hand. 30, 45, 48 plus eight. <coughs> Six yeah, million price boy. Must my hand. Nope. They didn't turn into a pair. <laughs> I think One and a half thousand good. people, Jeff, Why? keeping us company. Because on I never had Twitch signed for the past and YouTube. Day. Yeah, right. Shout out to all of you yeah. guys and girls yeah, at home. Never got a cold. It's Henry Kilbane no alongside JG. Yeah. Never had my sign okay, hey, Jeff. I finally got Gross. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like and JG though. I think I'm gonna yeah. have to start yeah. sticking yeah. with that. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. You should I think I, I think the jungle just get a dessert delivered too or no? All indications. Might they might have just brought him a dish. Still. Yeah, I still hear you coughing sometimes. It sounds like like a wet cold. Yeah, for those of you that are here with us, if you haven't already, go ahead and click the like button on our live broadcast on YouTube. It really does help us reach a wider audience. Continue to put out high stakes poker content for free. That also means that Jeff and I get to keep our jobs. And I promise you, this video gets 500 likes, we'll bring you some more free high stakes short deck action tomorrow. So, you cool. know, there you go. Dead easy. Just got to click a button. Oh, here, Y Kin Young and Ike and a tango, both modest holdings in this short deck game. Y Kin Young plays some of the biggest cash games in the world. It's one of the more decorated Tournament resumes on the Triton stop with three titles. Makita, man, he's he's the favorite for number five right now. He's he's got a big lead, that, a lot long way to go. That would be very impressive. Well, we had a two-time winner already this week, Adamo. We did, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's even crazier because there's just not many. I mean, how to how many events, right? He only there's only playing the no limit. He didn't play PLO. Didn't play any of the short deck. The Dark Prince. Jungle man calls like the Dark Prince. <laughs> 18, yeah? Yep. Yeah, it would be uh, quite the feat. Danny Tang, insert. Another short deck crusher. Oh. Yeah, I'm not being funny, Jeff. Just, just looking at this, these final 24, I mean, oh, 60 entries, man. there's a lot of big hitters left in the field that... 60 entries. No, I don't think we're going to be disappointed with Six, 60 entries. any oh. table draw. 60. Average? No, there's 60 people that Got entered. Tom Dwan, Entry. Stephen Chidwick, Entry. Daniel Dvoris, Zhang, Bjorn Lee at one table. <laughs> Chris Brewer, Kiat Lee, Paul Poor, Seth Davies at another. Yeah. And then Jungle, Jason Kuhn, Makita Badziakowski, Phil Ivey and Tony G all at one table, I mean. 58. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty silly. <laughs> I don't play tournaments a lot. <laughs> the bad news is 
we will not be seeing any more of Jungle Man as Makita Baziakowski has sent him to the showers. Wait, really? That was he got moved that quick, from got the moved, future, bang, and then, bang, and then out. That's there's one thing to get called <laughs> off, but to get called off and called out, that is that is tough. Is a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, JG. <coughs> that was quick. No, that was like four, three minutes. I mean, that might have been the next hand. I feel like, yeah, you know, it's like when you, you get Especially teased. in a situation where someone raised and I jumped. So I thought he might make What do you think your odds to cash would be, Henry, if you just hopped in this tournament, the short deck, from the start? I'm just drawing dead, mate. You really him. think you, you don't think you have a shot? I, I don't think. I mean, obviously, there's like variance, right? So, sure, if any of us yeah. from the commentary team jumped in, I'm, there's a more than 0% chance that we cash, obviously. You don't think we'd take it down? No one's going to be a short deck champion. I mean, look, man, you've been playing poker long enough to know that anything can happen. We've seen, we've already had like an 18 to 1 chip lead comeback here at the Madrid series. So. Which it's one was that specifically? Makita against Danny Tang, heads up. What, was it 18 to 1? I was doing the. Oh, because yeah. he was down to a million, yeah. I guess Danny Tang right. had oh, wow, 18.2 yeah. right. million chips, Makita had 1.1. 1. 1. Oh, I wonder what. Yeah, that's right. I think it was just 18 to 1. Break. I thought it was like 12 yeah. to 1, but that's. that's one like, one I think the kind. toughest thing yeah. would be um, <laughs> the fact that, you know, short deck is an equity oh, denial game, made, similar yeah, to, to PLO. Yeah, yeah. It looks okay, it's quite cool. I think it looks quite cool. You I, I saw it typically <laughs> see players taking more aggressive lines with marginal hands, and I just don't think that my. He also said US, I'm like, not yours. My stack of threshold knowledge is enough, and I don't think that my minimum defense frequency knowledge would be enough coming into this. And I think those are two things that you really have to have nailed down. Um, especially in a game where, you know, it's tough for people to have air. So then how often do you want to cool down with, you know, like two pair when there's a straight available one? You, you get what I'm yeah, saying. You have like 800, yeah. 900? Yeah. I feel like I'm drawing dead to the likes of Paxton and Makita and Jason and Brewer. Webster with the jack-10 here on the button. A couple options. I mean, he's basically in the big blind equivalent in Nolan and Holdem. Has a, has a choice there, but kind of a nice hand to check back, get position. You got a, got a premium. You can see the equities there on the screen, and this is something super different than Nolan and Holdem. You just don't see a lot of five-way pots. Oh my, look at that. Jack-10, just just like, just what we're saying. This game is a good hand to have Jack-10, and he has flopped the Stone Cold Nuts on the puck. Yeah, fun fact, JG, that sets are actually small favorites versus straights on a flop straight board. And Danny Tang with bottom set. 55% of the equity, even though Webster Lim has currently got the stone nuts. That's a bit fascinating. I gotta say, I did, I do, I did know that that it was a favorite, but I didn't realize it was that big a favorite 44. in the spot. Pretty insane, right? The condensed deck, 52 to 36 cards. So if you're Danny, you're basically just hoping to get overset, because then if you're okay, if he has a straight, you're just like, I got, I got a, I got a good hand here. Yeah, I mean, obviously there are reverse implied odds calling down with bottom set, though. Especially in a limped pot. Nines and queens going to be in that. Especially on the button. Webster's is never going to raise nines. Very unlikely going to... Ah, uh, potentially going to jam queens. Oh, there we go. There's the back we were just talking about. Danny turning the boat, does he now lead into Webster? Makes sense, right? If he assumes that Webster's going to now check back 
straights. Yeah, it's curious because it, you might exactly if you think Webster would check back straight. The, the other part of this though is, I mean, you got to feel good about it. But what would Webster do with Queen Nine? I mean, if he, he's got the, the the button right, he was last to act. Didn't have to put any more money, so he could have Can easily have, have Queen Nine. nine. Could have nines, as you suspected. That was another thing he wouldn't raise pre-flop. But um, you know, Dan's still got to feel pretty confident about his hand. Yeah, I don't think Webster's capped here at all. Like, yeah. I think if anything, I think Webster actually has a nut advantage on this board. I don't know how many queen nine, queen eight combos Danny's going to be completing from under the gun. Right. Um, and we can see there's only one combo of queen nine suited actually left in the deck. Queen nine of hearts, so stretching pretty, pretty thin here. Yeah, he does knuckle it. Yeah, so I, he's probably gonna get two streets there, or get the, he's gonna get one bet on the Turner, Turner River. What? So he checked back queen nine, <laughs> nines maybe. Not saying you're not winning. I'm saying the shows. Full of confidence. I was very happy with the check. <laughs> like 250 on the river, I'm like, uh, Win more. here we go. <laughs> Dang Tang played a, uh, that pot against Fedor on the final table bubble. I think it was a 75k or the 50k. That was a really sick hand with six deuce. Did you see that one? It's like a called all in with like fourth pair bottom pair oh uh, yeah, that yeah was, I remember that that was a sick and they were getting these stare down wars for a while that's that was a bit of banter back and forth yeah Not yeah yeah. <laughs> it was funny because oh. when that was actually being broadcast with the delay Danny was walking through the restaurant and we watched it together we watched that hand together and I just turned around to Danny I was like I was like Danny oh, you're such a station well, and he just turned around on. laughed and said it's like uh so that's poker for you in 2022, Henry. <laughs> yeah, gotta gotta hang in there sometimes. Go blind be blind. Uh, Makita is officially double second right now, at 2.7, 341 <laughs> anties. No, dude. Pair up, then I look at you first. <laughs> <laughs> See if it's a good call or not. Still don't know. <laughs> Your face maybe just drops. Like <laughs> what was the first guy? Uh, queen. Oh. <laughs> I probably to be dropped. Right? Yeah, whatever, like he's already on. <laughs> <laughs> like Queen's is... What? I shot 10 jacks with it. Unless... Yeah. yeah. Couple of absolute yeah, brutal hands. Just get out of the way. Two jacks here for Soiza plus two. You can see that under his chip stack, what position he is at the table. Never. Uh, I think jungle busted. <laughs> All in? <laughs> at least he got to fuck me up first. Yeah, I'll jump back. <clears throat> okay, so Soiza all in and. Jack 10 off. 400. Three feet. Under. 3. 35, 45, 48 plus 8. 56. Uh, 350. 3 So, JG, I can confirm that the official payouts are in down to the final 22 with 8 oh, yeah. oh. players Thank you. making the money min cash. 240. Thousand euros. Mm. So another chunky min cash man here. Almost two and a half buy-ins. First prize, one million eight hundred thousand euros. So another two seven-figure payouts here. Runner-up mm. going to receive one million three hundred and five thousand for their efforts. Okay. Well, I'm going to give five. Big old day in the office ah, for these boys and girls. The sick thing is, it's like, you win this for 1.8. <laughs> 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 
sure you cover all of your buy-ins if you bought in, you know, for one bullet in each event. Like 830k, I believe it was in total buy-ins. But yeah, it's if no re-entry. <laughs> if, if you're in for a couple of bullets in, you know, a single event, it's uh, pretty sick. going on here as so we head to Queen 8-6 Rainbow. Top pair for Haxum is out of position against four opponents. Okay, I'll take it back. Take See if he oh, decides <laughs> to stab this. He doesn't. And this might be a very rare five players to the turn situation. Nine. <laughs> Who asked for a nine? Was it Danny? You didn't name a suit. It's not impressive. And what do you do if you're the one of the other players and someone's just called for a card? Wow, I mean this is a this is making things much more interesting. We got Yum with two pair. Sevens is open ended. King ten has a double gutter. And Soyz has got a pair and a flush draw. And Ike has top pair with a gut shot or double wait a j double gut shot right no queen eight says seven or a jack well i and asked for nine and the guy's still better this is this is a this is what happens when you go five way to a turn and there's gonna be a, there's gonna be interactions jack 10 is such a, a problematic hand people are always wary that that's in the mix so no one's no one's really thrilled. Everyone's got something. Soyz is taking taking a nice bet here. He has a blocker to the nuts. He's also got a powerful draw, and Danny is sticking in because he's got a nice draw. He also does block Jack Ten, so uh, you can see the equities. Soyza in the lead, and this is a relatively big brick here. All things considered. Yeah. Sevens would have made a straight. It's, although it's the only brick, right? It feels about so. Yeah, two guys that know a lot about each other. And Soiza. Mm. Nice bluff. That was the best hand, actually. Hero. Yeah, Daniel was even like, I called for a nine and the guy's still betting. I don't know, do you, how balanced are you with your card calling, JG? Like, do you do you throw them off? Do you sometimes call for a three when you actually need a four or? It's a good question. I don't, you know, it's not, I've got three year old, not not as much card calling these days and, and playing, but I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember. I, yeah, I don't think I usually call for. The actual card yeah, that you need, right? Yeah. See, I do. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because no one ever believes you when it comes in. You start betting. They're like, oh, well, you have to bet now. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it depends. You got to know your players. I think it depends. There's a lot of leveling involved in poker I think it now, does. It does. A, Can I get water, please? It sends off alarm bells a little bit. If you water? just shout out a card, it comes, then you start yeah, firing. Nasty. Are you going 20% pot, 80%? Are you a domoing pots after you call the card? I mean, Mate, I think we just, like, mandatory 200% pot, right? Right. That's what I'm saying. I, I don't know. I think that would concern people. It, especially if you have the actual nuts and you call it, you know? It's interesting. You have like just over 400? Ike really yeah, gets yeah. in the accounting. Yeah. I know he, <laughs> he loves to ask people, kind of heat check them. Yeah, you know, he, he is the accountant of the poker world. Yeah. Prince of Darkness. Hollywood Haxton. Ryan Reynolds was playing. Ike Haxton in the accountant. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, it was Ryan Reynolds, wasn't it, chat? I think you're right. Ike's got a whole lot of nothing here. No, it's <coughs> Ben Affleck. God damn it. Oh. The accountant. Talking of Ben Affleck, Ben Affleck plays poker, right? Seen him at the World Series a couple of times. Oh, yeah.
Nice, nice bet there. Kind of recognizing the positions and got a modest hand, wants to see what's going on. Twenty-two left, eight paid. Six million euros in the kitty. And some big names in the mix. Just give you guys an idea. Top ten, Mikita Badziakowski, Stephen Chidwick, Bjorn Lee, Phil Ivey. Seth Davies, Kiat Lee, Ike Haxton, Danny Tank, Tony G, and Chris Brewer rounding out the top 10 here at the Grand Vier in Madrid. It's main event week, baby. 100k short deck, anti only. And then they were like, you know what, boys and girls, if 100k buy in isn't enough for you, we're going to flick in the 150k just a couple of days after. And in case you boys and girls didn't know, James Dempsey is without a shadow of a doubt, single-handedly, the most handsome and best production manager in the poker world. If you don't believe me, just Google it. This is, you know, speaking truths out here, He's making some drop-offs right now. It's late, we're having a good time. Whatever part of the world you're watching, let us know. In the chat, Twitch chat, we got YouTube going, Facebook, all the legends in there. I see you guys sticking with us pretty much daily. Appreciate that. This is why I like, I, I love doing commentary with you, JG, because we speak the same language. We both come from the Twitch streets, you know? Yeah. You've I've been out there streaming. You've been out there. I put in a lot of time. I love Twitch. And you grafted that stuff. I love it. I love it. I, I respect it. I get it. It just yeah. it makes sense. Just or, see, like today, Brian opened up Twitch chat for the first time and automatically just he just got triggered <laughs> so oh really <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah just exactly. straight away it's like no listen no. Russ, it takes it takes time man yeah it's a uh, it's a scary path to walk down no, it's a good i mean it just takes you know you gotta you gotta have thick skin and you also that's it is what it is you know keep on your toes man it's uh, keep on your toes Who's got anything here? This seems like no one has much for this type of multi-way board. What do we got, Danny? I, this is what I love about short deck. There's just like times people just like take ganders. Like this seems like he's just he's just I mean he's blocking what seven nine. There's a paired board. Did you see Landon Tice's tweet today? No. Nope. I'll show you this. This applies to this situation right here, where you take a snap with the. Uh, <coughs> the queen seven four ways. Ninety five. Wow. Yeah. So Webster has top pair. Who is waiting for people to bust? Danny with an <laughs> absolute. This is an interesting. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's good. And Ike, speaking of good, Ike making a, a very good bet. Creative. Wonder if there's some live reads there. I don't know what's going on. People are both got people are just Mommy firing. Right. Yeah, they're trying, man. They're trying. <laughs> Another one. Okay, no, 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 no. We're moving. Okay, let's go to the new table. It looks He's like leaving so I can take his water. Oh, okay. So we're not going to actual table. He's not taking water. Yeah, good. I'm trying to do the, <laughs> do the full scoop. Did I take them or did you give them to me? Ooh. <laughs> I like Ike's shirt. I feel like I've seen him wear that like years ago though. Like I've seen him in that exact shirt. Like I bet you if, if you guys want to Google Ike images, like you could find that shirt from maybe it's a lucky one. I've seen it before. I saw Makita rocking the same drip he had on when he won the title. Oh, he loves title. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Adamo as well. I'm fairly sure Adamo actually has a lucky shirt. Yeah. The shirt that he beat Stephen Chidwick heads up in. Yeah. I think he's won around about seven, eight million wearing that shirt. Which, oh. you know, if that's the if that was the case for me, then I would always wear that shirt as well. I'd actually be pretty scared to take it to the dry cleaners. 
just in case it gets lost, you know? I, I don't know. I, I'm an energy guy. I, the lucky charms and, like, the, the trinkets and the, the superstitions, I just believe in energy. But, I mean, like, whatever works, honestly, mindset's important. you got to feel comfortable. I mean, I'm the same, to be fair. I am very tired. Do you, do you ever, before we, like, f full on open this can of worms, are you ever just, like, considering playing a tournament and then the energy is just a bit off you know you know what i'm gonna pass it i'm just gonna i'm gonna hang out with the family uh, or then vice versa no like you're not thinking of playing a tournament but then the energy is right and you're like let's just let's just get not in. not really i have a few examples in my life where i wish i had what i knew i shouldn't play like when i was so beat up or i had like a food poisoning but i was just like you know what i'm gonna go in there and it's just not if you're not feeling it, it's good probably to skip but you yeah. gotta play like listen bubbling the like What's going on here before we... Let me just see. We got A6, Jack 10. Before we get into story time, Dealer cut off. Soiza in the league lead. Webster's got a sneaky little hand here. Yeah, double gutter on the flop. Soiza definitely the stab. Definitely could have 9 and 10 as well. But I guess he, he bet the flop, right? So what would it be? Soiza bet the okay. flop. Okay. Webster so does, just called. Let's narrow it down a bit. Can't really just give him nine ten. Webster maybe maybe understands that, takes his equity. I think I'm going to Mallorca. Where? Mallorca. Mallorca. Yeah. Some music festival that my friend's going to. Tag along. I'm not quite sure who that was, but it sounds like someone is headed. To Mallorca. Oh, I live in Mallorca. I live in Mallorca. I live in Mallorca. I thought so. <laughs> I've never been. This is Spain, right? Yeah, it's Spain. But I think it's an island. I don't think so. Really? Oh, Spain man. have an island or Ibiza? Yeah, Ibiza is an island, right? Canary yeah. Islands also islands? Is that Spain? Can I read? Is Mallorca an island? I don't know. <laughs> now you got me all confused. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say yes, but I'm not that Yes, yeah, so I was though. so certain before, and now you got me all confused. <laughs> Webster giving us a lot of thought with the jack, is he... I'm just like, yeah, it's an island. <laughs> I was saying, like, for example, <laughs> this, this PLO, Henry. Like, I just had to, like, look, I didn't cash. I had a blast. I was kind of, for a second, thinking about playing or not and whatever, but sometimes you just got to know. You know, you just got to get in there and, and just mix it up and just play, you know, whatever. It sucks. It hurts for a few minutes. That's just how it goes. And look at this. Ike with commanding lead of this table. 1,075,000. It's 134 and he's double plus what Soyz has got in second. And why can Young not far behind? Healthy in the mix. Ryan Young, 411. And Webster has 49 there. Chip count brought to you by GG Poker. And still everyone there. Completely in it. It's getting deep, man. We're getting near. I mean, this thing is moving. It's moving along. Indeed. 19 left. Oops. Eight paid. I just uh, say hold. run it. Let's just run a, it tonight, JG. It? That you one, yeah. Just, I mean, you came in here with the yeah. energy. Yeah, I'm right. riled up. <laughs> Rit paint. Is it? Big Let's off. just get over and done yeah, with today, and then we just all take <laughs> tomorrow off. You, is it your <laughs> hearing, or is it the mask? Go to your little boutique gym. Follow up with a sauna session. Steam room. I had a great gym session today. You know those gym sessions where you just walk away and you're like, you're like, yeah, I did that. You know what I'm talking I about. Do. He's giving me the nod. Dude. No, I do. It's not, especially yeah, with like good. bonus ones where you're not sure you're going to get it in or you're yeah. like, I might go, I might not. And you do it and you're just like, of course oh, yeah. you got to do it. You just get the pump in. I mean, I, when you, when I called you, I went back to the hotel room and then you sent me the, the gym location and, I was like this close for not getting out of bed, and I was like, "No, JG's down there." I had a, I had a soccer. Brian Ross is down there. I had a, I almost had a dream day. I had soccer session in the morning, like twenty-one person pickup thing. Then at final table didn't go right, but then gym session out back in the booth. I mean, that's a busy hit. day. That's, that's a busy that's, day. It's a day right there, man. Yeah, took my <clears> boy to the park. Three years old. Got him his first ever soccer shoes. Went over to that Real Madrid store. Got him the little turf shoes. Nice. Like, yeah, he loved it. Just loves it. He loves soccer, plays all the time. Just like that's what he does. He wears his jerseys every day and yeah, starting early. It's, uh, it's three got, years old. Has he got a Madrid one yet? No, I'm just, he's all Roma. AS Roma, full kits, every kit. That's his team. He loves it. Fair, 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 fair. 
They're in the final, man. I saw a fine or I may have pronounced that wrong. Uh, Renee was rocking it. The Dutch man, he got knocked out. But they're playing in Albania on the 25th. So there's, it's not the UEFA champ final, obviously. Then there's like the conference final. So that's the 25th in Albania. Europa Conference League final, yeah, yeah against uh, Feyenoord. Yeah, I'm heading there. So I'm gonna miss the last day of commentary for that going in the morning. Are you actually? Yeah. No way. You're abandoning ship. Yeah, I, ha I mean, listen, they haven't been to a final in 31 years, and you know, it's uh, yeah, just sometimes you gotta, you gotta, you gotta go. But all right, all yeah, right. you know, doing. Randy came a little late. I left a little early. We got we got a five man rotation. We're gonna make hey, it listen, work. Hey, listen, man, it's okay. You, know, you want the new guy just showing you both up. You two veterans is fine, you know. Listen, hey, Making I, me look good here. You know? hey, no worries. No worries. <laughs> I appreciate it. It was almost perfect timing, but I just I can't I can't. You know, if it was in the middle, it'd be tough. But one day. All right, two modest hands here. Ace King, ten and Queen seven versus Queen eight suited. Dealer versus hijack. Those are the positions. Very relevant in short deck to know what position you're playing what from. Players are so dialed in on ranges and what players can have and how they play them pre. So some, some brilliant minds here. And if you want to try to appreciate the nuances of the game. You know, it's similar to Moneyball. You ever see that movie? Great movie. Yeah, do you, do you Brad watch Brad Pitt and... Uh, um, yes, I believe Brad Pitt. I'm, I'm not sure, to be fair. Yeah, it's been it's a while. Brad Pitt. But, yeah, you're right. Um... My point is stuff like that, right? Moneyball. I never really liked baseball, American baseball. But after that, it really made me appreciate more <laughs> the pitch counts, right? Like the little nuances of baseball, like golf even, how you get better at golf and how tight it is at the top, how to make, you know, shave a stroke or two or little things. And in this game, these are the best players in the world in short tech. And they know, like you hear them put people on ranges and understand, like they just kind of know where they're at and what's happening. And, and that is... You know, you start to pick up on it, how they play hands, pairs in different spots, what hands are squeezing from what positions, what hands are checking back, and they just really are in tune to what the others are, are doing. So obviously when they're all very good, it's just super interesting to see who's able to... There was a hand earlier with Makita. I don't know if you caught that while you were, we were here with Russ where he hit Jack, Jack eight of hearts. He tur hit the gut shot. Seth Davies had, hit the, had the gut shot as well, but he picked up a flush draw, and he like he, his sizing was so creative he didn't have the nuts, but he knew that Seth could not have the nuts. So he then bet small in the river, and Seth raised, and he no, almost blew him off bet. the chop. Like, uh -huh. it was just, like, wild. Like, there were so many players. I mean, myself, there's so many times where, you know, I think this is just the next level, right? You start mm. really thinking, what's possible, what's not? Oh, I could be beat maybe a couple percent of the time. But, no, they just know the vast majority. And then doing some really advanced stuff. And there's no no, no uh, secret Makita's got. So he's got 2.8 million chips right now and in chidwick in second with 2.1 so chips consolidating yeah they i mean it's one of one of the reasons why we show up right to watch these events is to just see these guys i mean we already know that they have such an acute awareness of how to approach the game and I think you really hit the nail on the head there with, you know, how they're able to identify the nuances in the game to give themselves an edge over the rest of the field. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot like to take in. Yeah, about that. Ike's made some timely bluffs and, and plays too. I mean, Ike's right in there and playing, playing, oh, playing really well. I mean, this is this is really it is an absolute all-star lineup here. And then. You have face queen suit? Paul sitting at a relatively short stack right now. Blinds are up. Annie 10,000, button 20,000. So every hand, every player puts in the ante of 10,000, and then the button puts in 20,000 in this particular round. So, yeah, it's essentially the big blind, and hold them is the button here, which is interesting. And. We are going to get to see who takes us down. 19 of 60, under 33% of the field left. With eight going to cash. Is that right, or eight or nine? Eight. Yeah, you're yeah. right. All right, 240 for the eight. P 
huge bubble. Quarter million U.S. dollars. I love that. Everyone can throw U.S. dollars in the mix. It's about it's 240,000 euros. And Ike ripping it. Yeah, USD performing strong against the Euro as of late. This is the hand. This is the hand announced. It's gonna be medium. You need to king times should it. Yeah, it's kind of medium. That's pretty high up there. You can eat kings. <laughs> no, please. Fair fight, fair fight. <laughs> it's oh. Good defense. <laughs> defense. Defense. It's gonna be ace eight suited. Now I'm not sure what's And you on. really need the defense. Yeah. yeah, this is an important time in the tournament, of course, always is, but now registration is closed. No more re-entries, no more tries. This is what you get. No, I want the, I want the other end. Different stage of the tournament. Why can how much you have? Five. I wonder if I, this is balanced, but I've seen him with his like really not great hands. He seems to really like ask for what people, <laughs> what they have, kind of. Yeah. Neutral. But I mean, again, the read? I say like, he really hasn't had a lot of good hands, so I don't know. But I've just seen him like with marginal, like really marginal stuff. He kind of just checks out. But listen, I'm not calling Ike live reads on the air. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he's balanced and knows exactly what he's doing. But but so far tonight, when I've seen him kind of just like randomly. Check people's stacks. And this is different though. He was just oh, he was so odds. early and your seat. your seat seems good. <laughs> it's not bad actually. <laughs> you get to see a hand. The best is to never get cold. Yeah, yeah. right? How sick not is that? <laughs> yeah, not too bad. No variants. Just strips. You know what we call like this situation like? It's like in the slaughterhouse, you need to feed the feed the pigs. Yeah, <laughs> feed the livestock to get bigger. Right? Fatten up the livestock yeah. first. Right? Oh, Not sure, sure, sure. Yeah. When they get when they get them big some meat first, yeah. yeah. When they get big enough, we just slaughter. <laughs> yeah, easy for you to say. I don't even. Think I cannot slaughter. <laughs> uh. All right. So there's a playable hand here. All in. <laughs> Oh no. Yeah, blinds, the Annie's have gone up maybe. So All right, see what we got. Ooh, Ryan. Oh, we, we do have a call. Yeah. Quick call. Wow. We probably have a flip. Oh, it's a flip. Yes. Position 60 40. Uh, let's see. Medium, medium, low. <laughs> just, ask, just ask for Jack, man. Like. No, I want to be fair. <laughs> fair fight. Mm. Fair? It's currently fair, slightly in his favor. Fair. Ryan's gets it's kind of fair. That is looking pretty fair. Not nine. Let's give it nine. Or eight, eight is okay. Eight, eight, eight is fair. Nine, nine would be. Why is nine, nine not fair? Oh, uh, this is King. not fair anymore. <laughs> I'm I'm kind of worried. <laughs> uh, don't 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 tell me. I don't want to look. Oh, there's a nine, but not a king. Safe. Small, big, small, small. Big pot. Save. 351. <coughs> He's really sweating that one, wasn't he? Yeah. I mean, that was for his that was for his life. Big blow to Soiza. And speaking of just nice things, this is what it is. Live data at your fingertips. This is the Triton Poker Plus app. I, I really I don't want to overdo it, but I'm just telling you, I don't want you to leave us, but if you go check it out, you can follow along in the action at the other tables. It's it's absurd. It really is one of the best apps I've ever used. I mean, I'm biased because I love poker, I love Triton, but I think Henry, you you back me up. If you go check this out, I'm not saying you don't need us, but like you literally could just get all the updates in hands and see the graphs and the and everything. It's just it's it, you got to see it. It's, Honestly, it's download. I think we need to talk to the marketing team and remove that advert 
And whenever they want to plug the app, yeah. they just get the 15 second clip of Henrik Hecklin in his winner's speech. Because like for me, he just sold the application in like the best way ever. Well, he just uh, he was just like it's the. He was just like, yo, guys, you know, this is revolutionary. Like, that's, what, that's what you true. guys that's are doing the for live poker. That's true. And it, yeah, it is. And it, it, it wasn't it, even prompted. He was just like, yeah. hey, like, what you guys are here's doing. Here's the like, it, if you look at it, it actually like, at, if you're, you're watching it, it flashes uh, in green or red if someone's chip stack moves. It's in real time. Yeah. So they're at the yeah. table. Someone has an oh, iPad. They're time. following every street of action. You're seeing player stacks move with every hand, and there's a graph that follows it along. <laughs> you could go back and watch a player's sure tournament a and see what happened. Yeah. It's just, it's absurd. Sounds it like doesn't even make Is sense. It? Yeah, it was. <laughs> like, imagine doing that at the World Series, right? How sick that would be. I mean, you can't do it, you need there's thousands of, of like tables. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You need a full squad. But if you think about it, that's what they're basically doing here, right? Because the dealers are rotating. They have extra people that are doing it. They're just hiring extra. Like, there's more people. Yeah, there's literally full -time. a person. It's like, two, it's like two dealers per table. Yeah, there's a person on every table with an iPad. Yeah. Huh. Okay, yeah, it's done. sick. Quick update from the outer tables. Steven Chidwick has officially crossed the 2 million chip mark. Currently sat in second. Makita has crossed the 3 million chip mark, leading the pack. Then Seth Davies, Ike Haxton, Chris Burrow, Bjorn Lee, and Richard Young, all in the seven figure club. Most recent casualty. Elton Tsang. Boys are out here fighting. Stop, stop, Joa. Everyone hold to me. I falls around to Ike in the cutoff and so he's uh, in great shape. Fair fight. Fair fight. Uh, Very fair fight. Let's see low, medium, high. Low, medium, high. I need queen, 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 man. No so la. Low, medium, <laughs> no high. So what are we going queen deck, queen deck. Okay. I think the chop would be fair. I think it's just coming like... Chop, jack, chop is jack, fair. It's hard to chop, right? Ace, jack, it's seven. Chop happens all the time. Oh, I've seen so many chops today. Oh, how about no. ace, ten, king, seven? King? King? Oh, no, no, no. That's no, not king shot. is not uh, going to do it. King, queen would. Uh, what? Queen would be fair. Ooh, swap very fair. Very Michael fair. Soiza fair? needs we're, to find a king or a queen. Jobs, unfortunately. Uh, Otherwise, he'll be heading home empty-handed. I hope so. Oh. Ooh. Hello, king of hearts. I got you, bro. You got me you. one. Uh, I'll give you one back. Much appreciated. From, from Mike's back. <laughs> like, I kind of. Oh no no. Two hundred one. All right, live to fight another day. Ike wasn't a part of that joke. He was. It wasn't loving that. That was. Uh, it's always. I mean, of course, the equities are run closer, but that was. You know, it's just. It feels like it shouldn't ha happen, but it just. It happens more often than not. Right? The equity's closer. You get 75%. Yeah, it certainly feels like it. Three to one. Three to one's. You know, it's a favorite. It's not. It's not a lock. Three to five seconds. Okay. Three seconds max. I want that. I'm. I'm committed to getting that clock. I just want to have yeah. that in my home game. <laughs> I just have to have that. Like, I just like it just feels right. You know. I reckon. Listen, I think we know the right people. No, and I'm. I will find out if it's possible. I don't know. I just don't know. Like, I'm sure it's not impossible. I just don't. Like, they might be like, yeah, that's fifteen thousand or so. You know, I don't know because the shuffler is fifteen k. Like, no, I bet Rat Rask has two thousand. I'm guessing probably like yeah. three grand. Yeah. Something around. That. I'd say less than five. Definitely less than five. In fact, I think we're overselling it here a little bit, man. They should sell those, though. Why? I mean, that would, people would buy that. I mean, I've, 
All right, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's it might be. I'd say like 500, mate. No. Come on, dude. It's a clock. You want to bet over under? I have no idea. I'll, I'll I'll give you some action at 500. Well, hang on. You you're saying you were saying 15k earlier, and then he said no, no. 3k. I said, look, I, a table shuffler, is like used. All right, like I'll meet 8, you. I'll meet you. I'll meet you in the middle. 1500 is the line. How much do you want to bet? <laughs> One. I'll have 50 with you, or 100, whatever you want. Which currency? Euro? Uh, a dollar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be USD with you, yeah, sure. Alright, 50 bucks. I bet you, I, that's fine, I'm just pumped because if it is less than 1500... You're getting a good deal instant, anyway. I'm just yeah. buying it, on the, if, the, if they're for sale, that is. But yeah, so okay. I'm hedged. I'm happy if it's less than 1500. Alright, we well, got 50. Nice. Okay. Let me see who can who we can ask officially. There's a bunch of people we could figure this out. I feel like I should be betting more on this, but but JG's been around the block for a long time. He's been around the block no, listen, for a long time, I, so I'm like, I, I I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just I'm happy for under 1500. I'm like that's a snap. I might I'm gonna have that in my bookcase for decoration, even just like in the background, have it like rotating and. That's a that's a beautiful clock. You know, maybe you can make it into a clock, right? Why couldn't you? You could probably put the actual clock on it, make it like a the the time of day on there. But yeah, because it has the number on yeah. all four sides, right? Yeah, yeah. But the buttons, buttons even on top. One hundred twenty k in the middle. Action on Hollywood Haxton. Does fire too. Wings out. You still in? This is a no bit of an here. uncomfortable spot. Webster has a flush draw and he's got a. Is that all he's got? He's got the flush draw. That's all he's got. He's got that's all he's got. But he's got some blockers to potential. But Ike, man, Ike's really found some nice bluffs. He's really. Found a way to be in some spots, and, and look at this, though. Webster <laughs> sticking on. Jack nine. Oh, they're chopping. Oh, wow. hello. Hello, Webster. That is a welcoming card. I mean, essentially the nuts, right? You lose to quad kings. Yeah, fourth nuts. Yeah, I mean, but it is. People just don't make flushes very often. Flush over flush is, like, unheard of. Yeah, I, I can't recall the last time I saw a flush <laughs> reflush. 17 left, boys and girls. Dropping like flies here from Via Madrid. They're trying to poke a series. Hollywood Haxton waving the white flag. Yeah, that was a pure surrender. But, you know, if you're Webster, it's like, it's a, it's a good size pot. I mean, you have to obviously be so, so happy about your hand right now. So it's going to take a bit of time here. Quick fold from Ike. JG, <laughs> you got anyone from the Triton crew, some of the people that have shown up <laughs> here in Madrid, uh, coming onto your podcast anytime soon? Have you been speaking to anyone whilst you've been out there? Um, it's a good question. I have actually, so Ali's going to come on. Ali Najad, he, uh, uh, he's been around forever. I didn't realize how long he's really been around. Oh, he's a dinosaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's um, as old as time. Yeah, I got some. I got some podcasts lined up. This is. I'm on the road. I'm on the road show now for a while here, Henry. True. Be in Europe, and it's a little yeah. harder to do, but I will. I will be be kicking them back up. But 
Yeah. What about what's your what's your con what's your plans coming up here? Uh, well, yeah, I'm going to be in Europe until like mid June, and then heading back to Southeast Asia for a bit. But I think um, I think now that live poker is back, being out of being out in Asia is a bit of a stretch. You know, a lot of good European tours, American tours, so yeah, I live poker is thriving. It really is. It man. is thriving. It's like honestly, I haven't played a tournament in a bit since really the last World Series. I played a bunch of events out there, but I love it. It's so fun. Live tournaments. There's really nothing like getting your hands on some chips. I know, right? And getting deep in a yeah. tournament. It is just, it's just fun. Yeah, so I think um, I think that's what I'll be doing, man. I'll be either moving somewhere here. I do like Madrid. I like, I like Valencia. Maybe Brazil. A couple of friends okay. out in Brazil. Yeah, it's a great place. Ah, Got ah, acai, ah, powder ah. cage. You, you been Did in Brazil? You no, I haven't, oh, but you will definitely be the I first mean, person I, I hit up. Yeah. For I, recommendations. I got, I got I think, you covered. I think doing a counterfeit is. So king, king, queen. Rast, queen. Is, Rast knows his Brazil yeah. very well, too. Look at this. Can't miss. Winfred you. Impossible. Uh, I think it's a six. Joining the feature it's table and... Yeah, right. Wow. Oh, yeah. I was about to say Maybe Drill's shot. top pair. Maybe. Okay, huh? Red 10, red 10, red 10. You did. It. Don't put the Jack mic on. Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh, you're welcome, Winfred. Thank you. Red wow. They really are ganging this up on this, this run outs are <laughs> wild. There's only red 10s in my Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're really ganging you're up on Ike. You're not winning a hand. Okay. I won. Yeah, one of the they passed me chips. Uh, <laughs> they passed me chips. I won. I broke my streak. <laughs> okay, I'll come in to help you. Lose. Thank you. Maybe chop, but... Can yeah, without you, I mean... Everyone loves a chop spot. <laughs> probably we see the flop, and then like in bets, and I lose. You saved me. Wow. <laughs> Suddenly I feel like a winner. <laughs> that would be kind of that's dirty. Jungle gets moved, bust instantly. Winford comes in, would have been instantly out. Good to see him chop that one up. Butterfly effect, man. This hand, this hand must be <laughs> I got a feeling. I didn't look yet. Uh, if you want to get really trippy, Hecklin <laughs> doesn't win the tournament <laughs> if. Randy Lou can't step in to cover Brian Rust. Oh wow. Yeah. Like if, if if you want to go there. If Ran if Randy Lou's passport doesn't arrive and he can't get here from Australia, Hecklin never wins <laughs> the main. It's uh it's pretty deep yeah. I mean it's uh, life's wild. <laughs> like you know, it's just uh it's crazy. It's so, yeah, we're not even opening up that can of worms, no, boys. It's too, late. It's, it's too late in the evening. I don't even know what Orange? time it is. What time is it, Jay? It's got to be How close to it? midnight, right? Yeah, it's right in there. Where is it? Right in there. Wow, look at this. Ryan Yun with the Six huge eight jam eight. on the button. Ike with the trap from under the gun. Gonna have Ryan in terrible shape. Drawing to just two outs. We can see a 10 dead in Waikin Yong's hand. Completely reasonable jam as well. A king 10 suited, gonna fold out. King queen, king jack off suit. All in. Not the news Ryan wanted to hear. This could be one of the biggest hands uh, of the tournament so far. You have a problem? You have a, oh, you have a king? I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, you're, no. you're not dead. Oh. Come on, boys. This is a short deck, yeah? Still have 40%. Uh, low, 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 low. Suited. 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 Oh, suited, yeah. suited. Oh, okay. Come on. I was feeling uh, disrespected for a moment. <laughs> that, that's just a bit bogus. So Ike saying he approves of the play, but I think we're both gonna make straight. Both gonna make what? I don't think no, that no, anymore. Nine, 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 nine is. Oh, I hope I'm wrong now. <laughs> I think a nine is. Both make uh, straights is not good news anymore. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I think we can make a straight here. Yeah, six nine would be. Chop? Chop would be fair. Okay, is it, is it chop fair? announced. I think it would be. Very hard for a chop. I oh fought no. pots. No, Winfred, please. No. Nice. 
Oh, oh the nine fall. The nine, but too late. So close yeah. to both make straights. Big pot for Ike, up to 1.5. Big hold anything. there. Yeah, on the back end of <laughs> you know, losing a couple of small but significant well, ones. <laughs> Biggest pot of guys the busted, televised <laughs> table so far. You still got chips, you're fine. No, 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 I'm saying a win for those chips. So down to 17. So we're down to 16 now. We all chat on. Eight away from the money. Okay, it's courtesy of that pot. Ike up into hmm. fourth. I don't want to do it. It's like he's waiting for me already. So I, I think you played it good when you. He's waiting for you. Huh? I should just fish ship it. <laughs> oh damn. Did they just announce something about drawing for hands or something like that? Yeah, they Wait, did. They we are playing, playing down the clock. So we're playing down we the are clock. We're not drawing for hands. All in? We are playing down the clock. Yeah. We're playing down the clock and then drawing for hands or just playing down the clock? Play down just in the, the last hand. Yeah. Okay, so not long now, boys and girls. You know what I think the play is, JG? I mean, you and your wife, you know, you were you bigging up Miami. I think I just come and visit you guys for a few months, fall in love with a local out there, you know? Wow. Get myself an American passport, green wow. card, all that good stuff. I mean, Miami's the spot, I'm telling you. I don't want to oversell it, but I it's Listen, it's I heard good. Will Young. Uh, Will Young? Will Smith. Probably yeah, shouldn't. Singing about it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a spot. It is a spot. And here is a spot. It's Ace, good, nine, King suited King. versus King, 10. Winfred. Can't be too selective with his to stack. Gonna get it in. Ten anties. Mm. Ten anties, yeah. What, am I gonna, what are you gonna do? <laughs> what am I gonna do? Stick it in. 50 50 here, ace nine suited king ten. And just in the window is the nine, but everyone's, you know, 52%. Winford actually a slightest of favorites here. It's got the king ten queen. Ooh. Sweaty okay. and the diamond though gonna cut yeah. some out. I mean this is this is a lot of each player's got a lot Fair of board, board here to the river. And the it's gonna pair the board and Winford gonna head out. Short of the money, gonna be down to fifteen, getting mm. very, very deep here. Man, every fucking hand uh, all in uh, was fucking stressful. Stress, man. <laughs> fucking stressful. <laughs> fucking shot that man. So is it getting his it is less stressful in here, I'll say that after yeah, you know the it's just it's it's exciting, but the it's just it's short deck is a lot of equities, a lot of running close, but yeah, definitely, especially you know when you're getting close to the money as well. Those all look like American flags or Malaysian flags. They're all that's a different though, but we got three Malaysian flags and Ike rocking the USA up top, 147 anties. Yeah, we're gonna need another player, I think. Yeah, like people flies. are dropping out here. Getting down to it. 15 left, 8 paid. I mean, that's pretty exciting stuff because that means tomorrow when we come back, everyone's going to, you know, everyone's going to be well rested. But bubble play. My favorite parts of tournament yeah, poker five, in general. Yeah, 5 20 something. Absolutely. Is wrong. Like five, four, eight, something. This five twenty-eight. One, two, three, four, five hundred twenty-eight. Oh. What's that? No, yeah. the app is right. Five forty-eight. Well, yeah. Good. <laughs> Kita. Not far away now from going to bed. Chip leader. Four. In the main, looking for a second title here. In Madrid, at the Gran Vía, sick venue as well, man. I mean, well done, guys. Really set the bar high for poker production.
All right, well, we got a flop straight over here. And we got Haxton. Wait, 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 what's, what's going on? I mean, this hand's over and done with. What but you, you got something being delivered into the booth, mate. I, th I mean... There we wow. go. So we got Kate. No way. This is it's impossible. Coming this is, in. I wait, hope wait. this is like a, a t-shirt or a hoodie. I want to get this on camera, yo. I hold on. I don't. This there's no way. I mean, if oh my wait, goodness. Don't, don't it, open it. I'm don't not. I'm not. One second, chat. Why Kin Young's won the hand? You know, the hand's over and done with. I wanna. I mean, I can, I'm just. This is like a kid in Christmas. I'm feeling the weight, thinking about the possibilities. This is a lot to ask. I mean, I I I'm, I don't want to get my hopes up because I, I could just, it could be a couple hoodies. All right. So just for context for the boys and girls at home. Wow. Kate's just walked in with a gift basket for JG. <coughs> wow. Look at that. I can't read the manner, but I can read. I think it probably says the same as yes, what it says in you're English. Right. That's a good point. That's a great point. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, dude. I, yes, didn't, we got I didn't mean to do that to you like no, that, it's man. Beautiful. Thank you so much. This is awesome. This is really nice. Thank you. Oh, well. JG, I'm not going to steal your thunder, bro. I'm going to send this to you, and you can you can. I'm so this. happy, but you know what I thought? I thought it was a sh I thought it was a shot clock. Yeah, like but all right, we got we got a nice bottle of right there. I'm going to let you pronounce that, Henry. Ah, uh, sorry, man. I don't drink wine. Okay, that's nice. <laughs> Oh, an eye shade. I think this is to sleep. Hold on, this is nice. There's hand sanitizer spray. I got patches. There's a. Oh, look at this. Hold on, let me open this up. I think there's some oh, DNG sunglasses. Bro. Yeah. Oh, it's locked. Yo, look at this. Look what this says on the side here. Oh, we got aces dreams. for Wykin. Hold on a second. Wow, this is. All right, this is a lot. Hold on. Let's focus on the hand, Henry. This is this is exciting too. We got big hands. We got big gift bags here, and Wykin Yong has aces versus Queen Jack, and he is going to call and see if Ike can give him some action here. But yeah, this is this is dude, this is a real gift bag here. Yeah. Yeah, for taking part in the Triton event, you get go. a DNG. There, there might be a gift card or a. Ooh, DNG, DNG sunglasses. Oh, uh, bro. So you know that bet that you lost, yeah? Yeah. You can just give me that instead of paying up. No, that's yeah. good. I'm gonna pay the fifty euros. <laughs> and... Just jumping back Ooh. into the hand. Why can Yong? Oh, the Triton Red. I haven't even seen this. The top set. Mike Haxton. With a similar bluff combo to what Jason had earlier on. Oh, look at this, Ike. Can see a turn. Yeah, chat, I'll send you over. I'll send Jeff over that video. You can check out the gift bag he's had delivered. Top set way out in front here. Yeah, Wykin has a very nice hand. He loses to Queen 10. Ike does have a queen. How sick would the check call, check raise turn line be? Yeah, we're pretty savage. Ike definitely has some savagery in him, but he also just seems to know where he's at and gives it up. Nice pot. Why can Yong gets the rockets? We really haven't seen many aces today. Earlier... When I was with Ras, we saw a lot of kings being dispersed, but that's just, that's just how poker goes. Distributions comes in waves, then it doesn't. Oh, is your your airdrop turn on, mate?
Oh, wow, got it. Boom. Thank you. 14 left. Latest casualty. Ferdinand Putra. Six away from the money, I mean. It's dropping like flies, JG. Yeah, it's it really is. I mean, we're getting right there. Two tables of seven. Alright, we got 7-6 Jack, two clubs. Ike with the Ace King, King of Clubs. No one has a very it's it's actually everyone kind of just misses here. Webster does have a straight draw. And bottom pair was in the lead all of a sudden. I mean, is that, okay, is that right? A6. A6, look at the percentages here. Is that, is that even right? Is that even possible, JG? No, it doesn't seem it. Is it? A6 off has 46% against, I guess, Ace-9 just has an 8. King-Queen is open-ended. Yeah, so there are more board pairs than... That the doesn't seem. Players? That doesn't. I. I. I can't. That is that really. He's going to win forty six percent of the time. Well, board's going to pair like ten outs once, right? Yeah. Thirty six cards in the deck. Thirty six minus ten minus eight. That's half the deck. Yeah. That's crazy. It is crazy. So he's got the the. He has the straight, but Ike's got the very key card here. Okay, in that. He just what about just the all in for ninety? Just, just, <laughs> just ship it. Well, you just think he hits the. Oh, okay, you no, no, of course not. But I'm just saying that would be. I mean, it'd be interesting, right? You just who would really? What would you do with King Queen there if Ike just ripped it? I mean, you throw up before doing anything. Yeah. These are kind of funny. These, the, it really, I've seen more of this, the small bet, right? On the rivers, like people doing sort of, it's tricky, right? Because you, if you don't like go for some value, you feel silly. But then if you open it up and get re-raised, it's it's pretty pretty savage. Yeah, look at this. Michael just calling with the nut straight. And Haxton certainly crafty enough to go for a bet three bet, right? With the King of Clubs. Sorry. It's King no good. Bjorn Lee. Joining the table. So he's having a, ma a laugh through the mask. Kind of like, man, I know I probably should raise, but. You get King of Clubs, right? I did. That's a Bjorn. Played three events so far here in Madrid. Came second in the 50k short deck, 618,000 euros. Who knows? Didn't cash the 100k main. Let's check out the other tables, JG, see what we got going on. We've got Jason Kuhn, Tony G, Stevie Chidwick. Danny Tang, Chris Brewer all on one table. Table Table three. Makita, Seth Davies, Phil Ivey, and Richard Young playing some four handed over on table one. And then obviously this table, table two. We're, we're just kinda letting this slip through the cracks that that Makita's up to three point three. I mean, how ridiculous is that? That is a lot of chips. Stevie in second, one point nine. Richard Young, who had a second this week in third, and then you've seen Ike here a lot, 1.4 million. Yeah. Phil Ivy right there too. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Makita, Phil, and Richard Young 
top five, or three of the top five, all at the same table, four-handed. Yeah. That's pretty strange. I assume they're just playing, like, real low ball, given how deep they are. <coughs> Big drinker, Henry? No. No? Not at all, mate. Alright, yeah, I'll go no. to the gym, okay? It doesn't mean you don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I, I will say I'm impressed or surprised or didn't realize how much, like, anytime I've been to lunch here, it's like the wine glasses are out everywhere. People are having having some cocktails in the afternoon here. I guess it's just culture, but that is that is different. Has to be done. You're, you're, yeah. you're in Madrid. No, I get it. We are winding down the evening here at the Grand Vier in Madrid. Henry Kilbane alongside Jeff Gross. Event number 12. The Triton Poker Series, the 100K Short Deck main event. As if this 100K wasn't enough for you guys and girls at home. 150K starting tomorrow. Obviously, tomorrow we will be playing down to a winner in this event. Business end of the tournament, eh? Yeah, this is getting right to it. Yeah, Tony G is still in, boys and girls. Big names in the mix. So, heads up, ace-king, ace-nine. Ace-nine in some real trouble. That is going to put him down to a nine and a nine only. So, is it thinking about what to do here? Think about what kind of street hand he has. Decides to go for a 8,000 8, bet. Leave. The clock is slowly winding down for the evening, JG. Soys are now beating Ace Jack. Courtesy of the King of Hearts on the river, but Queen 10 and Flush is completing. Love this from Soiza, just going for the block, the B10, B15. Just so tough, you know, checking over to a player like Lee. It comes out firing like <coughs> you know, 200, two thirds pot. Just hating life with top two. So don't get me wrong, Bjorn can certainly come over the top here, doesn't, bows out, 
and fold. Yeah, I mean, flushes beat beat full houses, so it's a little bit of a scary card. Figure his hands just uh, didn't have a heart in there and just thought better of it. Creative players always looking to win pots, but sometimes you just, you know, move on. Guys know the day's coming to an end, and they're in a great position to hit a lion's share of this purse. It's getting getting there. You mentioned two seven-figure winners in Makita. Still over three million. Little hiccup at the end here, and tomorrow could be a. Uh, I mean, it could be it could go a bunch of different ways. Well, tomorrow's a big day, man. I mean, look at we'll, we'll jump into the names after the hand, but this is wild. Oh boy. Well, Webster Lim, or Wai Kin Yong, one of them. Not going to be bagging and tagging tonight, most likely. Oh. To make oh. an assumption. Webster Lim, looking to go back to back in short deck events, taking down the 50k. How much is it? This car? A couple of days ago. Five something. For over 800,000 euros. Yeah, these are interesting spots where players are so high in the range, but at some point when you get so close to money, could see some big folds, but, I mean, Webster, limping ace-king, and it's going to be a quick call. Yeah, snap call from Webster, no mucking about. How are you? Well, we're going to join the seven-figure <coughs> club in terms of chips. Or he's going to be bagging I up just three anteasers, I believe. <laughs> this is the last hand of the night. Yeah, big moment here. Oof, king high flop. Yeah, it shoots up to 83%. I can Get some turn sweats, ten yeah. spades. Oh yeah, there's there's cards available. Ten. Nope. That's not one of them. Yeah, 7% only one card remaining. Needs, you know what? Mamacita. Not no oh. dice. Oh. Gonna happen. One more hand. And why can Young? 525, 567. Gonna just double check. How much? Yeah, he has him slightly covered. <coughs> So he's not going to join Makita as a four-time champ, at least in this event. Does yeah. still have two <coughs> more tries here in Madrid. What is that, the 150k? 150k and then the 30k turbo, which I believe is rumored. You know, how rumors spread in the poker world. That it's going to be pot limit, but yet to have that confirmed. PLO? It's going to be pot limit short deck. Oh, pot limit short deck. Pot limit pre, no limit post. I believe. Don't quote me on that, JG. Okay. I'm just feeding back what I've heard from some of the people out there. So we'll get confirmation on that tomorrow. These chaps are going to be bagging and tagging. I mean, this is pretty sick. JG, 13 left, 8 paid. Mikita Badziakowski, chip leader going in to day two. But it's not just all Mikita, you know? Stephen Chidwick, Richard Young, Phil Ivey, Tony G, Hollywood Haxton, Seth Davies, Bjorn Lee, Danny Tang, Chin Wei Lim, Chris Brewer, Michael Soyser, Jason Kuhn. The 13 players that have found the bag for the night. Yeah, I mean, 13, 13 players, 8 cash. We're right there. It's absolutely crazy. Like, this really went fast. And R Rass was thinking there might not be 45, 50 entrants. We got 60. So, huge purse, 1.8 million euros up top. I mean, this was this was a master class today, and we got to see some of the, the brightest and biggest stars in short deck playing today. Henry, give me give me your closing thoughts. I mean, closing thoughts is just, got to, the focus has to be on the talent, right? The, the talent that have been showing up to these events and the consistency of some of these guys is admirable. Um, and to, to pony up this kind of money, you know, day in, day out, and things not necessarily go your way is, has been the case for quite a few people at this series, but to 
just to just show up and play your A game. It's uh, something to take note of when it comes to you know mindset and mentality in poker for sure. Yeah, and, and quickly here on the app, I want to just take a look here. Yeah, 100%. Kind of, as we mentioned, it was pretty wild to see these four guys battling three of the, the five top stacks at the moment. And then, of course, there is uh, some other, the other tables we were just watching here. As we lost that huge flip, why can Young going to go out? And he is, uh, let's see, the last one here. These are the, the tables that we have, and we're going to redraw, I believe, on a new day. So tomorrow yeah. when we come back, we will be with new tables new draws we're gonna play down to a winner and you know henry i just want to look at this gift box i got i just gotta say you kind of yeah. heard it was on the i mean I, I don't want to go through all of it i don't want to open up right. and, and no i mean listen it's special it's beautiful we got the wine out here and you know participation trophies i'm not a, always a huge fan but today i'll take <laughs> it you know it, it hurt but uh we'll be back listen, for more and can, it's all good can we flip the hood at least so they can see the text go for it the see, box, see yeah, what's in there think, oh yeah i well, think that's a, pretty cool where high stakes dreams are dealt. Yes. And high stakes dreams are going to be dealt tomorrow, JG, it, in the form of a main event champion. It's true. Short deck. We have a great night. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night.